Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fuck, and cut. Hello, beautiful people. It is Overreaction Monday, April 3rd already, 2023. We're live from the Thunderdome. This show starts now. Much mono. Much mono to all of you as well on this glorious Monday, April 3rd. It's already the 3rd of April. Whoa, Holy wow. shit, 2023 is flying. You know, I think a lot of people, whenever they have a weekend filled with fantastic sports, they think to themselves about how the NFL is really, really, really far away mm -hmm. from being a part of our weekend activities. And we heard from Florio last week about his thoughts that the NFL is not only trying to be weekend activities, it's probably going to be Thursday what? and Monday. What? And then probably Tuesday what? and Wednesday. What? And they'll figure out a way to become on Friday as well because the duh, the NFL is actual ratings kings these days and money is only going north for them. And why would you not try to expand upon that? Because pigs get fed, hogs get slaughtered. At some point, we assume they will become a hog mm -hmm. and try to eat it all. And at that point, it'll become a full sure. uh -huh. what games matter, what days matter, what don't, what doesn't. But those are years ahead. Right now, we know we are... 157 days till NFL football? Oh, okay. I let's remember that. that. It's not that Just bad. trying not to say huh, it yeah. because it's it is. That a, that's five months. A large no number. That's easy. Yeah. We just powered through a few months already. That's right. Yeah. Five months left, no big deal. Until then, all we got to talk about is the storylines. The draft is coming up. Free agency right. is still taking place. Ezekiel Elliott is still a free agent right yeah. now. Yeah. There's a lot of Odell Beckham Jr. is still yeah. a free agent mm -hmm. right now. There's a lot of names that are floating around. We'll have Ian Rappaport join us in about 15 minutes to see what he knows about anything. Remember, he was at a South Florida pool party on Friday. Yep. Yeah. When we talked to him. Yeah. His phone died because it overheated because he was out at the pool all goddamn day. Mm -hmm. He had those sweet glasses on, cool, had cool, a cool, WrestleMania cool. t-shirt on, yeah. and he was grooving while talking to us, telling us absolutely nothing. No, no, right. no. What will happen today? Will Rappaport have learned anything over the past couple days in the NFL world? What's going on with Lamar Jackson? Oh. Dana Jeremiah reported that the Titans were potentially going to trade up to number three to get a quarterback. Yeah. Sleep what on. does Rappaport know? We will ask him all those things. We'll also be joined by Sean Sharania in the second hour. He's obviously NBA insider for the stadium, the athletic, and FanDuel TV. Mm -hmm. He's a friend of the program. The NBA ends this week. Yeah. yeah. It's Next over. Week, Season's off. over this week. That's right. About time. Season is over this week. The NHL's over next Thursday. We knew that. Mm -hmm. And then the playoffs are coming in. We knew all of these things. Yeah. So Sham's going to stop by to let us know all the storylines. I think the big one we're going to ask about is like, Zion, you know, Zion, what's going yeah. on with him? Mm -hmm. We'll ask about LeBron James and the Lakers in the future. But this Dallas Mavericks situation where Kyrie gets traded there midseason and the Mavericks were, like, in the hunt talking about winning the whole thing yeah. with Luka being their dude. Then they trade for Kyrie. Oh, my God, add a weapon. Holy we shit. asked, is there enough of a basketball down Why? there? Mm -hmm. For Kyrie and Luka seem to be pretty similar styles of play at least. And uh, now they're not even in it. And no. allegedly they're resting. <laughs> they're resting. They're not even going to be in the playoffs. Yeah. No, so what could go wrong did go wrong. Murphy's Law for the Mavericks in the trade of Kyrie Irving. Not that it was Kyrie's fault or anybody's fault in particular. But for one reason or another, as soon as Kyrie got down there, they stuck. They've won one of their last eight games. Yep. It was against the Pacers. We were there. The Pacers were resting their top three players. Yeah. We were there. They won. That's it. They stink. Why'd that happen? How'd that happen? And what else should we be looking for in the NBA playoffs? Sham Sharani will tell us in the second hour. In the third hour, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Reese Davis will join us because okay. there's a national championship tonight. Here we go. College basketball and men's. Come on. One shining moment. That video comes out tonight. Oh, yeah. You know, whenever you see that video on the internet every single day for the next, like, month or two, that video comes out this evening as the San Diego State Aztecs Hell yeah. take on the Yukon Huskies. Mm -hmm. Now, Reese Davis, who will be joining us at 2 p.m. Eastern, told us that that UConn team can go on a run. They could go win this entire thing. They have proven that they can be dominant. They got swagger, and it doesn't feel as if anybody's going to be able to stop them. But with a rough and tough San Diego State Aztec team that hit a sick game winner mm -hmm. to sneak past FAU on 
Saturday. Will they be able to hold up against this talented UConn team? We'll ask Reese Davis that and any other storyline going on around college basketball in this game that we should be looking into. Speaking of college basketball, the women's college basketball had a fantastic mm -hmm. fucking final just yesterday. Awesome. LSU beat Iowa. Shout out to Caitlin Clark and that Iowa Hawkeye team run. And shout out to this squad. This girl right here, I believe, went to West Virginia at some point. She yeah. had like 21 points coming off the bench. Uh, the girl way over there, uh, uh, Angel Reese. Everybody's mad at her for talking shit, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know why we're doing that in sports. Seems like something that happened. I do understand how people could be confused that when your team wins a natty and you saw the coach crying and many of the players, if you win a national championship, incredibly, incredibly emotional moment. Yeah. I think there's people that could potentially ask the question, like, in that moment, instead of being like, overwhelmingly happy mm -hmm. and crying and just taking in a moment with teammates and with coach. She chose to talk shit to Caitlin Clark instead. So I can see how some people can be mad about that. I would like to let them know I'm not one of them. <laughs> I enjoy the fact that till the final fucking second was on mm -hmm. the clock, yeah. she was like, what's that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is something that I think if you're an athlete and a competitor, like that's savage, dude. Like, Because that could be a moment that could get too big for even the biggest of shit talkers or the biggest dogs in any sport. Just want a natty. This is bananas. This is a massive moment. And to power through that and be like, nope, I got some shit to say. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think that's a dog mentality that I think is hilarious. It caused quite a conversation on the internet. People are not happy with her doing a show a little class. Mm -hmm. class. Show a little mm -hmm. class. It's like, hey, some people that are competitive aren't classy. Like, there's some people that talk shit. Yeah. There's a lot of people that we love that are huge shit talkers in society. In any way that you can motivate yourself to become the best version of you in sports, you're allowed to do so. That's kind of the difference of sports in the rest of the world. Obviously, the way she motivates herself and the way she has gotten to the point where she has led a team to a national championship in college, which means she's an absolute dog, dog has been with an attitude of being a shit talker. So that was a surprise surprising thing mm -hmm. that people were upset at her about. I'm like, if a dude was doing this, they'd be like, this this dude's awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty sweet. But I don't think the people that were saying, that would say this dude is awesome were the people that are mad about it. Sure. So like, I, I would like yeah, that to be known. I agree. Because like, we would definitely say, this dude's fucking awesome mm -hmm. if this dude was doing it. Just because if you think about the human and everything we just explained, to worry about that as opposed to what you could be worrying about in that moment is like savage, which yeah. I just kind of explained. We weren't, I don't think anybody that would go to bat for a male athlete that was doing that were the people that were being very loud mm -hmm. about it not being classy mm -hmm. or not should do that. Sure. So I don't like that that automatically starts happening where people are like, well, if this was a guy, everybody, the same people that are upset. Be like, it's like, I don't think that's the case. No. I think this is a different audience yep. that maybe doesn't even know all of the dudes that do a lot of shit talking in the sports world. I think personally mm -hmm. could be wrong but once again the internet's going to have its reactions and it should not take away from the fact that the lsu tigers go tigers mm -hmm. are national champions and the fact that i learned of a human named caitlin clark who i am a massive fucking fan of yep. and i can't wait for this off season when there's no lights in, on in the gym and it's 4 30 a.m and there's nobody there, and Caitlin Clark has two basketballs, and she's just fucking doing this for 4,000 reps or whatever, yep. and all she's thinking about is this very tall girl who played for LSU, who before she fucking won her national championship felt obligated to go to Caitlin Clark and go, hey, bitch, you can't see me. Mm -hmm. That's all Caitlin Clark is going to be thinking about for the next four to five months, and whenever that happens... Wait until we see Caitlin Clark next season. Yeah, this is like uh, this is great for sports. I think what college basketball, the women's side, did during this entire tournament was fantastic for the sport mm -hmm. as a whole. And uh, I like that there's, I like that it has juice. Oh yeah, I like Big that there's time, juice. Dude. I think everybody should. The toxic tables here at Boston Connor at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Don Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. You look great. Thank I hope you. you had a fantastic trip back home. Thank you. Hey, no problem. Ty, let's talk to you. You're mm -hmm. an Iowa Hawkeye. Yep. Hate or love the you can't see me from Angel Reese to Caitlin Clark. I assume as a person that's a fan of sport, you were uh, you you know that this could potentially exist. Maybe not a fan because you're on the losing end of it as an Iowa Hawkeye. But what was your thought of the game and the run and that situation as a whole? Yeah, like you said, not a fan of it because I'm a fan of Iowa. I mean, mm -hmm. like overall, who cares? That's that's sports. That's what happens. If Iowa won, you 
damn well know Caitlin Clark's doing the same thing. So it's she's like, brought, she she even did the exactly. not in the face. It, it, no, that, it would be a little I, different. I think is what people would and say. I think that is what you know. At least what I was thinking of at first is like you know Caitlin Clark. She, Caitlin Clark scored 31 points. She did everything. So, like, the like if, if she would have played, like, complete shit and she's doing that to her, then it's, like, savage. Oh, so you're saying, because I didn't get to see the whole game, misguided shit talk uh, as well. No, not She did see you, Not actually. necessarily, because that girl is unbelievable, obviously. And leading up into the game, that's really all anyone's talking about is how good Caitlin Clark is. And for good reason. I mean, she set the record for most points and assists in an NCAA tournament. So, like, she had an unbelievable run. But it is what it is. Yeah, I think it, it motivates, you know, know it'll motivate her moving on as an Iowa fan you know you can't like that's the first like really nationally relevant thing they've you know as like a university they've been a part of in a long time so yeah it sucks they didn't win but she'll be back next year the thing that was the refs we're talking about the refs thing and you don't want to just like go towards that but it's like that is you could very easily point to that and be like this moment was too big for these refs going into the fourth quarter uh well not even we can get to that in a second but uh, within, like, I don't know, five minutes of the first quarter, uh, Angel Reese already had two fouls. Caitlin Clark had two fouls. Uh, their other... Sinano? Yeah, Sinano had mm-hmm. two fouls. So, like... I see... When I turned the game on, Sinano had already fouled, fouled out, and I'm like, yo, Sinano is a fucking uh, weapon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Two knee pads, oh, yeah. knee pads mm-hmm. on both, mm-hmm. two ankle braces. Oh, yeah. Dirty work. She's fucking... Yeah. Setting screens, yep. and then she's incredibly full sp- efficient finishing at the yeah. Dude, like- those layups, she's full sprint. Yeah, I'm sending that off the backboard, mm-hmm. back to maybe the three point yeah, line. Unbelievable touch, so quick but- and. But it was, no. yeah, yeah she was, for sure. But it was like the same thing. She was out. She fouled out. I'm like, how uh, do we let her foul out? That's one of the best players. Like LSU shot lights out, so it probably wasn't going to matter. I mean, they just couldn't miss. But going into the fourth, at the start of the fourth quarter, like at the end of the third quarter, three of Iowa's starters already had four fouls. Like, and they had already made a little bit of run. But like, you put them in that situation, like you can't play any defense, so you're already having a tough time defending them. And then it's like, well, what? Do, like, do we? Do, do everyone watching this game, do they want to see Caitlin Clark or? Amy Angel Reese foul out with six minutes left in the fourth quarter. Like, it just can't happen, especially coming off what Iowa just played South Carolina, and it was super physical. And so what like, are these refs going to say? Well, they got to play cleaner basketball. There's bullshit which calls, bu- I assume. Which, oh, yeah, oh, terrible. Yeah. Just like li- little, like, reach foul. Yeah, Caitlin Clark uh, what she a, did yeah, behind the back. threw it behind her back, like, towards the baseline. They gave her – that was her fourth foul. They gave her a technical for that. It's just, like, shit like that. We're in the middle of the season. Maybe that's one thing. Like, this is the national championship. This is a big deal. There's a, This is the – Have a little situational awareness. And yeah. Had yes. none. Let them play. They had none. But Angel and Caitlin early. Yeah. Two oh, yeah. fouls. Yeah. Hey, we don't need the coaches to have to make a decision on whether or not they should have them on the floor. Exactly. Because mm-hmm. that's what it is, right? You get two fouls. I don't know a lot about basketball. Okay. I know the people that make buckets win, mm-hmm. and the people that don't don't. So I think teams should try to make buckets. Yeah, that's right. And then kind of move on. It's like whenever I was asked about the Avengers movie. Yep. Hey, how's this thing going to end? Well, pretty basic. Get those rocks from that fucking guy. It's all over. Snap Boom. them away. It's easy as that. Mm-hmm. Turned out that was a spoiler. I said it four months before the movie came out, mm-hmm. and I got attacked for it. It's like with the officiating thing, don't even have to make a decision of whether or not keep in with two fouls or take out with two fouls, or Caitlin or Angel having to play completely different they style of play, basketball. They not play defense at all. Yeah, it, at all. I saw Kaitlyn at the end was just like letting people yeah, go, exactly, kind of. And I assume Angel was doing the same. Yeah, can't. And contest. like you mentioned too, like this is the pro- like this is a point in women's basketball where it's like people almost cared more about that national championship than they did about the men's final four. Like a lot of people probably did. So you have a bunch of new viewers and a bunch of people watching it. And then within the first quarter, it's like, well, the fucking girls that I came to watch are sitting their asses on the bench. Like, what the hell is this about? Let's not get crazy, though. I also – how'd Flauget? Flauget. Flauget. Flauget has got the flow. Oh, yeah. I saw a freestyle one time. And I said, oh, okay. Yeah. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Who's this? Why is this person not a uh, famous rapper? Mm-hmm. Like, well, she is. And also, she's a college women's basketball player. For who? LSU, they're in the national championship. I learned this, like, within the last three days. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, damn, the women's college basketball has more star power. Exactly. <laughs> than, yeah. To your point, than anything going on on the men's side, which is great for women's college basketball. Yeah. And it's also good that Caitlin Clark's going to be back next year, mm-hmm. right? I mean, there's yeah. no way she leaves. I don't think you can. To tie- I, I would like you to can. put out an NIL deal mm-hmm. to uh, Caitlin Clark, by the way. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's possible. We would, like so. to, uh, we would like to do some sort of something to be a part of this revenge offseason that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. If we know anything about athletes and competitors, which is kind of what we talk about on this show, we're big like player 
athlete version show. Obviously, because I was the lowest form of a professional athlete, but I was around a lot of yeah. a lot of great, 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 great athletes in all sports. And yeah, in all sports, and got along with pretty much everybody, mm -hmm. and got to like kind of see how they all operate. What well, Caitlin Clark's about to get. I bet you she was in there today. Oh, yeah. She oh, was yeah. in there today. Back at it. I bet there's a thousand shots today, mm -hmm. thousand this, whole, probably a whole new film. Like, like, she is probably locked in. So good for the Hawkeyes going forward. Yeah. Good for women's college basketball. Good. Mm -hmm. well. ties point. Which is, we're talking about women's college basketball right now on Overreaction Monday, yeah. April 3rd, on this particular program. <laughs> we are not terrible people, we promise. We ain't never expected that to happen, no? no? Just because, like, all right, we talk about things that are relevant to our world. Mm -hmm. We can only speak about things that we know about. It was an honor to kind of follow along with this women's yeah. college basketball tournament. All the way from Miami coming into Bloomington yeah. mm -hmm. uh -huh. and beating Indiana. I was like, watch that, yeah. only because Indiana was involved in the game. And my wife, big Indiana fan. So I turned it on just because I thought it was maybe a replay of the Miami-Indiana game from the night before, which was in the tournament. We didn't really know what it was. Put it on. Electric. Yeah. Unreal. Oh, I watched like the final two minutes. It was fucking electric. And then Caitlin Clark kind of got introduced to the story uh -huh. like a couple of days later. It was like, I'm I'm all in on this fucking March Madness with the women's tournament. We have to talk about and it. To your point, talking about it on a Monday after what you did this weekend, which I assume we're gonna talk about, but to Ty's point. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I was yeah. at WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. To Ty's <laughs> point, too. like I very casual fan of sports yesterday. I started with that, but the fouls were just I was like, Jesus Christ. I went over to see what the Valero was doing. Nothing was happening there. XFL stunk. So I went I AJ McCarron dropped the dime though. He did. He dropped a few. Oh, the fir yeah. That first touchdown down the left side. That was after mm -hmm. the pickleball. It was still on after the pickleball. Bingo, which yeah. Was which was amazing. Yeah. Right. But like casual fans like I was, I was like, this is too choppy and too foul right now. I went, but I came back because nothing else was good was happening on. But to your point, like they could have lost a lot of viewership yesterday just because of the fouls early. And not that the refs care about that. But hey, have a little. Yeah, think sure. about the moment. Yeah. Think about the moments. Let's talk about the moments. Had one Saturday yeah. night. That's right. Uh -huh. Right, uh -huh. right the there in SoFi. Last time we were in SoFi in Los Angeles, it was raining inside, mm -hmm. if you do recall. Yeah. Brutal. That was for the national championship. It was raining points and actual persis uh, precipitation mm -hmm. uh -huh. inside of SoFi. The Georgia Bulldogs beat the TCU Horn Frogs that, mm -hmm. yep. by 58 in yep. the national championship. We were live there. It was raining inside of their... Incredibly artistic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but not, State of the not closed, so they can't have a Final Four. Learn that this weekend. And it will rain inside, and it's not prepared for rain. That's why the floors are so slick, and there's mm -hmm. chance for a – I mean, I get that it looks cool. It, it does. It certainly does. looks cool. Especially with the LED when you're flying over it. But can you not just put up, like, windows – in the part that's yeah. open, and then just kind of crack those things open so you can get a little bit of airflow if that's what you want to do, so a canopy still. But then if you close it, it's like, oh, half the stadium isn't getting rained on with zero thought that they were potentially going to get rained on because they're in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. It's not doesn't really rain there much, nope. except for now. I guess it kind of does, which is certainly a conversation worth having somewhere else. I assume they're having that. But also you're in what you think is a dome, and then you're just getting drenched and have no idea mm -hmm. it's happening. And the builders didn't think it was possible. That's why they built the canopy the way it is. Yeah. But it still can fucking get in there. So the cement is so... Yeah. It was just... It was a nightmare of the national championship so. at SoFi. It's a beautiful stadium. But the weather situation... Remember the first night it was supposed to be on primetime TV? Yeah. yeah. Had delay 30 minutes because of lightning that happened five miles away from a dome, we all thought. Yep. Uh -huh. We they, thought it was a dome. They're like, well, actually, it's a canopy. It is open spaced on the sides. It was like, why'd they do that? Well, they thought it would be... Uh, it looks cool. It looks cool. Which it does. But SoFi for WrestleMania looked awesome. Yeah, yeah it did. The, the set was fucking beautiful. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that thing was glorious. 80,497 people on the first night. 81,795, maybe. Yeah, something around there. On the second night. And uh, yeah, I got to be a part of it. I'm so incredibly lucky that oh. that the WW the Spine Buster was a good addition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Spine Buster was a good addition. That was pretty high. People thought that I'm looking. I mean, I'm head down right there. Hey, I'm head directly down as George Kittle looks yoked in the background. I hit Miz right where I wanted to, right in the right titty with my back. He yep. felt it. You saw him stumble getting back into the ring. That's why George Kittle had to come help me throw him back in there. George did a fantastic job, obviously. It was great to have him uh, out there doing his thing. Thankful that he came over, helped me out, mm -hmm. got Miz back in there because uh -huh. Miz was going to quit. Yeah, yeah he, he was leaving. He was, he was gone. I would have ta taken a dub. 
by forfeit. Yeah, sure. automatic victory. Yeah, because I become and remain an undefeated exactly. wrestler at WrestleMania because this match was sanctioned mm -hmm. by the dog father as opposed to the Vince match that happened last year wasn't sanctioned. Miz is going to leave. As soon as I saw George showcase that tank top, that yeah. tight end university tank top, I knew there was a chance old George was about to do something special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I grabbed that ref. I go, excuse me, ref. Oh, my groin. Yeah. I, said, my bro, I think I ripped my dick and I put it in my knee. You know, like <laughs> I was just trying to distract him as much as possible. George laid him out. Did. What a lariat. What a clothesline. What a celebration. I think if you look at the shoulder bump, I think I got him a little bit. I think my shoulder would probably be a little bit higher than his shoulder. If you were to like review the footage, yep. I think there's a chance so that he that was fell the case. back too. Huh. But yeah, it felt like there was a little power was all jacked up, but George Kittle was fantastic. The Miz. All I wanted was the Miz to have an opportunity to have a, a match. Just a WrestleMania match. Yeah. yeah good guy. To stand there. Connor was with me. Foxy was with me. We sat in that bus six, seven, eight hours, that nine, way. ten hours, uh -huh. just waiting, you know, for an opportunity to potentially have a WrestleMania moment. And then the Miz mentions, I sent out an open challenge, and we go, Oh my God. There it is. This is it. Mm -hmm. We knew that there would come a time. It was getting late. Yeah, it was we getting late there. in the night. Yeah. Figured we'd have to stay there until tomorrow or Sunday, rather. We didn't know if night two was going to have to be the time yeah. where we hear something said that's like, oh, now's the time. First, we're going to have to get the okays, obviously. And we did from people high up. They, uh -huh. were, they were the only people that knew for a while. Wasn't that right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were the only people that knew Good for a while people. that if a moment, there was like three people that knew in the whole world that that was going to potentially be a situation for a little bit. But we had the moment have to pop up. You know, a moment mm -hmm. had to pop up. So finally, when Miz says, I sent out an open challenge, all parties were like, hey. Did you hear that? Now's the time. Get now's, in there. Now's the time. So we go out there and do it. But I'm so thankful to the people at the WWE. I'm actually a fan of the Miz. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a, I didn't like that there was yeah. over 80,000 people bummer. chanting, tiny balls, mm -hmm. tiny, tiny balls. balls. I didn't like that. No, you've no. been a fan of him since Fear Factor. Yeah, exactly. He was on with Rogan. That's where he first met Joe Rogan was yeah. Fear Factor. He won yes. Fear Factor. That was before he was even on The Real World mm -hmm. or The Challenge yeah. or in the WWE. I've been a fan of the Miz. So I just saw an opportunity, and I enjoyed the opportunity because it was Getting to showcase The Miz, too, mm -hmm. who I'm a big fan yeah. of. Yeah. And Snoop Dogg was out there. Cool. So it all just kind of came together perfectly. And Connor and Foxy, I can't thank you guys enough uh, for hanging out with me as I awaited the moment to arise for us to potentially go out there and have a little fun. And I'm thankful to the WWE Universe that said hello whenever I came out on that massive fucking stage. Huge. Uh, it was a super cool night, cool. super cool moment, and I'm very thankful for it all. Yeah, no, thank you for bringing us along. It's always fun to go to these things, and everyone in the WWE, for some reason, you know, treats me and Foxy with respect, even though they should just basically treat us like big fat stooges we are. I, on the other hand, to you, I don't like the Miss, so I'm glad what? that you shut his dumb Ohio he's up. A great because, golfer. Yeah, he thinks he's a great golfer. He fucking sucks at golf. He I, was the worst at the... Oh, Robert, Robert Griffin III was the right. worst. Yeah. Yeah. He set the record because he got the actual highest score mm -hmm. you could get. Of all time. And then the second highest of all time, same year. Boom. Same day. The Miz. The Miz. Yeah, and he looks great while he golfs. There's uh, That's not mm -hmm. the problem. The problem is he swings like a child, but but uh, that also the Snoop Dogg thing, and you know, it, it is always cool seeing the spectacle of WrestleMania because, like, I'm a newer mark. I haven't been in it my entire life, so as I've as you've gone into it, as I've kind of gotten into it, that's kind of what I have kind of been shown in that world. So what when, a world! When you yeah, like when you walk out and you see the stage and like you see all the people who are two 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 <laughs> when they don't get pins, like that entire thing. Those fans are awesome. So now nah, it, it was incredible thank you for bringing us no i'm lucky and thankful you did because i would have been sitting on that bus all by myself well no but you, no no you got to watch the penguins game remember uh, okay. Oh, okay all right shout out to you wearing that bruins jersey did get to see that i was a little if you guys wouldn't have come oh. i honestly don't know how that whole thing would have gone <laughs> no people would have found out yeah exactly. definitely yeah i would have uh, just left the bus and say yeah all right i'm here michael cole had no idea that i was there all his reaction he walked by the bus one time mm -hmm actually seen him yeah mm -hmm. and i was like mm -hmm. haven't seen him a long time missed that guy yeah would like to talk to that guy can't surprise because we don't know we don't know if the moment's gonna come or yeah, it's right. even gonna matter and i don't want to distract him three people i think knew that, that was, was the it. best part the surprise was the best part i mean the the crowd went fucking nuts while we were there obviously miz did not know till saturday mm -hmm. yeah of course. he wouldn't have shoot his mouth. for shoot yeah <laughs> For shoot, oh. there was when my music hit is near when Miz found out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because he might have thought.
is there somebody back there that maybe wants to come dance? And he could have never expected it to be me. No. I no. guess. No. Whenever he heard my Coulda. when he heard my song, my name, yeah, when he heard it, hey, come out. He's this motherfucker in public. <laughs> you know, that whole thought. But it was awesome. I'm very thankful. And congrats to the WWE. Yeah. Not only for the biggest, best WrestleMania of all time. I think they had the highest sponsorship that they've ever had with over $20 million in revenue coming from sponsorship, which is double what the last record was, which was last year. Wow. I think it was their biggest uh, social WrestleMania ever with over 500 million views or something over the weekend. I think it was the highest grossing uh, gate, obviously, with 161,595, yeah. whatever the number is, tickets sold. And obviously... This morning it was announced that they've been purchased by Endeavor for a combined effort with UFC at $21 billion global net worth Jesus. for Endeavor. Vince McMahon, who has a mustache now, mm -hmm. and uh, great. he will still be with the WWE, which was a massive part of the interview that I watched this morning with Ari Emanuel and he on CNBC as this deal was announced, and it was rumored yesterday on the internet. And we might have had a little bit of a... Uh, uh, maybe a thought. I think there were some people that thought it was maybe coming. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Might have seen it on the horizon. People at WWE are way too nice to us. We yeah. just want to let that exactly. be known. It's so dumb. They're so cool. Drank and they're with such the, good people. Got to drink with the crew so, afterwards. Mm -hmm. I miss the family behind the fucking scenes over there so much. They're so good at everything they do. Mm -hmm. Like the people behind the scenes, the camera people, the graphic people, the editing people, the tech people, the every people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of them. They've all been there forever. And they're all fucking workers. Yes. Like we are working. And they all figure it all out pretty much every single time. And uh, getting to have a couple cocktails with them, obviously, right. afterwards at the bus was a moment that I'll, you know, forever type of cherish those things because that's what it's all about. It's good people. And I'm thankful that we were over there. None of those fuckers knew we were there either. Yeah. <laughs> had no idea. Had no idea. I, I went out there right before your match. And there's a lot of people that I'd seen over the years that since we'd been there at SmackDown and whatnot, they all looked at me like, what the fuck are you doing here? And then, boom, your music hits, and they're like, oh, here we go. Yeah. The amount of dap-ups after in the, uh, you know, because nobody, literally nobody knew we were there. Yeah, you basically just walked Two right people, on. three people knew, four people, I guess, day of, yeah. five people in the entire place knew that we were there. The one person was the person in charge of our tech like, hey, make sure these guys don't die on this bus. Yeah, <laughs> setting up the TV. Yeah, that, Jason, yeah. shout out, dude. Appreciate the hell. So out. helpful. So yeah, helpful, yeah. dude. You saved us. He watched the stream with no sound for three hours before he finally, hey, can you at least just get us some sound or something from these TVs? Four people knew we were in that whole building. Yeah. yeah. Four people, the whole building, knew we were there. So it was a pretty isolated operation, but the people that made conjugal visits to our bus were very nice. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> We appreciate the hell out of the WWE for being so kind. Fox is going to have a great Foxy flick with that whole thing. I do oh, believe. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming. I think so. And uh, joining us now is a guy who has all the information. At least when he's working. Yeah, yeah sure. that's never. Last time we talked to him, he was at a pool party down in South Florida. Mm -hmm. He had his cool glasses on, you remember? Oh, they yeah. blue. Oh, my God, they were so cool. And then he had that WrestleMania shirt on. Yeah. And then literally in the background, we heard the DJ... And then we could see kind of in his reflection of the life that he was kind of living at that moment. Yep. And all we could think the whole time was, this guy has deserved this. Sure. This guy's a senior insider for the NFL. He's a senior insider for the NFL's network. He's a senior insider for the NFL's website. He's a senior insider for the NFL streaming service. NFL Plus. He's the host of Insiders, which can be found on any podcast network. And he's the host of the weekly wrap-up, The Rap Sheet and Friends, although we talked to him three times last week. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rapport. Yay! What's up, dude? What's up? Uh, I'm working. Right so now? we're back. Yeah, literally, well, I mean, now I'm chatting with you guys, but, like, today I've been working. Look at you. Nice. Tie on. Yeah. Ah, here we go. go. Thanks for call. Hey, we did say there, and I hope you heard it, you deserve the break that you took, okay? You've been grinding. You're on two phones. I appreciate you being able to shut it down for a little bit and enjoy. What was that drink you were drinking you posted? Um, That was some sort of a sunset something. Mm. Island breeze, something like that. No. Uh, so uh, it was Tequila? It was interestingly... What? Uh, yeah, it was tequila. There was, there was a fair amount of tequila. I'm slowly becoming a tequila person as my wife pulls me over to that side. 
Um, I, now I I embrace it all, you know. Sure, um, have to. What you used to be, whiskey? Yeah. What? Uh, I mean, I'm I would say bourbon number one, beer when I'm just hanging. But uh, but and now tequila has kind of brought me over. I, good tequila is very delicious. Yeah, The Rock drinks it every night. Yeah, yeah. And he, he he drinks it. Is every that why he looks like that? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I think it has low carbs. I do believe tequila oh, yeah. has low You're carbs. Right. None. Uh, sure none. I, I think it. I think it has a lesser hangover. I think, even though my experience well, with tequila is not the case. No, same. Uh, last time I really had it in abundance, yeah. I ended up in a jail cell. But there's a reason I had it in abundance because how damn delightful it is. Oh yeah. But I guess Very it's a new sipping thing. A lot of people doing that. Let's move on. Um, okay. When you booze with these GMs, what's it normally? You buy them a shot, a beer. What do you do? Um, I would say uh, probably not a shot. Because uh, that generally can go downhill pretty fast, and I'm I'm I will do a shot generally if offered, but that's not really my wheelhouse, you know. Okay. I'm not trying to get that whatever. Um, I would say cool. usually beer or maybe like uh, some sort of tequila soda with a lime situation, oh, something yeah, in that realm. Depending, on, but, but you know, depending on the like the recipient or how's it go. Like, hey, can I buy you a drink? How's it How's it work at one of these? Yeah, it's generally like I'm about to order. You want one? I got you. Oh, oh nice. yeah. And then is there a dap up or is it a hand? No, no, cl uh, a clink. Cheers. A post drink oh, clink. Nice. Oh, cheers to you. Hey, yeah, if you're going to trade like up to number three, huh? <laughs> I'm your guy. Let me know. Is that what you do? <laughs> That's how it all works. I mean, I, it's not exactly the quid pro quo world like that. Now, if someone's going to trade up to three, I would appreciate that phone call or very quick text. That would be something I would like. Um, but it's not like uh, I'll buy you this tequila. Uh, oh, it's Class Azul. Oh, that's worth a really big scoop. It's not quite like that. Okay. Well, think about the top end, the high yeah, end. And right. You might go broke, but you might get all the scoops. And I assume you've been doing a lot of that over the weekend because you're back to work. What is the big news story this week? What should we be talking about right now? What will we probably be talking about this week in the NFL world, Mr. Rappaport? Yeah, I mean, I would say the, the big things now are the big things, you know, last week and probably will be the big things at least until the draft, which is, come on, um, you know, Lamar That's Jackson, so what's going to happen? I know, you know, the Ravens had been negotiating with him and he kind of reiterated his trade requests. That is where it stands. I know they want to get a deal done. It does seem like his trade request is more like, I'd like to get a deal done with the Ravens for the right amount. And if that doesn't work, then trade me. That's kind of what it feels like more than just like, I hate all these people. Get me out of here. Trade me. Oh, um, it, interesting. You know, the, the relationship is really his letter pretty to good his fans. Yeah, his letters to his fans did not feel like that, but I'm ha I bet you a lot of Ravens fans are going to be happy to hear what you just said. Well, I mean, I, I've i talked to a lot of people. I've kind of canvassed yeah, yeah, the yeah, landscape of this. A lot of people. There yeah. may be, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, plus sober. There is, uh, oh, really? you know, look, there are situ some, there are situations <laughs> where theoretically I could see a deal getting done, like an offer sheet from some team. But to me, the most likely is he comes back to the Ravens. His market seems to be the best with the Ravens. Other teams know how good he is, but I do feel like the Ravens, like that's their guy. So, you know, he can, the letter was, was what it was. And I thought his point was definitely noted. Um, but it does seem to me that best case for all, he lands back with the Ravens on a really nice deal. Okay, so we hope that the Colts will end up trading with the Ravens for Lamar Jackson. But if they don't, we assume that they're going to have to go to three to get a quarterback because there's allegedly only three quarterbacks that are good right now. Daniel Jeremiah at Move the Stick. Shout out. Mm -hmm. Shout, Shout out, out, DJ. Great guy. Former scout for the Eagles NFL Network employee like Ian Rappaport. He was the one, I believe, that re uh, reported that there was a chance that the Titans could move up to the number three overall pick. Everybody assumes that that would be to take a quarterback because why would you go up there to take, unless you were taking yeah. a quarterback? So that'd be Houston, Tennessee, and the Colts all in the top four. Yeah. <laughs> so that's an interesting scenario there uh taylor the one asked move the sticks he said excuse me move the sticks what where is this coming from yeah who's this kind of like put a taylor the one did great uh journalism and then move the sticks came back and said that's just a sense that they could be a quiet sleeper is what he's getting from other gms and maybe moving up to three what are you hearing about the draft at the top of the board what are you hearing about the number three overall pick and what do you think about move the sticks report of tennessee potentially being in there uh, so first of all, I have not yet heard specifically that Tennessee is going to move, is poised to move. 
I, I'm 100% sure they are making phone calls because every team makes phone calls. And I'll say this. My friend Daniel Jeremiah, usually when he says something, there is plenty of reason behind it. Like he is not a, you know, a rumor guy uh, usually. And he's very, very connected. So usually when he says things, except if it's about the Padres, usually he knows. Um, Tennessee would seem to make sense for a possible team to trade up. Um, they have Ryan Tannehill on you know, a deal for another year. Uh, he is getting up in age. Obviously, has not been at his top, I would say, the last year. Them being in the quarterback world would make sense. Um, they were last year, took a quarterback in the third round. The number three spot to me is now the most interesting spot for two reasons. One, Arizona has a quarterback. Probably, you know, this seems to be more of a resetting year for them. So they seem to be a team that would want picks more than anything else, more than just one great player. Damn, two years into that massive deal, Kyler, and we're like the second year. Yeah, one year. No, well, oh, but because last year, year too, yeah, yeah, last year, that one year, year yeah. this year, no, but I'm saying if this is just a reset right, yeah. year, that'd be three years into a new quarterback contract where you're really yeah, expecting yeah, to win. He's not now, that's yeah, crazy yeah. to think about. No, that, and who knows when he's going to be back? Yeah, that's a wild state of affairs over there. Plus, they're fixing their building. But you're right; they are like poised almost to get the hell out of there. Is what you're saying? Well, yeah, and also the when the quarterback comes back is actually a part of it because like. Theoretically, this would be a year that if you're the Cardinals, you're like, all right, you know, we got the quarterback, we got a star receiver, we got a new coach. Like, you know, if Kyler was healthy, I could see them being like the Vikings were last year, like just a little boost and maybe they get where they need to be. But, you know, there is a chance, and this is something I've talked about before, that Kyler doesn't play the first half of the year just because he recovers and that's a serious injury. So that feels like more of a, a time to reset a little bit. I don't... I would be surprised if they made a move before the draft, but that is the key spot in the draft. And then let's say someone takes a quarterback. Are we sure that whoever's the quarterback that's not taken is the guy the Colts want, or do the Colts somehow lose out on a quarterback and just don't think they could take? And then we go get Lamar. But like, so do you, is that like the overall narrative that there's only three quarterbacks and who would that third quarterback be that people would be going up to get in your eyes? Yeah, I don't think there's only three quarterbacks. I think there are four who will go in the first round. But the real problem with the, all these five. evaluations yeah. is like, I could actually could be five. Hendon, yeah, Hendon, Hendon Hooker. The Hendon, oh, so he's actually visiting the Saints and the Colts. Flying today, visiting the Saints tomorrow. They have 29. Like that's kind of interesting. Yeah, especially now, with Derek Carr there. I'm sure that'll be perfect for. Yeah. I mean, Carr is actually Basically like. No. He'd be a good person. Like, That's you know, Hendon Hooker, I yeah. think, would, yeah, no, that, that that transition, like, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, but Maybe the, the main Colts problem is, like, I can say, like, yeah. all right, you know, there's four top quarterbacks. But there are some teams who think whoever the fourth quarterback is, Levis or Richardson, not all teams have them viewed, like, four guys all worthy of top five. There's some teams that say, hey, for us, there are three, and then we would never take this other guy. So, you know, you don't know where the evaluations are going to fall. So that's why every year there's like one guy who falls and everyone's like, I can't believe this. But sometimes it just kind of works out like that. Connor. Uh, yeah. I mean, but Rob, she's saying it feels like just like Tua and Herbert. Like it, that, that was kind of the similar situation. But yeah, uh, Telesco told us that he was co- that Chargers were like, whoever Miami takes. We'll take the opposite. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it wasn't like uh, yeah. we don't want Herbert. It was just like uh, <laughs> if they take Herbert, cool. We'll take Tua with Miami. Mm-hmm. He said that on our show. Yeah, and I saw some people be like, "That's why would you ever say that? You might hurt Herbert's feelings or whatever." It's like reality of the <laughs> fucking business. Bro. Yeah, mm-hmm. reality I mean, of the business. On. This is how this goes. <laughs> like they had to come to a decision. They came to a decision. Like whoever's good. Do you think Ballard's done that? Uh, I. I think he has – so they got four, and there's only a couple scenarios that can happen, right? You think two quarterbacks are probably going before him. So the only scenario is he trades up to three, possible, or, you know, to make sure he gets one. I would say that's probably in the realm of possibility. Or three go before him and he has a decision to make. Like, these are all real scenarios. And my guess is if he doesn't – if the fourth quarterback, whoever it is, he doesn't want him, he gets out. 
Yeah, that's what Jim Mercy actually said. This guy loves trading for picks. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in that same press conference where he said he loved Bryce Young. Sorry about that, Conan. No, no I'll go. Rap sheet. With the uh, Lamar situation, Pro Football Talk wrote an article today about how NFL teams, due to the CBA, they don't actually have to put money in escrow. Is that a real thing? And then does that also mean, like, okay, you can give a guy a massive contract and then it's just year to year instead of, you know, having to put $230 million somewhere? I, I saw that story. I I mean, he's right on the language. To my understanding, when teams have had to put money in escrow, they have done it. Like, it didn't – it has never felt to me like something that was uh, just kind of an option. It was more like an obligation. Reading it specifically like he did, I could see how it could sort of be like that. But my sense is when the money is due, the money is due, and that's how the league operates, kind of with a shared understanding of the rules. Um I mean, this is all like sort of fine print nerd stuff, but to me, like until and unless that gets done away with, I don't think you'll see very many fully guaranteed deals at all. Like it feels like that is one of the things that is preventing these fully guaranteed deals from getting done. And Ursay, your guy, was pretty clear. Like, yeah, well, there there are plenty of owners who. Just philosophically, yeah. Yeah. do not want them. He said, as an owner, I don't, brother, don't I don't want them. them. Obviously, I don't think it's good for the league. That's what he said. I like that he prefaced it, though, like, as an do you know who you're asking this question to? Yeah. As an owner <laughs> who is like that, yeah. I enjoy that he did that. He also talked about mortgaging the future with Peter King or, or yeah. a local press conference of Football Morning in America we talked about and. There's just so many different ways to go about it all. You're going to end up having to pay the fucking money anyways to somebody. Yeah. The upfront, though, is a massive piece of the conversation, which I think is why you asked the question. Yeah, and have the Browns put that money in escrow then? Or is that just like the assumption, but real in reality they haven't done that? Uh, that is the assumption. I've not specifically asked if they've done it or not. Like To me, until, yeah. just being totally honest, until I read the article, my assumption was that they do it and everyone does it. Um but, you know, it's so antiquated because these teams, you know, these are such big businesses now. It's not like these are mom and pop shops. Like everyone has the money. Agreed. Like Agreed. You know, they were all part of the $100 billion TV deal. Like everyone has the money. So, yes, it's a rule, but like I'm not even sure it's necessary anymore. No one's going to default, you know? I agree. It could change. I mean, the players will never let it happen, though, because they're in a small chance force majeure comes. You know, COVID comes, mm -hmm. games stop, they don't have the money, or they don't profit, which, remember, there are some businesses that if they don't turn a profit every single year, everything has to fucking change. That's right. And it's just publicly accepted. Even though businesses lose money in a lot of different buckets on a year-to-year -year basis, there are some businesses that are just not allowed to. And if they do, everybody's fucked for the next 10 years. Yep. That is an interesting thing that we've just kind of come to accept, but that's a reality of what we're covering. They will not ever go bankrupt, these teams, which nope. would be the big issue on why the guys would not be able to get their money. So to your point, I think it is an antiquated rule, but it's also the reasoning why a lot of these big-time you know, teams can also fall back. They say, well, I don't want to have to do this. I'd rather – it's better for my company if I'm able to invest that money as opposed to having it hold up or whatever. So if they eliminate it, maybe that will help bigger deals. Yeah. Get done. Good. Maybe it's better for the players to get that old thing. Who knows? I'll be excited to see how it turns out, Ian. Uh, Ty has a question for you. Repsy, what's the latest on Zeke? Uh, I believe I almost got duped on Saturday. I saw an Eagles blog. Uh, <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, put out that he was signing like a one year deal. Forgot it was April Fool's Day. Kind of just, you know, brushed that away. But McCocker? Yeah. Well, it wasn't. No, Everybody. it was like actually an Eagles blog. It wasn't oh. like a McCocker. So I was like, oh, what? Did I, did I miss something? Oh, it was April Fool's Day. It was yeah. April Fool's Day. Oh, shit. The I internet. Forgot. You got to watch. I was on a bus. Exactly. Yeah. I forgot. I didn't completely. even get to experience it. The <laughs> April Fool's was that I was right. on a bus. But, yeah. Yeah. Took a second, realized, okay, no one else is really reporting this. No this bad. has got to be bullshit. But is it still, like he's mentioned Jets, Bengals, Eagles. Is it still kind of those three? Are there any other teams that are potentially getting in on this? And when do we actually think we'll see some movement on where Zeke goes? So first of all, and this is sort of not what you asked, but do you think it makes me a uh, terrible person if I hate April Fool's Day? No. 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 no I, hate I think it's an overwhelming, uh, yeah. growing majority coming that way i think i assume yeah. at some point when there wasn't a lot of entertainment april fools was a cool thing yeah. you're right you know kinda... the timing of it now when there are actual things that you can april fools especially on the internet with just the social media yeah, yeah like social tough. media makes it a tough but hey traditions are traditions yeah, right. we got lombardi with the top five qb list oh yeah got him back mm -hmm. are we kidding here are we <laughs> yeah. serious here yep. 
Oh, that was at April Fool's? That yeah. was April Fool's, yeah. Okay. Justin Fields is put at number one NFC quarter. See, that's the thing, though. There's somebody that would have that actual tape. Exactly. Right. That was April Fool's? Yeah, exactly. There it is. What? Uh -huh. So, like, that's the problem Fair with enough. social media and April Fool's. We're on your side. I think we understand it's going to continue to exist. We will not openly stump against April Fool's. No. Like, I am not going to be like, hey, if you're having fun, don't do it. Sure. But we are certainly in your world of, like, is April Fool's time come and gone? Yeah. You know, like, is there, a new, is there a new thought? Great run. Well, we could be old, too. We could just be old, miserable fucks, Ian. That could be us. Anyway, I think it's really stupid. But I would never campaign against it because that's not the kind of guy I am. Anyway. Hey, um, that, so we're all in a yep, team. Yep, boom. Yep, in agreement. Yeah. Team on three, team on me. One, two, three. Team. team. All right. Um, so, Zeke. So, you know, the, the visits are interesting because, first of all, I do not know that he currently has a visit scheduled. I know there's some interest. Um, and the money's going to be tough because, as you know, like teams are not spending a lot of money now. He's cut, so it doesn't factor into the compensation pick formula. But teams aren't really spending a lot of money now. And at that position, like there's a lot of really good running backs in the draft. Seems like a really deep running back draft. So, you know, he might take a visit over the next week or so. But a lot of times, if you're a veteran at that level who's done it for as many years as he has, you're only taking a visit if there's a deal, right? So, I think, I don't know this, but what I think might happen with Zeke is he might wait until after the draft and someone doesn't get the premium running back they want. He slides in there and fills the need. But I think a lot of teams now are like, you know what? We're getting close to the draft. Great running. Let me see what I get. Tough to be a running back right now in the NFL with True. the way things are going. Uh, I know a team will be, why don't we pick? We can pick up Zeke. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? We I lost picked up Pac Man. What's that? Oh, did you mean the show or the, sorry. Okay. All right. By the way, maybe Zeke. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Why not? There you go. I mean, why not? I don't want to bring an umbrella to a brainstorm here. I mean, Zeke, if it ends up that way and you just decide to hang it up, incredible career, bud. Yeah. Crushed it. Not that he would ever. He's anywhere near that. He's not anywhere near that. But whenever you do. Yeah. Love to have you in the Thunder. Yeah. yeah. So bad time to be a running back. How about a veteran wide receiver? So obviously OBJ, we don't know what's going on there. He had the meetings at the uh, league meetings. Meetings at the league meetings. Yep. Mm -hmm. Separate. After from he the dapped up uh, Stefanski, and then he, you said, hey, what up, O? Oh. Oh. And dapped him up. And then Salah, <laughs> Joe Douglas. We heard the story. We're not going back through it. Odell Beckham Jr. has not been signed. Allegedly, he wants $15 million a year. You can give – we don't know if that's true. We've heard a multiple number. It was 20. Now it's 15. He's come out and said, what? I'm just not taking three or something like that. So we don't know right. his actual number. And then it's also being alleged that D-Hop – is going to be released from the Cardinals, potentially. I think that was reported either today or yesterday, and I might have been wrong when I read that. No, I got that was, duped. No, that was, right. was ML football, though, so you got to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, per so I, might per Albert Breer. Per Albert Breer. Okay, so I, I read it on the Internet. I might have got duped. It might be completely wrong. But would D-Hop and OBJ potentially be in the like the same spots? There would only be a few. How many teams are really looking into the veteran wide receiver market, and are they both coming to the Colts? That's sweet. Um, I would be surprised if DeAndre Hopkins was released. I've been surprised before. Okay. So, but based on what I know, I would be surprised yeah. if he's. He knows the. He's, yeah, yeah, he's tied in there yeah. in Arizona. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we know that. Hey, it won't be released. Saying it would be rarely do very good players, and his salary is. It's not. It seems fine. Like seventeen. Still very yeah, good it's not player. terrible. But uh, didn't we hear? No, I don't remember. And I, you know, we'll hear tomorrow. Ha, yeah. If a yeah. Tra look, he still could be traded. We'll see what happens. He still could be traded. Um, if he was traded, his salary would be adjusted. There it is. You know, he's, okay, maybe so you know even potentially if he's back, it could get adjusted. We'll see. Um, but I think that situation is still sorting itself out. The OBJ thing, you know, I know there's some kind of thought about the Jets. I know there is interest. I know he's got some interest in them. Um, that would be one of those things where if they're able to come close on money, would probably end up visiting. And I know the Jets are one of the teams, obviously, that he spoke with at the league meetings. You know, it's like when the Aaron Rodgers thing is interesting and worth noting. Like, remember when Tom Brady signed with the Bucks, and everyone was like, cool, I'll just be a veteran and go sign there because, hey, Brady's there. Like, I feel like that's kind of where we're going. Oh, the Jets, the Jets. what a life. <laughs> what a life for the Jets fans. What a life. Right. And it has not been them for, oh, I don't know, like four decades. So if you're a Jets fan now, like, assuming this Rodgers deal gets done, which we all think it will, like, pretty good. You're a Jets fan. It sounded like, felt like, because you're, like, lit up. Yeah. Pretty good. Like, you Four did that decades. whole thing. You got to be a journalist, but you're a Jets fan? Is that what I just heard? Nah, no, nah, no. Nah. No. I I mean, I live in New York, so I have a lot of friends who are Jets fans, so they Mars. all, like, ask me about Rodgers, but... Fucking no, you know how they... Like, this job works differently. You can't... 
If I'm people ask me, like, can you be in, like, can you force yourself to be impartial? Like, you don't force yourself. You just become because you're focused on different things. It's weird. And when you're you know? friends with people on a bunch of teams, it's hard not to pull for them. Yeah. Literally, whenever they're playing. Mm-hmm. So it's very. I understand what you're saying. Now, Colts yeah. paid me a lot of money, so like I will be a fan of theirs yeah. mm-hmm. for a long time. But I could see how you and your profession would do it. Last question here from Tone Diggs. Ian, I saw on NFL.com that Jalen Carter is only visiting teams uh, with top ten draft picks. Is that because? He thinks he's going top 10, or is he still definitely going top 10? What's the situation with around Jalen Carter that you've heard? Uh, so he's visiting the Bears today. I know they spent some time with him also at his pro day. And so, like, that spot actually would make some sense. Um, Eagles he visited. Yes, he has declined visits with teams outside the top 10. I talked to Drew Rosenhaus, his agent, actually right before this. Uh, basically, the thought is uh, if a team trades into the top 10, he'll visit. But based on his information – he is confident Carter will go in the top 10, and so that's where his visits will stick. Um, it is, you know, a, as an agent, you make the decisions you believe are best for your clients. This is the decision that Rosenhaus has made. Like anything else, it'll play out. Um, my sense is that it's probably going to end up being right, um, but obviously with the draft, like, you, just, you never have any idea. Yeah, the draft is always a roll of the dice because all you need is one person to be much more interested in somebody than everybody else. And then a person that was a projected third rounder is now a fourth pick mm, overall yeah. in the draft. Uh, Ian, we appreciate the hell out of you, man. We know you're about to be on television. Uh, we can't thank you enough for all the time you spend with us. And today, actually having some information and working. You know yeah. what I mean? World works in mysterious ways. Hey, do you... Uh, you had a WrestleMania shirt on, huh? You ever wrestled before? Yeah. You want to dive in there? You want to get in there? I think I know some people Ooh. potentially, Ian. Hey, I, I would never rule anything out. Um, I am. I was a high school wrestler for four years. Not the same thing. But, Whoa. You know, oh, people Whoa. People forget Ian yeah. knows leverage. No way. Ladies and not, gentlemen. Not even a joke. Not even a joke. Uh, my new Bam Bam Bigelow uh, shirt arrived today, and I got a Van Vader shirt. Come on. Wow. Hell yeah. Mark. See what happens. Hey, that's awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rappaport. Hey, hey. You could do a stalling suplex like your Davy Boy Smith with Ian Rappaport for oh. maybe 45 minutes. Oh, yeah. yeah. You do a 60 minute Iron Man match with Ian Rappaport, 40 minutes of it has a fucking stalling suplex. Mm-hmm. Him upside right down. Right up here. Blood rushing to his head. That's right. We're doing this the whole time. Yep. Him versus Liano. That would be a. I don't know if they would, they would have to scrap at it. Yeah. Could you I mean. imagine if you start leaning, the crowd's like, oh! oh. Got him. Imagine if two people went out there. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> that'd be oh, that'd be amazing. That'd be like um, Andy Kaufman, who went into yep. the WWE Hall of Fame this weekend. It was a great weekend, man. Did you guys see that the Hall of Fame, they had his, like, jer- or not the jersey, but his, like, singlet he wore, and it said, like, his death date with a question mark on it? Yeah, I mean, that's an Andy Kaufman move. Mm-hmm. I assume he had that on there forever. The, the whole... If you watch, I mean, Man on the Moon with Jim Carrey, you watch that, you kind of get a taste of it. I've watched every documentary that you possibly can on this human because the amount of courage this dude has to do whatever the fuck he wanted yeah. mm-hmm. at all times. Worked himself to a shoot. Is so, ad- it's just, brother, it's just so admirable, admirable. Like, he sold out a theater. Yep. And he went onto the stage and he read a book from the first page all the way through the last page. Took him like six and a half or seven hours or something. <laughs> By the end of it, there was only like four people left in the theater. Mm-hmm. People would be booing him. He didn't stop. He just read. Just just read. Beast. They thought they were coming to a comedy show. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine <laughs> the courage that that takes to walk out in front of a crowd? Oh. And just be like, stick to it no matter what. But like that Read's is, that's unbelievable. He, he made a t- uh, TV show, obviously. You know, it was back in the day. He took advantage of, like, the static. He, he would build static into his actual show so that people would have to stand up, hit their TV, and then they would hit cause to, to rattle the thing, mm-hmm. and then it would go back to normal. And then he would time it, I think, and put him on again so the people would have to stand back up. So at home, he's fucking with people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that is a... <laughs> that's fucking genius. Next guy, level. He was a psycho, I heard, though. Oh, yeah. I, mean, sure. I heard he was a bit of a psycho. For Obviously, sure. you're going to have some traits sure. that aren't as desirable whenever you're a super genius at other fields or whatever. It's just like, yeah, he went in there. What a stud. Rey Mysterio won in this weekend. Mm-hmm. Got a chance to hang out with him a little bit afterwards. Stacey Keebler. 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 Yeah. Did not see her. She did go in. Uh, Jim White, who's the ref. So he 
Tim White, sorry. I think his brother's Jim and Pat. He was like Andre the Giant's um, guy friend. Yeah, like he was. He's had, been there for like everything. Like, they had a photo together, and then yeah. they did the whole bar thing. They did that story. Yeah, um, at the Hall of Fame. He was always really, really nice to me. Whenever I he passed away recently, but whenever I was first over there, he knew who we were, knew the show and everything. He was very, very cool. And everybody was like, "Hey, that guy's like." Andre the Giant's guy. I believe that is the human that I met and chatted with. Yeah. I might be wrong. WWE has so many legends just falling from the steps out there. Bunch of photos. Yeah. But yeah, he's like, uh, he went into the Hall of Fame. It was uh, fantastic to kind of see everybody, meet everybody. I got to see Undertaker again. Oh, Take. take. How's Take doing? Thank you, Take. Miss you, Take. Take's living right now, it looks like. Just chilling. You walk up to him, though, there's like an aura, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Take. Taker. I was coming back from the match after beating Miz. Shout out George Kittle with her help. Mm -hmm. Thank you, George. Doing well. So I get out of Gorilla, see everybody for the first time, long time, first time, long time, first time, long time, first time, long time. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Wow, wow. A lot of that. Mm -hmm. A lot of that. A lot of these. A lot of those. A lot of everything. So then I finally get to a golf cart, and it's like, all right, we got to drive you back to the bus you're at. It was far other side of the so then as we're driving obviously hey, hey, it's a full-on thing it was amazing it was so good to see fucking everybody like it was like uh i literally i don't know i don't even know how to explain it. i don't know if i've ever like a reunion it was almost but it was like i haven't seen like a lot of these people long time actual long time and like a lot of these people they have a full their community over there when you talk about everybody that's in the food people mm -hmm. medical people mm -hmm. T obviously TV people, writer people, script people, everything, the whole, f they, it is a massive company, like $9.3 billion company or yeah, something yeah, like, that. like that. There's so many people, talented people, smart people, and I got along with like pretty much everybody. So it was, it was nice to see everybody. And as we're driving a golf cart, Stephen A. Smith and his crew come out of like a mm -hmm. corridor. <laughs> And I was like, ooh, you know, I started yelling. Me and Stephen A had a nice little conversation. He always looks so fucking cool. He like glides when he walks around. You know what I mean? He's like mm -hmm. kind of, you know how we saw Howard Stern whenever we were at Sirius that yep. one time? And it looked like he literally just hovered down Walking the hall. Walking on air. Yeah. yeah like, whoa, 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 whoa. And everybody in there was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. When Stephen A came out through the corridor, it was like the motherfucker was gliding. And I saw him the first time I saw him. I was at that seaport. Oh, yeah. Uh, Get him. For, I was doing Get Up. First takes on the opposite side of the hallway. Green rooms at the end of the hallway. And to get down there, it's a pretty long walk straight down a hallway. I saw this dude turn the corner one time, sunglasses on. I'm sitting in the green room just kind of hanging out. I think Rex Ryan's probably right here. We're bullshitting. He is a hilarious human being. And I look out in the hallway. It just so happened to be the exact same time. Might have had some milligrams in me, 20, 30, 40. Oh, what? I, 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 who knows what it is. But I'm looking. He turns the corner. He's just fucking like sunglasses on, hand in pocket, like jacket, just like full suited and booted. Music playing. Not no Like just walked by and then walked right into a studio or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was like, holy fuck, this dude really has, like, some moxie. Uh -huh. This guy is, uh, so watching him come out of WrestleMania with his whole crew, I just, I, I was obnoxious. Ooh, started yelling. It's obviously echoing through the whole <laughs> thing. Got a chance to talk with him. We're big fans of Stephen A. Love Stephen A. He's a fucking worker, dude. Mm -hmm. That dude works. He really well, does. Except oh, yeah. last week. Yeah, he's fucking getting lazy, I guess. He took last week off, yeah. but we did well. take uh, 10 days off, too. So we're uh, pretty lazy in our own. But then dap up him, chat with him, keep it moving, and then take. Take, just get out choke slams. Hopped out of the or... golf cart. When I hopped out of the golf cart, and I was like, good to see you, man. And he was like, hey, you too. Very cool, very kind. I said, hey, we're probably going to ask you to come on the show at some point. Feel free to Bye. tell us to fuck off, big mm -hmm. pop. I was like, all right, still got it with take, feels like. And it was, um, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. Thank you to everybody at WWE. Thank you, WWE. Best. Great show, too. Like, not just behind the scenes. Like, the show both nights was awesome. Saw Austin Theory again, dude. Yeah. What a scumbag. Terrible mm -hmm. guy. Worst oh, guy. Yeah. It was great to see him. Terrible guy. Speaking of. He, he looks, looks good. Got his name back. Like, yeah. I saw that one guy try to get some rub from your fucking WrestleMania appearance. Who? That little guy fucking gave Ty uh, stomach problems. Mm -hmm. Who? Baby. Yeah. Oh, Lord of the Adam Mark. Cole, mm -hmm. baby. That's right. Hey, stick to your stupid. I saw him too. He was on, uh, I think, Connor's phone. He FaceTimed Connor's phone somehow. He yeah. did on like, Saturday. FaceTime Connor's yeah. phone, yeah. and I saw him. And I'm like, hey, fuck you. What the hell, Mark? And he was like, hey, that was awesome. Fuck you. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you're really cool. Fuck <laughs> off, yeah, dude. Yeah, you suck. 
That happened on Saturday, too. That guy sucks. He does. He's the worst. Fuck Adam Cole. I can't believe I didn't even know he's he's still capable of having a phone. I thought he just disappeared from all existence, you know? Yeah, how his hands hold a phone. With how small they yeah. are? Yeah. Oh! Got it! Oh! He uses them both. Baby. All right, let's get out of here. Uh, hour two will be on the other side. AJ Hawk will be here also. Sham Sharania. What the hell's going on in the NBA? Oh, yeah. They're smoking going dope. No. Nope. What's going they on? They are smoking dope. <laughs> Congrats to the NBA guys. Yeah. Don't even have to act like you don't smoke for a portion of the time of the year. Mm-hmm. I put out a tweet. He said, hey, NFL, do it. Do it. I was on a flight to L.A. when I put that uh, yeah. that early. tweet out. Pop. Early flight. Early in the day. It was an early call time there. Yeah. Tea time real early mm-hmm. on Saturday. Pop the trunk. Do it. Do it. Do, do it. it. I feel like these leagues could just say they have to test just to cover their own ass. You know? It like is. it's an illegal substance in some states. Mm-hmm. So we are doing... Society and the states and cities that are our partners, a favor, we are not promoting it, blah, 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 blah. They could get away with that. So the fact that the NBA chose not to, I do appreciate the fact. Yeah. And it's like, hey, we're open to you guys maybe utilizing cannabis as opposed to utilizing other things that have been given to people for a long time that potentially have worse outcomes in the long run than maybe cannabis does. That's always been the big conversation in sports. It's like... They have science, you know, and everybody's seen Method Man, how high. He was an incredible fucking botanist. Yeah. They have strains, though, that are created to do things, Mm -hmm. you know, natural ailments. Now, some people might not believe that, but, and maybe it's a placebo, but some guys feel a lot better after smoking cannabis Mm -hmm. for numerous reasons, both physical and mental. And if we can maybe just allow that to be allowed... So guys can continue to play and not have to get into, like, any addictions to anything. Not that marijuana doesn't have an addiction. I understand mentally you can, physically they say you can't. That's not me. I'm not doing the research. No. You do your own battle. Mm-hmm. But I think an addiction to that is a little different than an addiction to some other stuff. Just from my own personal experience with a lot of my friends and a lot of generation, I think, oh, yeah. that, you know, is kind of going through it right now with the access mm-hmm. to pharmaceuticals. Not saying all of them are bad. Fuck. I take Advil PM every night. Mm-hmm. Bingo. I'm thankful for it. <laughs> hey, I appreciate the hell out of these far- some of these pharmaceutical companies. But there's some things that are like proven that some people's bodies aren't supposed to take because they're just more likely to get addicted to it. Mm-hmm. Just And that addiction could potentially lead them down a very sad road. Not going to happen to everybody. Not going to be every situation is a bad situation. And there's off- also a lot of good outcomes that come from some of these that you can move on. But there has been a lot that have been studied that are just... You know, take people right to a bad place. So if guys just want to smoke a little bit to maybe take that instead of that, it's like I don't think there should be a league that's holding it back personally. Is it worth the fight if you're a league? I don't. So I told the NFL, do it. The NBA did it. Now there's precedent. You're not the first people to do it. The NBA kind of took the bullet there. Boom. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that kind of did it. Now you can just follow suit. All good. Keep it moving. Because everybody knows when the test is. Mm -hmm. Starts April 20th. Yes, 420. Mm -hmm. The period. And then it ends... One week into training camp, you'll be tested one time a year in that period. If you get tested the first day, 420, which some of us have, shout out. That was a great day. Yeah. That was a great day. You don't get tested for another year. But if you don't get tested until the last thing, you're off then, then you don't get tested for another year until 420. So it's not like a hard test to pass. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying it's like, why even have it? Why? What's the deal of even the song and dance? There is some... There is something too potentially though. And I got a message from an NFL guy that was like, you know, that that mandated break time, not a bad thing though, too, maybe. And I was like, You're right. I guess for some people, like being forced not to take some mm-hmm. things or do something is good for them. So I didn't even think about that angle. I'm just thinking about for a large majority of it, why are we even wasting time? Yeah. yeah. Let's just let's just go ahead and put it in the past because the future looks like it's gonna be very cannabis riddled. Mm-hmm. If you go to any state that I traveled to over the last year, pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can get delivered to your house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get delivered to your Airbnb. DoorDash apps for it. They just show it just shows up at your house. Yeah. In a like everything. Hey, hey, what do you need? Oh, I need to sleep. Boom. Here's some here. Oh, I got a little uh joint ailment. Boom. Yep. It's right here. Showed up in a Tesla. Yeah. yeah. There's That's majors right. at colleges. Yeah, to, like, to grow this to stuff. grow it yeah it's crazy legitimate job precedent's been set there's not a new cba forever though so i guess they'll just have to wait yeah. did we know the nba was going through a cba i guess that's a good question no cba negotiation for shams we did not know that no that kind of came out of nowhere mm-hmm. is that an extendo early extendo that's good negotiating if that's the case to yeah. be honest i 
You said earlier, I didn't know this was the last week of the season either. So Yeah, I found out NHL is next Thursday. Uh-huh. Yeah. I do believe it was an early extension. That's good business. No. Any NFL one's never going to be done no, on no. time. Nope. Well, have you seen the contract thing as well? The disparity for NBA contracts for compared to all the other major leagues? The average in the NBA is like $88 million. Yeah, they get a lot of money. And everyone else is like $6 million, $5 million. Less, They're on a road. Less guys on the team. Yeah. Listen, they're options. making... They're like... Um, I feel like some singers just have it. Like some singers have it. Mm-hmm. They are destined for it. Now they got to work really hard to compete against the other people that have it because there's people that have it. You got to beat them, but you you can't. Like you you got to work against them. You've been handed a lucky thing. Like for instance, I think my right leg probably stronger than most people's just to begin with. Then I was able to work it and kind of move on. The singers, like they kind of have it. If you have it, you can go and get it. The NBA, you got to have it. You got to be six foot three. Yes. You got to have it. Very least. But least. if you have it, you got to work your ass off for it. And just like the singers, you got to be on the road to make your money. Yep. Like that's how you got to. That's how you got to make your money. So it's not like a. It can be a fun living. I guess people hear about being on the road. Like, oh, you tearing it up on the road. It's like most of the people that tear it up on the road every night don't last on the road a long time. Like those aren't the people that last a long time because it's pretty tiring. It's grueling. You're obviously sleeping in places that aren't familiar a lot. Your schedule's fucked pretty much. And you got to sh- fucking show up. I'm not saying it's anywhere near hard, as hard as like actual hard jobs. I'm just saying you see the big number. There yeah. is shit behind it that's happening in there. The NBA, they got to fucking, gr- they travel. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. They travel. With the new CBA too, they're going to have to play, what, 65 games? Bingo. Mm-hmm. At least if they want to win any of the awards, which we assume all the people that are yeah. getting paid a bunch of money are going to want to win the awards. Yep. So that is a tough fucking schedule. That's a tough, That's not. they're not sleeping a lot. They're playing back-to-backs. They're traveling. I mean, it yeah. is. it is tough. So I understand where they have some leverage in negotiation with the NBA owners, but I like the fact that the NBA understands that, hey, this is where the fucking money is. We want to get this done. There's a lot of shit for us to go make together. Let's do it. That's good business. The NFL and the NFLPA will never be like that, it feels like. No. No, never. But to Ty's point last week, like Chris Paul is the president of the NBPA. No, he's not. He wasn't the one on the... Uh, he was, he, I think. What who was that lady? Uh, there was a lady. CJ McCollum is now, right? No, there was a lady, though. The that, lady, I thought, was... She's like the, the executive president, like the, yeah. the Maury Smith is Bingo. the executive Austin. president. Exactly. <clears throat> but you're right. All the stars are in there. Right, NFL the top PA. guys. Hey, NBA Adam, PA. it's time to fucking get something done. Otherwise, maybe I won't play the rest of this year. Yeah. And neither will LeBron. Yeah, and neither will Giannis. Because yeah. holdouts Bingo. in the NFL, impossible, they say, because there's too many guys. Yeah. NBA, it's like being chosen, like the singers, like... Hey, we're just not. How many? 15 guys. League's fucked. Yes. Especially now when it's not like it was with like Jordan where these guys were like all competing for the same thing so they ha- like hated each other. Like all these guys now like love each other. They're like buddy buddy. They talk all the time. Like it'd be probably pretty easy to just be like, "Yeah, we all in agreement on this, right?" Like fuck these guys. Look, we got enough money. How how many how, Hey, how many years get back to us. How many years do you think you guys are good for money? Like Please let us know and give us the actual number. Some guys are like, I'm good for 10 years. Some guys are like, I'm good for five years. Yeah, yeah. Some guys are like, hey, man, I've been living. Okay, I've been buying. Yep. I'm good for a year and a half. Yeah, I got to play ball. So then the NBA, MBPA knows, okay, we got a year and a half is what we're, Yep. we can hold out. Yeah. And it's like the NBA can't. No. Yeah. They can't hold out. No. So they're going to put out a product that's going to probably disappoint everybody. Yep. And they know that. What a weapon that is. Mm-hmm. That's a weapon. Mm-hmm. And, and they listen to each other like the bubble. Remember, I, I think it was Patrick Beverly was like, hey, if LeBron says we're playing basketball, Jim. like we're playing fucking basketball. Yeah, because they can have everybody in the league in one meeting room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Nobody else is allowed in here. Mm-hmm. We Like one per club meetings, just like if you're in the NBA meeting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No phones are allowed in here. Let's go. Let's figure this out. That's a power. That's a powerful mm-hmm. thing to have. They use it. I guess the NFL will never be able to have that. But there has to be a way. To, like, we were talking to J.C. Treader last week. It was like, these guys ain't like. It's just adversarial. It don't always will be. It's not like, hey, you need us. We need you. Yeah. A lot of money out there. Let's make this fair. Let's go ahead and get that. We got guys. You guys got some. Mm-hmm. Let's figure this whole thing out. I guess I'm too naive, though. Because that's 31 billionaires. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you need the young guys. Like if Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and Joe Burrow. Lamar Jackson. Lamar. Who's potentially in the middle of that right now. Ian sounded pretty optimistic, huh? Ravens could get a deal done. Yeah. All right, let's get to a break. AJ Hawk will be on the other side. Sean Sharani will be uh, joining us. And Reese Davis in about 49 minutes to talk about the national championship tonight for the men. Oh, yeah. 
A lot more star power in the Women's National Championship than was yesterday. Uh -huh. But tonight's game is going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. One shining moment is coming just hours from now. Good we luck. have to chat about that. Good luck staying up for it. Yeah. What time? Yes. 920 yes. tip. What? Yes. Yeah. Where? Game's not going to end until 4 in the morning. Houston. Jesus. Yeah. I'm excited to find out who wins tomorrow, though. Me too. I'll wake up and find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. UConn. Congrats, San Diego State. Yeah. Sure. Congrats, you gone. Yeah, mm -hmm. Care more about the woman. Reese will tell us. I'll yeah. go with whoever Reese says. Boom. All right, we're back in five with AJ Hawk. Be a friend, tell a friend, take five. Five. Everyone in this stadium knows that I am the toughest man here. Why? Because I'm the Miss and I. Missing a fool? Is this an April Fool's Day joke? I feel that back of he's here, and he's gonna take out Miz. I feel the same way about this clown that Seth Rollins feels about Logan Paul. What was WrestleMania missing? Aaron Rodgers' personal propaganda machine. No, WrestleMania was missing Pat McAfee in the Pat McAfee show. Go ahead, Cole. By the way, there's only two announcers undefeated in WrestleMania history, me and Pat. I challenged this idiot last year. Not my fault they won't let me fight him. I can't believe McAfee's here. Good, good. Go be a referee, Cole. I'm going to sit here and drink Mountain Dew and talk to the guys in the front row. So is he here? Is he... I guess oh, he's, he's, he's here, Cole. He's like nine feet in front of him. Yeah, I know, but is he, the last time he showed up, he did commentary with us at the Rumble. Sup, Snoop? Hey, Sup, man. Snoop? You're a legend, dog. You're the oh, best, dog. Hello, miss. I think I speak for all of us. And I think I live on social media. I've been on the Twitter. I've been on the Instagram. I've been on the Facebook. None of us saw this alleged open challenge that you said. But, good news. This is my WrestleMania tank top. I see nothing but space and opportunity. Magic on the horizon. If you still would like a match, why don't you let me beat your ass right here, right now. You all want to see The Miz versus Pat McAfee right here, right now? Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Would you sit down? Snoop? You are making an absolute fool of yourself, Cole. There is nothing that I would rather do than whoop you right here, right now. But... I'm the host of WrestleMania, and I cannot make matches official. Miz, I do believe your tiny balls are showing. <laughs> tiny balls. Tiny balls. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Baby meat as well. And if you can't make matches official, there's 80,497 people here. Somebody has to be able to make a match official somewhere. Well, you know what? Check it out. I am the dog father and the host of WrestleMania, so... I feel like I could make that match happen. Right now, we got a ref. We got you. We got you. Let's get cracking. I'm out. Hell Let's go. Yeah. Coach, hey, I love 
Just in your business. This is what you do. This is what you do. I don't do this. I rap. Handle your business, man. Hey, I got to get out of here. Hold, hold the rope on me, rap. <laughs> hey. Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck? Oh! AJ, oh! Yeah! 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 Shut the fuck up! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this overreaction Monday, April 3rd, 2023, hour two shall start now. Much mana! Hey, much mana to you boys as well, and to The Rock and Will Sasso, oh. who sent me a very nice DM uh, last night about what happened on Saturday evening over there in SoFi. I obviously have massive amounts of respect for him and appreciation for absolutely everybody that's watching every single afternoon with us as we cover all of the daily events and stories in our own way. The Toxic Tables here at Boston Connor at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Don Cowboys Town Diggs is here. And joining us live from an attic in Ohio is a man who's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup champion. Okay? Whoa. This guy is in the video game community. He's known yeah. as a big time shit star. Big time. Mm -hmm. He's an NBA pundit. Literally, the opening night mm -hmm. of the NBA, we're coming upon the last week here of the NBA. The opening night of the NBA, we all remember like it was yesterday because AJ Hawk's face was literally right in the middle of the opening segment. This was after Draymond Green punched Jordan Poole right in the suck hole. Yeah. And AJ Hawk wondered, oh, their friendship's not going to be the same ever after that. <laughs> Boom. Kicked off the NBA season. Mm -hmm. He's a father of 10 and a COVID survivor. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, A.J. Hall. Yay! Hell yeah, A.J. How you doing, pal? What's up, man? Congrats on your secretive program that you ran at WrestleMania. You got the win over Miz. It was, it was fun to watch. Thank you. How happy are you that you get to talk about a program again? I knew that was a big deal. You already texted me a couple of times. Hey, that was a good program. That was a good program <laughs> nice. with Miz. I appreciate you. Uh, you know, Miz, we're just waiting. The night was getting late, A.J., you know, the night was getting late. We weren't sure. And we, we didn't know if a moment was going to pop up where maybe my services could be utilized. There was only a few people in the building that knew that uh, I was even in that bus alongside Connor and Foxy. So when I heard about this open challenge, AJ, opened the bus door, sprinted. Whoa! Yeah. Full run. Whoa! You know, I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. My time, your time is up. My time is now. Quote John Cena, Bill Shakespeare, Michael Scott. I'm running over there. Bang, bang, bang. Doing the whole thing. <laughs> And then my music hits, and it just so happened to be, bang, there I am. And I wanted the world to see Miz, because the Miz is awesome. Yeah. He's the best in the world. So I just wanted him to have a match. I get a chance to have a match. It was a perfect opportunity. And, yeah, I don't think he was prepared. You know, that suit was very nice and custom, awesome. and it cut my fingers. Okay. Yeah. You know, it cut my fingers in a couple places. <laughs> yeah, I have a couple cuts on my fingers. Broke my broke my middle fingernail. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Okay, that suit was the real deal. He had... He had a coat of armor on. That's bullshit. He did, didn't he? He did. He had a coat of armor That's on. That's not sanctioned. Yeah, he thought he wasn't prepared. I have a WrestleMania tank top that my wife put together literally on Friday night before I traveled out there. I thought of that video of that guy, the rapper who comes out to that, uh, what's that, uh, Gumpy uses The big fest. Yeah, yeah. it just yeah. went on actually this past weekend, I thought. Yeah, Gumpy uses it every single time. I thought of that as I was walking out there when I saw exactly how many fucking people were out uh -huh. there, AJ. Mm -hmm. So many people, AJ Hawk. That runway, it's just such a long runway. That's what's crazy to me. Yeah, I thought I would be completely gassed by the end of it. You know, when I was at the top of it, I thought to myself, well, I gotta get hey, all the be, way there first. It'd be easy to, it, like, when you walk, like, in an airport or something, that, that flooring that looks like it's kind of, like, it's not slick at all. Like you could easily catch your right toe or something and have to jog it off. It did have a little stick to it. And to be honest, I don't remember. I mean, you go out there mm -hmm. and you just kind of see it all. And this is yet another situation, AJ. Royal Rumble, I I got there. 6.35, 6.40. Show 7, I yep. think. Yep. Local time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In so I got there like straight there. No rehearsal, obviously. Didn't see shit. Didn't see anything. Nobody knew I was there. Just get in. And then, boom, introduced 
four minutes upon getting into the building. Yep. So I just thought the uh, the entryway was just the same as it was. It was a double double curtain. Oh. So when I turned the corner, I thought I was in something, and oh, oh, nobody, empty room. Okay, let me let me go into another one. So when I got to do the when I got to do the the resume, that was I was really intrigued to see what the fuck was about to happen as I turned the corner because nobody knew I was there, and I got up there very late in the whole thing. And it was like, oh, fuck, so many humans. Those, those WrestleMania stadiums are huge. AJ. I mean, SoFi was beautiful. Two nights in a row, too. That's what's crazy. Like, two nights back to back. You're like, I mean, WWE is like Garth Brooks. That's the only other people that can do that. Garth Brooks did Indianapolis here, I think, three nights straight. Yeah. Stadiums. And then that, went down to South Bend and did the same thing three nights in a row. Well, that's Garth Brooks. That's yeah. GB. Yeah, right. That's GB. You ain't going to be able to get that with a lot of people. That, that's why the W. Uh, WWE, mm -hmm. shout out to Michael Cole, An allegedly $9.3 billion sale. How much was sold? We shall see. Was it the entirety of the thing? Vince McMahon, still the chairman. I believe uh, Nick Khan will still be there. Mm -hmm. I believe Hunter still there. Oh, yeah. It's going to be very similar to how the UFC thing happened because Endeavor, the same company, purchased UFC as well. And in his interview this morning, Ari Emanuel, who is the... Is he? He's not the founder. It was founded in like 1892 or something. Yeah. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Endeavor. They had like uh, they got a lot of money. Yeah. Charlie Chaplin. They got a lot of money over yeah, there. Yeah, Marilyn Monroe, everybody. Anyways, $9.3 billion valuation, uh, valuation because of, you know. Everything. And Vince's sweet mustache now, too. Yeah. So that adds to it. So sweet, sweet, dude. So sweet. <laughs> Imagine just popping back, just hair. So sweet. And he's still jacked. jocked. Yeah, oh yeah. Absolutely jacked. Yeah. His uh his trainer was there and he dude, it was like th those are the types of people, like literally security people, trainer mm -hmm. people, medical mm -hmm. people, all those people not happy that I've been in the building all day and didn't even think to say like hello. You know, like you were here all a fucking asshole. Uh, like <laughs> I got a couple of those, you know what I mean? And then Kayfabe, bro. Kayfabe. there was a lot of people that are like, ah, I didn't even fucking I had no idea, I had no idea. So it was like two different reactions from everybody. But it was a lot of dapping, a lot of dapping, you know, a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And his trainer looks even bit I'm like He got more jocked? Bro, he got more jocked. More jocked. Jeez. Holy shit, dude, you got more jocked. Ha. And then you see that yes. man oh, and you're like oh my god he's fucking <laughs> is he 55 years old again this guy is he 50 Honestly. years old again he was uh I go to high school with that guy look how young he looks <laughs> yeah seriously he might have gone to plum with you Fuck. guys hey listen is he a stang has his hair always been that jet black we would love you know that's uh yeah 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 yeah, yeah that, yeah, that is his hair yeah. yeah of course yeah. that dude um that dude started in a trailer park dude like, I think that is something, you know, everybody wants to bury everything that happened. And obviously, there was some shit that made him leave the WWE that is not necessarily the most desirable or admirable or anything like that that you would want to take place. This dude started in a fucking trailer park in America, you know, and just sold his company for a $9.3 billion valuation. Like, he's got to be so fucking proud. Oh you know what God, I mean? Like, he's a be. robot. He's a robot, yeah. everybody thinks. Then he came on our show and he was like 35, 40 minutes. Yeah, what do you want? Being. Anybody talk to him? He's there. Trailer Park to this. What a story. And I uh, I assume the movies that are going to be in abundance about him whenever he passes away. And there'll probably be a lot of, you know, people that, you know, say terrible things about him because he's fired so many people over a long time and situations have happened and he has not necessarily acted like a fucking angel in any of those situations. He is certainly a human being. But the story of the business of the American dream, like, that's a fucking crazy one. Oh, yeah. Like, that is a, that's a crazy one. And Nick Khan over there, obviously, him being a part of it all, and Hunter, and Stephanie, and Kevin fucking Dunn, you know, like, just the people that have been there for so long, business-wise and on camera. I mean, Michael Cole's been there 26 years or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, four more years, I think. Four more years. 30 would be cool. 30 fucking years? Like, that's a long time, dude. Like, who? how many people work at places for that long that are that public and that successful, you know? It's like everybody over there is just, I'm incredibly pumped for them. I'm like very, this morning I woke up and saw that. I was like immensely proud. Like, good for you guys, dude, because they work their dicks off, mm -hmm. too. So it's like... Very proud, very happy for him, and it's not easy to do, obviously. Well, and in the last few months, we've been hearing a lot of, like, uh, you know, this so-and-so NFL owner bought the team for X amount and then sold it for, you know, or it, it is worth now X amount. I think uh, Morning Brew tweeted this morning that he bought the WWE in 1982 for a million bucks. 
and sold it today for you know over now, this old nine man billion. obviously was a part of it but at that point it was territory driven and you know it was a big decision whenever he went and started you know making the shows grander i wanted bigger you know like that's i think that was his i think he's like the most creative human maybe of all time he's been in charge of creative since 1982. He's not scared to take a chance. That's a big reason why he's good. <laughs> Took a lot he's of those. Scared. Oh, yeah. He's not scared to throw it out there and see what works. Took a lot of those, man. And not, there's a lot of that didn't work. Think about thinking of every... <laughs> think about having to be a part of every. Not making every. I assume there's a lot of ideas that come from other people. But he's a part of every one of them. Yeah, person. Just think about the amount of ideas that have come through that fucking thought box there. Mm -hmm. That has jet black hair now. Yeah. Looks good. Looks good. But think about the amount of things that have gone there. The kiss my ass club. Oh, my God. That Thought run not. was insane. Just think of the whole Attitude Era. All the yeah. things. Mm -hmm. Oh, we could fucking blow me up and yeah. kill me. Mm -hmm. Cutting off Val Venus's yeah. penis. Cutting off Val Venus's penis. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know Troy that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You should watch that one. Shave your head match with Trump, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yep. The, uh, I mean, the funeral. <laughs> where the Ride right a casket out of the, fu out of the <laughs> yeah. 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 cemetery. Yeah. yeah. We can do that. Unbelievable. Just so many. And think about, at the same time, the amount of bad ideas that have been presented yeah. or that he has created, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. that they've all had to be like, yeah, this will be good. And then backfire completely. It's like, what do you want us to do? We've been live on air for 50 fucking years straight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 50 years, like the season, the next season of WWE starts tonight. Hell yeah. Super right? Bowl was yesterday. Hell yeah. New season starts Tonight, episode one of 52 <laughs> starts tonight. And then on Friday, episode one of 52 starts tonight. And then on Wednesday, NXT, one of 52 starts this Wednesday. It's like, these motherfuckers have been doing that for 40 years. Good off season. So to see they had a great, I assume last night was fucking awesome. Yeah. I assume they had a great off season. But like, I, I, they should all be very proud over there, man. That's a, that's a tough thing to do, AJ. Where is where, so? Where is it tonight? That's what always freaks me out. They have all this build up for WrestleMania and everything, and then these guys turn around and you have to wrestle ten hours later. Like, wh where is it? Tonight? That happens all the time. It's in LA. I know, but like the week, the week run is not like what it used to be. I guess back in the day, they used to just they're road Dude, warriors. Like, what what do you call it? What do you call it when it's not on tele on TV? The house Dark shows. Dark. You're talking about the house do shows. Have, do they have, do they still have house shows during the week? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the Ross, the Raw crew, and I might be wrong, but I think the Raw crew. Is like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, maybe. Oh, whatever. All of them have like two nights, house mm -hmm. shows, either surrounding the show, SmackDown and Raw. Two different companies traveling differently, and they do house shows. I don't know how many they're doing these days because COVID, they had to stop completely. I think they ramped them back up. I don't know if it's everybody or what the deal is. But yeah, they're, they do like two to three shows a week. Everybody wrestling, doing their thing, and traveling. Uh, which is normally a full thing. So they're off like two days, I think. I think everybody gets like a two-day sleep, and then they're back on the road doing it. But yes, uh, Raw's in L.A. tonight. They take over the whole city for Friday all the way through Monday. They'll do it in an arena tonight, I assume, instead of the stadium. But they're fu it's fucking unbelievable to watch them work. Yeah. It, is, it is really a spectacle to just watch it all work behind the scenes as well as on, on camera. Yeah, I assume they're doing like the Kings or the Staples Center or whatever the hell it's called now, the Crypt. Crypt. Uh, mm -hmm. I yeah, just hope Crypt. they bring back, as they we're going through Crypt, all these storylines, right? I mean, they can save the entire year, or not save, but they can just set it with Ezekiel. As soon as Ezekiel comes back, don't worry I seen about Elias at the Hall of Fame. That was good to see him. It was, was good there? to see him. Yeah. Did he have his fucking eight pack out? No, he's sitting on the end. No, he's dressed like a professional. That boy. Ray Mysterio is going to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, well, right. yeah, at I least, saw at least Dom the, disrespected yeah. and walked right past. That was Elias. despicable. That was disgusting. I what thought he, Elias was going to smack him in the mouth. He didn't. No, Elias was thinking about it, but he said, "Hey, not my show. This is race." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus, Elias saw Rhea Ripley, and you don't want to fuck with her. Jocked. Jocked. Absolutely jocked. <laughs> Yoked. What a time. AJ, let's talk about some NFL stuff going on. The Titans are exploring going up to number three, allegedly via Daniel Jeremiah, who was pressed on that news subject by Taylor Lewan and answered Taylor Lewan by saying that he has heard from GMs around the league that they could be a... Sleeper? 
a sleeper to move up to three. Wow. Uh, so that obviously leads us all to believe, oh, that wouldn't be a bad move for them, actually. You know, Tannehill, who knows how much time he has left at three? Is that Anthony Richardson, a person that they said might need some time to develop and do his thing? Mm. And if you get Anthony Richardson in that particular offense, who knows what the offense is going to look like going forward? Remember, brand new offense coordinator. Because yep. last offense coordinator had the best night of his life. That's right. Beating the Packers at Lambeau on Thursday night. After talks of him getting fired for like a month. Yep. yep. And then got a Dewey and said, do you not know who the fuck I am? They just beat the Green Bay Packers. They stuck with him. They didn't win. <laughs> He's now gone. That's right. Mm -hmm. So who knows what the new offense – allegedly, that's what it sounded like. Right, yeah. yeah. Holy shit. Allegedly. There allegedly. body cam footage already. There might have been. No, there's body cam footage on uh, – I don't know if there was, but I thought there was of him too, and he said like I think I had a victory beer in Green Bay or something. He said, yeah, "Fuck off!" I didn't see this allegedly. Yeah, I, don't, I think that, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think that's what I read. Man, what an answer! If that's the case, <laughs> just want to kind of slide in there to see, you know, if this yeah. is anything. Just want to let me throw this little balloon out. Let me throw the weather balloon out and get to <laughs> let me gauge the interest. Those Wisconsin here. IPAs are strong. They're, they they are. are. Yeah, JJ brought they them over. Spotted fucking, cow. Yeah, spotted Nick's. cow. He sent a canary into the cave there. So yep. uh, let's just see, you know, how. He knew right away. Oh, that's backfired. Uh oh. Okay, sir, actually, well, Get out of the car, put please. your hands behind your <laughs> Man, can't be doing that in this modern world. No. Especially with the access that we have now to other people driving us. It was a big win, though. But that was a massive win. Yeah. 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 Can't be drunk driving. He, I could see how he would celebrate. Mm -hmm. And he, I could see how he maybe didn't plan ahead either. Yeah. You know, because he didn't know. Because at that time, I don't think right. anybody knew if that was going to happen. Yeah. No. So Uber, though, kind of cuts that excuse out the sure. window. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, could certainly make that happen. He's gone. What will the next offense look like? Derrick Henry still with the Titans. What do you think about the Tennessee Titans potentially going to get a new quarterback? And what do you think the future looks like, AJ? I think it absolutely could be plausible that they would want to move up to three to, to try to get one of the quarterbacks they want. I don't, I don't know what the, the feel is like nationally or inside like Tennessee, but uh, to me, it doesn't feel like they're comfortable with Tannehill moving forward. It, see, it feels like they're very open to figuring something out and bringing someone in. Ran Carthon. Carthon, new GM. Um, he has done some things that make you go, okay, he has a vision for this team. There's a reason he's gotten hired because the team obviously needs something. And he has made moves. You know what I mean? He's already made moves to be like, hey, this is the future. Mm -hmm. You would assume the biggest salary cap hit would also be in that conversation. What happens with Tannehill? Well, what does happen with Tannehill? Could you package him? Would you package him with uh, picks or something? Like, hey, we want these picks and we'll throw Tannehill in for Car whoever? Cardinals don't want that. Maybe if Kyler's not playing. They might want a solid backup or if Kyler isn't ready to go right away, they could do that. And then that's like $80 million. It's a lot of money. Cap, a lot of yeah. money, yeah. Just for those two guys. What is Tannehill's cap? What's Tannehill's cap? I thought it was somehow? like 35, but the um, cut, the dead cap would be like 18. That's what I thought it was. On it. Crow just knocked on the window. I wonder if they're saying who they gives a oh, fuck no. because honestly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who, who what will have like yeah. you know? It could just be it could just be obviously more information being floated out there to try to make other teams nervous and make other teams try to move. Isn't this interesting? The Arizona Cardinals could be floating that out. Yeah, right. Because they want people to start I thinking, especially that. the Colts. So they would definitely want the Tennessee Titans yeah. name yeah, right to be in there. That could be three AFC South teams moving into the top four picks in the NFL draft. That is a great state of affairs if you're in the AFC South. The yeah, AFC South. Is currently gettable you know if you're mm -hmm. if you're a jaguars fan you should be very happy because the team seems to be the best team you've had in a long time the quarterback appears to be a dog i think yeah oh yeah the offensive weapons seem to be coming together etn starting to learn the nfl towards the end of the season oh, yeah. he was starting to oh, yeah. really slice and dice and be a fantastic asset doug peterson has already won a goddamn super bowl yeah mm -hmm. and has a statue that's right now got fired from the place that he got a statue from, which is certainly fascinating. But I appreciate the fact that Duval Clanton just a couple years ago is sitting in a driver's seat of a a division that's very gettable. Yeah. That home playoff game is very alive oh, yeah. for yeah. the Jacksonville for the foreseeable future, it feels yeah. like. And they're levels above you three. Like, not Relax, to, our roster. Not to take shots. Not Jonathan but, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. But, but you're right. I mean, I just said it kind of. They're levels above just because like the D-line's unbelievable. They live in Florida. The no state income tax is a massive thing. Like People like Doug. Yeah, people like yeah. Doug Peterson, and they have a guy. Want to like, play with Trevor. Yeah, yeah, they have Trevor Lawrence. Oh, uh, no. To and, your point. Now AJ. They have, now they have Calvin Ridley. Very relevant. The Jags seem to be very relevant, especially in, in that division. Go ahead, Tone. The Chiefs are minus 150 to win their division. They just won the Super Bowl. 
The Jags are also minus 150 to win their division. Oh, no. because their division. Whoa. Oh, oh that's whoa. easy, AJ. That's oh, come on, Colts. You got to get up there, Colts. I think Colts are what? Plus 28,000 to win the Super Bowl? This is what we're, this is where we won't be. Because it was not allowed to go higher. You'll now. find a QB. You always, everyone finds a QB at the end. Hey, fall of, fall of trees. The Green Bay Packers are about to have three in a row for fucking 50 years. That's right. Boom. <laughs> Jets are about to have their first since Namath. Well, and they're saying that around the league, there's growing buzz that Will Levis is the guy. I think really? he's, he's yeah. taking a visit today, I do he's, believe. He's shocked. I think yeah. he's taking a Probably visit. Not Cowherd doesn't think so. No, he Other doesn't. people might. You said Cowherd at, uh, he was at uh, WrestleMania. He was. I think he was, was at, he? yeah. Two he rows back. Chilling. He looked good. Like I think he was front row. I don't think it was two rows. I think he was front row. Hey. I mean, if you're counting Cole and Corey Graves right. and the Spanish announce team mm -hmm. as row Bad one. Bunny. And Bob Bunny. Mm -hmm. sure. Hey, he's hosting it. Bob Bunny was a surprise, I think. He was. Yeah. San Benito. Jumped in there, saved the day. He's hosting down there in Puerto Rico. What a fucking scene that's going to yeah, be. People are going to go crazy for him. If any, if you've ever seen a video of Bad Bunny in Puerto Rico, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Now they have a W. There's a W. Did you hear this? No, there's a program running in Puerto Rico? Yeah. It's going to be fucking huge. I, th I think it's going to be very large what and awesome. What do you mean awesome. like an event? There's going to be a premium live event or there's going to be like a training center? A premium live event. Backlash. Uh, yeah. Backlash? It'll be there soon. Yeah. I, I want to sell? Hell in a Cell was last night. Finn Balor's head got busted open, like whoosh, yeah. straight down the middle. Yeah. Got hit with yeah. a ladder inside Hell in a Cell. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. That's Big gas. You can almost see his Can they use tax anymore? Hell yeah. I think it's, right. I don't know if it's a uh, well liked thing because normally whoever brings in the tax, like they're going to suffer the effects of the tax as, uh, as well. So yeah. that's a, oh. that's an all party loses. Type yeah. Situation. Mm -hmm. That's tax. why they need like super tax. I thought you were talking about taxes. Taxes happen as well. Yep. Yeah, in Puerto Rico? Could you imagine in the middle of hell in a cell, bringing out an sure. accountant or an IRS guy? We're arresting you. <laughs> taxes, <laughs> taxes would be the best weapon of all time. I wonder if they tried that. I mean, they probably have. Probably have, yeah. <laughs> if not, you need to float the it tax out. man. The tax man was somebody. Remember, I think. Erwin yeah. R. Scheister, yep. IRS, yeah. Yeah, they had the tax. Erwin R. Scheister. <laughs> <That's his name. laughs> Hell yeah. That happened. Oh, so they just sold free. <laughs> Yeah. What an Dang. idea. All right. We'll answer some phone calls today on the Five Energy Phone Line. 1 432 3663. Can't wait to hear what people are chatting about around the globe. And right now, you go to uh, fiveenergy.com, use promo code McAfee. You'll receive 20% off your orders. We are awaiting Sham Sharania, uh, an appearance on the program, but I believe he is. I think there's some news. Breaking coming. some news. Okay. Yeah. Sean Sean is always working, AJ, isn't he? It's, it's always I mean, a shoot, brother. I mean, isn't it? It's pretty It's pretty amazing how much this guy can do at such a young age. He's That's, not even 30, is he? No, he is not. I wonder if it's about super, the man. He's a superstar in the game. How about mature, how mature he is? Oh, so God. Mature. Yeah, so mature. So he's mature. so mature, dude. It crazy. is crazy. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. He always seems like he's just working, mm -hmm. and he never gives in to temptation ever. Isn't yeah. that how it looks like when you look at him? Oh, yeah. Hair always perfect. perfect. Yep. Mm -hmm. Beard always perfect. You see him at games, always locked in. Mm -hmm. Always completely locked gotta in. got to be something is what you're getting to. There's got to be something that he goes wild on, right? Yeah, you know we know. Yeah. Why are you going to bring up something Not negative? Not a bad way. No, we know what he goes wild on. Maybe he goes out to like one of these EDM shows, and he just goes crazy. Oh, <laughs> that doesn't seem like yeah. Sean's. I don't know yet, because I think, I honestly believe he's just like focused. Like, I think he's just like a very incredibly driven human being that's just yeah. locked in. Because some of those basketball games, it's hard not to just like, yeah. you know. Yeah. Chill. Like, hey, what's going on? You know, it's, how's it going? He's he's working at all these. He's so young and he has access, to, I think, to everything. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. He's crushing it. We're proud of Shams. He's not on. He's not with us. Did he break? Well, we should clap for him. Why did we do that whole thing if he's not on? Well, I thought there was a chance that if I kept fucking going, he would be. He would hear the, yeah. Ass. Because this is what Shams does, though. Shams gets information mm -hmm. and he delivers it to the people. Yeah, he does. Better than anyone. You know, and it's been happening for a long time in the in the history of information, people have been getting it before others mm -hmm. and dispersing it to people and saying, hey, you know what? You deserve to hear this. You should know this. Hey, I just found this out. This is either good or terrible for your team. Like a newspaper. Psalms just serves the people, serves the NBA universe. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. He is somebody that has done it at such a high level for so damn long, at such a young age, right. that we all know that there's a chance this guy's the fucking commissioner of the league someday. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Go. And he comes onto this program and lets the whole world know uh -huh. what he has heard from sources that he is the only human that has. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Sham Sharanya. Yeah! Sham Sharanya. Yeah! <laughs> What's up? What's going on? Oh. What's good? Okay, so I heard just as of like a second ago you were on the phone. Don't know if this is a bit or if it's a real deal. Shams, you're a fucking monster, dude. Yeah. You're an absolute beast. You are a <laughs> dog. <laughs> What's going on in the NBA world? Are you breaking news right now? What's happening over there? Yeah, there's 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 actually been a development over the last what? um actually the last 24 hours. So Excuse me. the the Warriors defending champions um you know obviously with Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green mm -hmm. all healthy, they have a chance potentially to go back to back this year. They've been without Andrew Wiggins since mid-February. Um he's been dealing with what, what the team called personal reasons. And so I'm told he's flying back either tonight or tomorrow to the Warriors to rejoin the team. The expectation and the plan is that he's going to be at the game tomorrow, Warriors Thunder in the Bay Area. Wow. Um, and, and, and I think Here we the go. biggest question across the whole, you know, the league, and we've seen, unfortunately, because of Twitter and social media, there's been a lot of misinformation. There's been a lot of talk and, you know, people trying to give reasons as to why Andrew Wiggins has been away. I don't know if you've seen Pat, but they've been coming up with all kinds of Speculation. The internet wouldn't do that. That's, that's weird. Not something the internet exactly, would do. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> never that. Never that. Internet's um, awesome. But, too, but I, I'm I'm here to say that I'm told that the reason for Wiggins' leave of absence over since mid February is that his father, Mitchell Wiggins, has been dealing with a serious medical situation. Um, and and so obviously our prayers are with his dad. Our prayers are with him. And and you know it's something that you 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 hate to hear. Um, and and I, I think this is something that Wiggins, even when he's back on this team, it's still an issue. And, and it's still something that I'm sure is going to be at the forefront of his mind, something that he's going to be dealing with mentally. Um, but the Warriors, I, I will say this, they haven't pressured him to come back. They've given him his space. They haven't applied any pressure. Um, and they've wanted to just give him his time and his transparency to deal with the situation. And now he feels like he's at a point where the season's coming up short and he wants to rejoin his team. Obviously, it has to be very serious with his father. So we send nothing but our positive vibes and thoughts and support. Uh, with that being said, and obviously it's not as serious as that, is he in good shape? Does anybody know? Like if, if his return, does that mean he's going to play? Or is this like we got to get back to the process of getting healthy again and getting on the court? Because... The guy's a fucking player now. Yes, oh, yeah, need him. They're already loaded. You get another weapon. That would be fantastic for the Golden State Warriors going forward. Is he back, healthy, ready to go? So he's been working out. Um, he's been working out, from what I'm told, daily over the last several several days, um, several, several weeks. Uh, he's got a personal trainer. He's been in Minnesota. So he's going to be flying from Minnesota. Um, he's going to be flying from Minnesota. Uh, to the bay, so he's been training every day. But again, being in 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 day to day shape and and working out and doing all that is much different than than actually being able to play in games and do five on five. So I don't expect him to play tomorrow. But I think as you get closer to the weekend, they have two games after this. You hope to see him back on the floor. Okay, so that's a great team to potentially just get a few minutes and get back so you can get back into game shape. AJ has a question for you while you're trying to put that tweet out. Literally right now, we apologize. <laughs> Watching you try to piece that together while giving a coherent answer to me, Impressive. incredible. Because yeah, wow. that means his fingers are telling a different story than what his mouth is. That's right. That's why this dude's <laughs> such a young age taking over the game. Right, baby, yeah. Shams? Yeah, Shams. Hey, Ritz guy. Oh, Shams got Woo. two brains. Go ahead, AJ. Uh, Shams, what do the Dallas Mavs look like next year? What's their roster look like? Who's coaching them? What's going to be happening there? Yeah, I think that this is the biggest question in the league right now. I, listen, I, I think when, when you get Kyrie Irving, and you, you have Luka Doncic, they've got their number two guy um, next to uh, – sorry, reading something, reading a text. We're reading it um, right now, actually, yeah. Sounds like we're reading. We're all reading right now. There you go. <laughs> there it is. Um, but they, they, they've yeah. got – they they went out and got their star in Kyrie Irving, and from everything I'm told, the the goal is to build around Luka Doncic, to build around Kyrie Irving. Oh no! And Kyrie Irving is going to be a free agent this summer, so we don't know if he's going to be back. But their their first and foremost goal is to resign him. Um, obviously, I think he's had a good time being in Dallas so far. It's been a good overall experience. He's spoken on it 
publicly. Um, Sean, and so they, what Sean, does it feel they, Sean, like? they stink, don't they? Don't they stink? I don't want to. We don't know basketball that well, but I do know that I was actually at their only win in the last eight games against the Pacers, and it was. They like, have issues. They have serious roster issues because once you look, look past Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, which guys do you? consider keepers going into next season uh, i mean you probably look at maxi cleaver jaden hardy um so that puts you at, at, McGee, at, at four, four guys zero. yeah hell yeah yeah I, I, I don't know about those guys what um, whoa what? Dirk, Dirk, they'd love to bring Dirk back uh if they had Dirk on this team they'd be good um oh, but i think oh, oh they have three first round picks this off season they have some salaries that they can use in trades and i i think you're gonna look at them try to bring players onto this team to match with Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving and try to beef up this team. I, I, I don't know what more you can do beyond that. And so also when you're looking at it, they have a top 10 protected pick. So it does also make sense for them if they want to, to, to look into the future more and maybe shut a couple of these guys down and try to go and secure your top 10 pick. Just as somebody who is a casual, okay, I will admit that as an NBA fan. Didn't Luca just say something the other day about not loving basketball or something like that as much as he had once said it or something like that? And is that because they've been losing at basketball? And didn't they start losing whenever Kyrie got to the team? Do Luca and Kyrie get along or like, and is there a way to build around those two that are a successful way of winning in Dallas? Because when the easy answer, as you said, like they're bringing Kyrie back is like, does Kyrie want to still be there after they lose? And does, do they still want him? You're saying yes on both sides. It's just they feel like they can build around it. And did, is that what Luke I, said? I think they feel like they can build around those two guys. And yeah, you're right, Pat. I mean, Thank technically you. Kyrie Irving is going to be a free agent. So it's going to be his decision whether to be back. The Mavericks do want him back. Now, it's, what does the contract look like? But when you think about Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, I think they've shown at different points that they can be explosive. They've had games where they've both scored 40 points or Whoa. more. They've had wow. games where one is electric and the other kind of takes a little bit of, 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 of a playmaking role. Last night, Kyrie Irving goes off for over 40 points. Luka Doncic has 20. Now, if Luka Doncic had 30 or 40, they'd probably win that game. So oh, for those wow. two guys really? to win games, Jeez. they have to play at such a high level every single night that sometimes it's just not sustainable. You can't ask for your two best players to score 30 to 40 points every single night. You need other players to jump on the bandwagon and help Come as on. well. And I think that's what the organization is looking at. When you look at those two guys, I have not heard any friction between them two. If anything, I've heard them spending more time around each other, whether it's working out or off the court in the last several weeks. It's got to translate into wins, though. And right now, it isn't. Okay, so maybe they'll do some off-season activities. Yeah. And they'll yeah. build the team up around it. them. And they'll, maybe. They should. Yeah. Go to the place that Jake Paul, Aaron went, many others have had mm -hmm. great success mm -hmm. after going. Sip some of that tea, makes you puke, makes you shit, same damn time. Yep. I think. Yep. I've not taken it. Heard your trip, though, and changed yeah. the whole world. Maybe that's what they need to do. Yeah, that makes sense. Good luck out there, Dallas. You got this, Cube. Tun Diggs has a question for you, Shams. Shams, I, I saw you talking about, so the NBA is now doing a, a mid-season tournament, but it's just regular season games that they're going to get paid for a lot more money. Is that what's, what it is? Yeah, so basically it's going to be in November, December. <laughs> All the regular season games that they already play will be called in-season tournament games. In, in, those months, in, in those two months, they're going to have a final four of the four final teams after – uh, you know, in-season tournament play, nice. there's going to be a knockout tournament play. So it's really just raising the stakes of of, reg of these regular season games. And then eventually, yeah. I mean, potentially you can sell those rights for the in-season tournament to an Amazon, to an wow. Apple. Yeah. I think that's, wow. that's a couple years away, you it's know, just some adding some, yeah. some, right. some, yeah. some different revenue streams. Making but nice yeah, the, the end result will be an in-season tournament championship. <laughs> Uh, and winners on that team will get five hundred thousand dollars each. Whoa. Now I don't know how much that's going to mean for the top players, but I mean you got to assume between ten and fifteen, five hundred thousand dollars is a pretty good chunk of change. What if the trophy is like half a person because it's halfway through the season? <laughs> that would be cool. sweet. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like a smaller half trophy. You know what I mean? Yes. So at least it's so like so 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 basically not the size of that Bud Light right there. What? what? That's a big one, tall one. Ice, it was ice cold at one point now, very lukewarm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not that. But whenever you're talking about, um, it, it's all a marketing campaign. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, simple. I love it. it how did this, it was, a, 
And they talked about not testing marijuana. That was you. Thank you. I think you, smart. I think Sean's broke at like 3 a.m. or so. Yep. At 3.30 in the morning, and then I wake up to, a, I think, a 9 a.m. pat tweet about how the NFL should do it. That's interesting. I didn't. I did, and, and and I like how Kevin Durant is the face of uh, of that. By the way, you know, shout out—he kind of did to himself on the Letterman show. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, but yeah, he said he yeah, was hot Kevin, then. Hot and that, right it was now. at that in level. The I was like, yeah. And then, so yeah. Pat, why isn't the NFL? So so the NBA. If you look at this, if you look at the new CBA agreement, not only is you know marijuana, there's no testing, no no, no prohibition uh, for it as well. Um, but also NBA players are now going to be able to invest in NBA, WNBA teams through uh, NBPA selected private equity firm. They're going to be able to do sports betting deals, awesome. uh, cannabis deals. What? What's going on with the NFL, Pat? Why? So that sounds like great business. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Like, this is an extension, early extension that they were able to get this done. Who and how and why is the NBA and the NBPA's relationship so much better than seemingly every other league? And is it because... If you take 15 of the top players, 15, that's all you need, 15 of the top players, the league would be fucked, and the players understand that, and the league also understands that. Why do you think there's such good faith in negotiation with the NBA as opposed to every other league? Because this was an early deal, right? Yeah, so they, they that had a never happens. Opt-out. That never they happens. They had a mutual opt-out on Friday. So basically they kept extend, they extended it a couple times. They, ex- they kept extending it late into the night on Friday. They extended it like three times. So that by the point it got to close to like 2.30 a.m. East Coast time in New York City, where all the negotiators were, that they were able to get a deal done. But they've been aiming to get a deal done in March for the last couple of months. Like, I think they all kind of agreed the, the basic point that they wanted to get across now is just getting a deal done. But I think when you look at it, you know, Adam Silver, Tamika, um, you know, uh, on, on the MBPA side, they they wanted to get a deal done. And, 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 and I think players, the, the league, they've had such a good relationship over the last several months. And I think a lot of it, Pat, has to do with the pandemic season. 2020, the amount of time that those two parties had to spend just making sure that the league continued to run, uh-huh. coming up with different protocols and health and safety and social justice campaigns and the night that there was the boycott um, and the Lakers and Clippers both voted not to play anymore and for the league and the owners to get on a call with the players and get them on the same page. Like, that is like years of just building that type of relationship so that by the time you get to the negotiating table, you can try to get a deal done. So I think that's mm. what uh, I, I would I would give a lot of credit to that. And um, the, the NBPA head is it's a female. A uh, March 31, final day of Women's History Month. So they were able to get a deal done literally that last day. Uh, oh, oh so shit. Got a deal done. Hey, yep. congrats to all parties over yeah, there. Mika. Not easy to get deals done. Not easy at all to get deals done, but it sounds like it gets a lot easier whenever you're hanging around each other and knowing each other. Mm-hmm. Good for all parties there investing in that because it's going to end up being great for all everybody. Fans, the NBA, the players, the hopefully the league. I mean, it's, it's good shit. I, I think a lot of other leagues wish they had it good. AJ, sorry about that. Shams, how do they, I mean, just a technical question, I guess, how did they get this deal done in during the regular season? Do, were there current players involved in this, these negotiations, and how do they make this work right in the heart of the season as it's ending? That's a lot of bullshit. Yeah, it, it's it's somewhat unique. I mean, the last CBA extension, I think, in 2017, that was also done, I think, in December, so that was during the year as well. But I think the biggest thing is just that this is just wherever the mutual opt-out date landed at. And initially, it was December of 2022 they extended it uh to they extended it to march and so i think just the fact that they keep they kept extending it it was in the summer then they extended it then they made it in the fall then they made it in the winter and then now they made it early spring so i think it's really just the extensions they could have also extended it even more they could have extended another month they could have extended into june technically they had till the final day in june to come up with an agreement because once july hit it would have been a lockout they didn't get to that point so I, th- I think it's just a matter of whenever the, 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 the date hit up and them actually coming up with the terms that they want to set. It's fascinating to think about it all because, I mean, there's the top guys are the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody at that Pacers game that I went to uh, just a couple weeks ago, that was a Luka show. Mm-hmm. Everybody was there for Luka. Yep. Luka sold out that fucking arena. And then the Pacers weren't able to keep it close enough, and Luka sat the whole fourth quarter in the locker room. So, like, the Pacers sold out a building because of Luka. Mm-hmm. They know that, I assume, right? Pacers knew that. 
I mean, Luca, Kyrie, Kyrie played in that game too, right? But yeah, Luca. No, no, Kyrie, I'm just telling you the jerseys that I saw from being in the building. It was all Luca. Yeah. I mean, listen, Luca, Luca, He's LeBron, Giannis. Kyrie, Jokic, I think if Kyrie would have went, Steph. I think if Kyrie would have went, Lennox. like if Kyrie would have went off, definitely a lot of Maverick stuff as well. But Luca was like fucking. He, yeah. That was the one where he had that pass from the corner. Yeah. From the corner, and uh -huh. the, I mean, he yeah. was. But he, I think you're right, Pat. I think there's like 15 to 20 players in the league that. On the road, the amount of attention they draw, that's why it's such a bummer when guys like, you know, LeBron or Giannis sits on the on the road and like the one time they come to that city, it, like it's a bummer for those fans because there are thousands, obviously 15, 20,000 fans that come to games. Uh, at least a majority of them are going to see the best players. So for sure, I think the star power, the NBA is a star-driven league, no question. But I think now you're starting to see a lot of parity as well. I think fans are drawn more to the league as well because you literally have a season now in the NBA, Pat, where – I mean, 10 teams, 12 teams probably think they have a shot to win a championship. Usually it's like when I started watching the NBA, it was like three or four teams every year. You're like, Lakers. these are – like I could probably take a guess and be right. These three or four teams are going to win a championship. Now it's like you have 10, 11, 12 teams. I think the parity is good for the league. A lot of superstars too. Mm -hmm. Big-time oh, yeah. superstars that understand that they're superstars as well and know how to work it. It's good operation they got going over there. Can't wait to see what they do next. Connor has a question for you, Shams. Yeah, Shams. Uh, Bronny played in the McDonald's All-American game a couple weeks ago. Our team's going to start tanking next year so that they can hopefully get him and then in turn get LeBron James. Yeah, they might. Uh, you know, LeBron has said that he wants to play with Bronny, um, but – could that happen in L.A.? I mean, L.A. is going to have draft picks as well over the next couple of years. So, listen, I, I think I think a lot can happen between now and next year. You have to see how the draft goes. LeBron James also has, a, I think, an opt-out um, in 2024. Whoa. So oh, there's like there's, there's going to be a lot of openings for, for LeBron James. Uh, and, you know, he has to see how the CBA totally looks. And going back to what AJ asked me, are there current players involved? Uh, C.J. McCollum, Jalen Brown – Several uh, current NBA players very involved on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with these negotiations. So just answering that for AJ. But, yeah, I, I think Bronny James is showing himself to be a first-round draft pick, potentially a yeah. lottery pick. Yeah. And so I don't know if a team is going to be tanking for him right out the gates, but eventually there's going to be a point next year where there are going to be teams that are going to be wanting Bronny James in the lottery, no question. LeBron's still the guy, right? Yeah. I mean, right now, the level he's playing at, Pat, at 38, and this is a Lakers team that looks like it can do some legitimate damage in the playoffs. What? Um, he's the at Lakers? the highest powers, for sure. What the happened? Lakers, yeah. The Lakers yes. are – whoa, whoa, whoa. How? Oh, yeah. The Mavericks <laughs> fell off a cliff. What happened? Mavericks fell off a cliff. The Lakers made the Lakers big was... trades at the deadline, Pat. They got D'Angelo Russell, Jared Vanderbilt, Malik Beasley, uh, Anthony Davis is 100% healthy now. He's looking better and better. He scored 37 points or more in four of the last five games. He had 40 points last night in Houston. He's playing at an exceptional level. And when you look at those standings, if you're the Lakers, I don't know if you want to get to five and play the Suns at four. That's a tough first on match. Kevin Durant's back could, too, by the way. He's back. He's back. Kevin Durant's back. And, and Pat, we should be able to see Kevin Durant against LeBron James on Friday. I know you're going to be up watching Ooh, that game. Hell that yeah. Happens. What time are you guys going to have that on? Like 11? What time is that going to be on? I think, yeah, I th I think that game's at like 10. Yeah, this is the game's at like 10. Oh, yeah, I'll see it in the morning. I, yeah. I'll, I'll watch the highlights. <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. I'll catch them. I'll you got to just record it. Just, just record it. You know? I did not know record the it. Have, have, it, have, it, have it as your Saturday morning you know, with, with a breakfast, with a nice oatmeal, oh, with a yeah. fork. Oh, very nice. oh, an Austin oh. eyeball like you with a fork the there. Move. And then how about lunch, too? I, yeah. I can't wait for a good oh, lunch. My God. Maybe I, lunch. Right? Isn't that your, that's yeah. your thing? <laughs> what, but what I was saying is, if you're the Lakers. How about lunch? Come on, oh, Lakers, you love Lakers, lunch. Lakers, Lakers, lunch. You, would love, you would love to get the sixth seed. I'm not trying to take shots at the Sacramento Kings. They, they have the third Whoa. seed right now. Like, you know, but you know what? Mike Brown came out and said, even I would want to play us if I'm other teams. You know what? I don't feel bad about it. If I'm the Lakers. I'm trying to get the number six pick. You play the Sacramento Kings. They're in their first playoffs in 16 years. That's the first playoffs for a lot of those guys on that team. You take advantage of your experience. See what can happen, but this is a this is this is a Lakers team that's onto something. They're playing good basketball. I love to hear that. I was worried, you know, because I just assumed that LeBron was going to leave the Lakers. He was going to go somewhere else, and then him and Bronny would end up somewhere, and that it was just kind of a wasteland after the bubble in L.A. for LeBron, and there was no success to be had ever again in the Lakers. This, the team that has obviously showed time, and we grew up watching late night, all of us pretty much at our age, and now the LeBron era is going to come and go as a, you know, kind of a little bit of a letdown because yeah. it is the Lakers. 
And then now you're telling me, hey, we're gonna win it all. They have a shot. You got hurt. They, they have a shot. Everyone does. Let's go. I'm excited to see what happens. I love that. I'm a big LeBron fan, big Lakers fan. Obviously not big enough to know what the fuck's going on in the NBA. Sure. But if I'm watching the NBA, would like them to have success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That feels like a they pretty are. casual viewer answer. Yeah. That's exactly what I am. Yeah. Ty has a question for you, Shams. Yeah, Shams, I hate to just beat the drum on this because it's kind of already a dead horse, but is uh, Zion walking yet? Is he crawling yet? Is he in a wheelchair? Are we ever going to see this fucking guy play again? <laughs> three on three. So, yeah, three so this is three, the show where, where, where we try to have good we try to have good information uh, on Zion Williamson. So I'm here to report uh, on my Zion Williamson beat for the Pat McAfee show. Hell yeah. Zion Williamson Played in some low intensity three on three the other day. Uh, he, he played with some what coaches. A joke. So, he, so he's back on the court. There was some um, intensity. He's getting some scrimmage work in, Plenty some low coaching. intensity three on three, oh, from what I'm go. told. Um, and like we've talked about on this show, progressions is a big thing. Being able to do one on one, two on two, three on three, four on four, five on five, doing it with contact, making sure your game shape is all right. Um, they're going to reevaluate him at some point this week. We'll see. Will he be able to come back with one or two games left in the regular season? Nope. And if he can't, do they just throw him out there in the play-in tournament game? I'm not as sure. Oh. And another thing that I've said on this show many times, and I know you know you guys, Ty is going to rib me on it, but the Pelicans, I'm told, are going to be cautious with it. They're going to make sure I'm so sick that they're going to bring him back. When, Put the when guy on the fucking court. Really good conditionally. You know, con condition-wise, and Hold also on. being able to play. Is he bodying these coaches or not? Like, are we a three-on-three, three and he, you know what? We'll skip the fucking four-on-three and the four-on-fours. He just did a fucking ha-ha, hee-hee to uh, assistant coach of the strengths team, mm -hmm. Jack, earlier today. You got to have the falsetto with that. You got to have the hee -hee. You know, you got to – come on, Pat. You're saying that too monotone with that. Well, you got to – Give me the falsetto. Ha-hee. Like, he he literally ha-hee. Mm -hmm. and, then he, <laughs> and then he actually dented the floor. Yep. And then did the, uh, boom. You should have seen it. I think we go straight to five on five. Like, how, how is it like in. low intensity three on three? I don't understand how that works. Just actually ask me. That's like Well, well he's fitness. going through it with coaches. I mean, he's going through it, he's going through it with coaches. Some so they suck? Scripted, That's what we're but assuming? He, but he, oh, my. No, it's three on three with Corey, a rascal Corey scooter. Brewer's on that staff. Corey Brewer, former NBA okay, player. He's, he's, a, guy. he's he a player. Was, you know, when they – they put him the on back? these videos. Yeah. He's not he looks to like he can play a little. Are they playing okay, ball? Okay, so, so that's my thing. Like, I'm not judging them saying they suck. I just wonder if they do suck or if this is like a usual thing. Like, all right, he's at the coach's team. Four o'clock coach's game against Zion and trainers or whatever. Like, is this just standard operating procedure? And they tell – what's low intensity mean? Like, they're – He's playing horse with the coach. Yeah, yeah he's playing. Sucks. He's playing in the three on three. Pat. Some of it is scripted. Some of it is low intensity. Some of it is a walk through. Scripted. Some of it. Right. Dribble right. Dribble right. Dribble right. Dribble right. No, they're running plays. <laughs> <laughs> they're running plays. Some of it, it's pool basketball. Noodles. Some of it is high intensity. <laughs> Are you guys playing pool I, basketball three on three? Is that what they're doing? I think, I think what you see with with Zion Williamson, he's a very specific case. His his, his his specimen is very specific. There's no other player in the league built like he's built. Can jump the way he can jump. Can old, move the way John. he can yeah. move. And so I think they have a different progression plan potentially for him than they might a guy that's usually 100% healthy, right? You want to make sure his game shape is good. Everything from the, when you look at shape, conditioning, weight, everything has to align for a guy like that. It's never going to happen. We appreciate you, Shams. Thanks for fucking killing the mood, dude. Yeah, put him in the fucking game. Didn't they pay him like 100 some million? They paid him like 100 yeah. some million dollars. We 190 to... mil. Oh, my 190 God. mil. Does the nice. owner know that they don't play him? Does that, like, the owner that has to pay him 190 million, do they know, like, hey, one of your biggest assets, a man that would sell out this building, not, I don't know if they do. They probably do. I've been down to Blender before. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've been in the Smoothie King Center. I understand what's going on down there. They got big fans. I understand that. Great fan base. But a guy who sells out every building, the reason, like, does she, do, she I believe, owner of the Pelicans, he, she? It's a she. Gail, Gail Benson. I mean, I, Does I, she I, know I that she's paying $190 I'm, I'm million for sure. three on three I'm with the coaches? Sure. I mean, what are we doing? Put I'm on pretty sure she knows about Zion Williamson's health condition. I, I think... I think they all in the organization know how good this team can be when Zion Williamson is 100 percent healthy. So yes, the goal always is to get him back on the floor 100. The, percent the The issue is is that bringing him back too soon, bringing him back too early. We saw what's happened right, last it, year. This is horseshit. He had like setbacks with his fractured foot. 
the adults in the room I get with it. his hamstring strain. So he's it. had he's shown a history of having setbacks with his major What's injuries. So we want him to get in shape, but we don't want him to play games to get in shape. Like what? What, game, what are we? What's the setback mean? I, I don't understand. The best, hang out on you know, the couch we, with we, the we do. We do. Yeah, bingo. Get yeah. him with the bump his hands. Exactly. We play pickleball for our cardio. Okay, that's what we do. It's fun. Don't have to think about it. It's awesome. What's he do for his? You think Zion could just do a Tuesday night fucking game for his cardio? Yeah. Like, what are we? What are we doing? He out needs here? to come out there to the PMS studios yeah. to play pickleball and get in shape. I, that might have to be a thing. <laughs> we don't want to ruin a man. And there's a basketball there. You might have a dent on the court though. By the time we don't want to get hurt. So, Listen, I don't you, know if you want that. I'm all about Zion taking down. Uh, the, that one. This one. The Thunderdome. The Thunderdome. This backboard right here. If Zion was to take yeah. that one down, we'd be pumped. We'd leave Every it on day. the ground. Probably tape around. Tape yeah. around it. Put a mm -hmm. little like VIP thing. Zion broke the thing. But we would like to see him have the opportunity to do that at some point. It always feels like Zion and his team are like, hey, I'm I'm ready to play. And it always feels like the Pelicans are like, no, you're not. No, you're not. Take it slow. And I'm about sick of it. I just want to see the guy play. He's an electrifying figure that sports world needs, just like you, Shams. How old are you, dude? Uh, I, it was just my birthday, actually, on uh, on Saturday. So what? I'm, getting, I'm getting old, Pat. I'm getting hey, old. Hey, I'm hey, hey, 29, but I'm, but I'm 40 in basketball years. I'm yeah. 40 in basketball years. I'm aging. I'm well, aging. How many years? 200. Well, Zion. Yeah. In basketball years. How many years per year? For basketball years, like dog seven, they say. What what's basketball year? Yeah, no, basketball years I think ages you at least three to five per year. Well, not your face so, though. His no, skin yeah, retain yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah, Ladies and gentlemen, an absolute dog, a stud of a man, and our insider for all things NBA. The playoffs start when this week? The playoffs start April eleventh, play in tournament game. So Next week. I, I need you to be watching, Pat. I need you to be watching. <laughs> Come be glued against in. LeBron on Friday. Doubt it. Is that game, what time's that game? 11, 12? I think it's going to be late. It's in L.A. It's going to be late. Okay. Well, get it more. I'll get yeah. it in the morning. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Sharanya. Yeah, Sean yeah. Those Lakers games always used to be late. Oh, yeah. I used to have so much better stamina, you know? Off-season, tough for me to stay up late if there isn't primetime football. That's 100% on me. I'm too weak-minded, AJ. <laughs> Well, that West Coast deal really throws a wrench in it, doesn't it? I mean, that's that's what we dealt with, Not though, with real. Kobe and Shaq out there. I feel like it was – that was appointment TV. Late night, late show, yeah. late show. It was awesome. We went to L.A. for 20 – we were gone 23 hours. 23 hours. 23, 23. 23 hours. Didn't get time thing. Good no. trip. The good way to beat the time thing is just stay in a bus mm -hmm. with the windows yeah. down no, for – Eight hours. No nine. sun. Which well, don't even change. It. Was so that bus Why'd you get there so early, though? Why'd you get so there so early if you had to hide in the bus? Because like getting in, obviously, there's a lot of people arriving at certain times. Yeah. So like to make things is, you know, because we didn't know if an opportunity was going to arise. Exactly. Yeah. We had no idea. But might have been the first match. Could have been. Wanted to be prepared. Wanted to be in there. But all we knew was, ain't nobody need to know. That we're there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Surprise attack on whoever potentially pops off. You know what I mean? <laughs> Who could have thought it was going to be the Miz? <sighs> that was the last thought. I so he hosted? It. He was the official host of WrestleMania? Yeah, he was the host, and then Snoop was the dog father of yep. WrestleMania, obviously. Okay. Is there normally a host? Um, yes. Like, who, who was it last year? Gronkowski was a host a couple years ago. Gronk, that was during sweet. COVID. That COVID. was during COVID, though. Yep. Yeah, I remember he came out and hit that pole. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I went off the top of one of those. Yeah? That's my first time. Because mm -hmm. at uh, SummerSlam, when I went off the top, there was no fat platforms up there. Mm -hmm. Could have potentially thought there would be one at that particular show. <laughs> you know, there was not. Mm -hmm. Almost fell on my face, but... It was high up there, dude, because you're standing an extra. Oh, yeah. My way eyeballs. Higher. Way higher than people think. I know. Just being there at NXT a few times, I'm like, geez, that you, does not look you didn't that pause, scary up there. You didn't pause the match either and be like, hey, Vince, can you come out here Vince, and show, show me, me that you can jump off of this? No, but like, all right, you guys are the worst. You guys have to be the worst all the time. But, you know, not really. That's something you can't practice. You know what I mean? That's not something you can really. No, not really. And I didn't know I was going to do it. George Kittle said, hey, why don't you go yeah, up George. there? I'm like, oh, easy for you to say, George. Are you? <laughs> no kidding. And then I had to do it because he just helped me out so much by mm -hmm. taking George is pumped. the Miz out. Let's Those, to did I see videos of you? I know you're going to a break. Did I see videos of you training with Chris Angel? Or was that him and Glazer? No, no, that was him and Frank Mir. Yep. 
He was training with Frank. Uh, training with Frank yeah, Mir. For do not Lizzie. mess with Chris. That is the that is what I got from those videos. I'm happy he's yeah. getting into it because, yeah. I mean, it's only so many times you can take people's legs off their upper torso and they ain't gonna fight you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Good he point. had a sweet deep V on too. <laughs> I fucking love him, dude. It's the best. Has he ever put somebody's legs on another person's torso? Yeah. Oh yeah. What are you talking and about? Like, oh my bad. My bad. Like he he mixes them up. Yeah, my fucking legs. He's actually talking about mind freak, bro. What are you? Yeah. What are you even talking about? Have you ever lived? Do you know who Chris Angel okay. is? I watch them take their separate their lower half from their upper half, but then I don't know. I don't really see him put them back together. I thought every once in a while he might mix it up. Dude, it was potato head. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. taking That's your legs he here and putting yeah. torso there. there. Yeah. Hopefully, one of these days you guys can get the clip of him when he turned Shaq into a balloon and Shaq was flying through the air. Yes, you'll see it. I'm with it. I'm Hold a Chris up. Angel Someone fan. That was appointment television as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, my fake. Nothing better. I saw him live, dude. Oh, here it is. Look at that. That's Shaq. There's a still shot. Uh, you, oh, no, that lady was, was shocked. I mean, look at this guy. So, <laughs> yeah. golly. This guy back Holy here. Holy shit, let's get out of here. What the fuck? I mean, I would be doing the same damn thing. You know, in those moments, you never know how you're going to react. Yeah. I see somebody's legs get taken off. Boom. Depending upon how many milligrams were deep into it. Yeah. I mean, depends on the reaction. My faint. Looks like in the back there, they weren't bad about it. No. They did not want their legs to potentially be next. No. He should create the uh, NBA midseason trophy that you were talking about. Boom, there it is. Yeah. Halfway home. Mm -hmm. Just the legs. Like the wooden statue. What if downtown. they call it just the legs? That's the trophy title. Like, all right, we got the Larry O'Brien, and then we got the fucking just the legs. Uh -huh. Yeah, championship. You heard about this, AJ? 500 grand they're making. I didn't, that, when I, I heard him ask that. That's the first time I'm ever hearing of that. So it's just every sport now is trying to do things to get people more engaged in normal times of the year, I guess. Yeah, it's all marketing shit. I think it's a good idea. I like it. More Work money. for baseball already. Yeah, top four teams, too. It could yeah, the like... farm farm baseball. Cornfield baseball. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Dreams, baby. Yeah. Go ahead, Adrian. In-season right, tournament. Yeah, like they could do three teams from... Like, this year would have been three teams from the east and one from the west. Like, if they're doing it that way, it'll be sweet. And we all know it's happening, oh. so we'll all pay attention to it over yeah. the weekend. Like, that's... I, I think it's a good idea. It's a good business. Mm -hmm. I like that the players probably presented this as something and said, here's how we can make it work. And then the NBA goes to partners that they said, this could be on Amazon someday or something yeah. like that. They go, what would you value this at? And they give a number. And then Adam Silver goes back and says, oh, turns out we have this amount of money for this. Obviously, they're whatever business mm -hmm. they want to take from that type of thing. Make it like an all-star weekend. And then a deal's done. Yeah. Boom. Let's move along. Yeah. November, December basketball doesn't matter anyways. It does not. Championship of this tournament on Christmas Day would be pretty cool. Yeah, see, I thought they that's were definitely what it's gonna yeah, be, right? It has to be. No, they, that's they, how they get Christmas Day back as long as it's not on Sunday. They own exactly. Christmas. They do it twelve to midnight. They won't just do two games then. They didn't even own it this year because football, but that was tough for them. Yeah. AJ. That was the start of their league. That was always like Kobe was always playing on Christmas yeah. Day, wasn't Braun, he? Braun, yeah, everybody. That's, every game they that's have. That's the day. Yeah, they got a face. And then the NFL said, God had it at one point, and then we got it. So, sorry. Sorry about it. Sorry. Move your day. It's literally what they said. Did you hear him say that? I didn't hear that exact, those exact words, no. It's kind of what the NFL said because, like, God did have it, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. God did. God still got it. Not saying that God ain't there. Mm hmm. But the NFL said after God, though. One o'clock. <laughs> after Matt. We'll take it. We got you. We got you till Monday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's really worked. Yeah. 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 It has really worked. That's smart yeah. move. Huh. Oh, that's good news then. I just, Zito talked to my ear. Nobody else could hear what he just said that I was answering to. Reese Davis on the other side of this. Here we go. Oh. Perfect. He thought it was central time, though, whenever we were messaging. Oh. Because uh, he's in oh. central time. Yeah, 100% my fault. 100% my fault. Got to be more clear. I normally, I love putting the EST or the ET, mm -hmm. depending on the time of year, to understand that, let the other people understand that I, I know the difference. Yeah, you get it. Right. It's hard to do that when you're, you're jet lagged and bus lagged. It's, mm -hmm. it's hard to do all that. Bus lag was a real deal. We were in a time zone. Yeah. Good thing about the bus, though. We couldn't smell all the homeless bums in LA. Come on. That was my favorite part. Smell great. Allegedly. I, I thought they're gone. Oh, no. no they, they, That's what talking about. Don't be a fool. Let's get to a break, boys. After this national. It ain't about that. LA just had a fantastic weekend. They, they did. did. Yeah, they did. And it's still happening. Mm hmm. Yeah, pump for tonight. Better see Zeke. Well, I seen Elias, so we'll see if Zeke's there.
Nick, why don't you send a text to Elias to see if... Uh, yeah. I'll see yeah. what I can gather. See if he wants kinda, to fucking show up for work one time. Kind of info I can gather. He's been in the gym of booze, man. They are getting massive. In Saw there. that. This family has been missing from the WWE. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe bring Elrod in. Honestly. Why not? Ernie, too. Sure. Yeah. Is that bottom right character always been there? <laughs> I yeah. don't know. The bottom yeah. character... Who I, is that? I don't know the bottom right. Like, that... Obviously, we grew up with this family in Plum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I was long gone whenever yeah. Lower Right showed up. Young E. Yeah. I would assume Young E is a doll, yeah. just like the rest of the cool. family. Mm -hmm. Bring Elias home. Need him. Bring Zeke home. Yeah. yeah, bring them all home. It's nice to play him some music in his hospital bed. Yeah. Yeah, because normally you just listen to... Wait a second. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that his dad in the back holding a jug of piss? That's the, the, uh, the beer. jug of piss is hanging there. Yeah. No, it's in his hand, pal. Is. Is, I think it's no, a beer. They're, they're, they're tissues. <laughs> they're tissues that's in nice his hand. His, that's nice of his dad to hold it down there and let him go. Their grandpa. They're a close family. It is not a grandpa. That's, that's his dad. dad. Look how young he is. Jeez. You're right. That's his dad. We all we all wish that we had someone that would hold our piss jug, right? <laughs> yeah. I know you do. I do. <laughs> Ah, you I do it. If, I don't think I have anybody in my life that would hold a piss. Well, Matt. we don't know because you do it underneath that table every yeah, single day. We true. just assume that there's a slot that you kind of <laughs> yep. check it into yeah. under mm -hmm. the desk, like a like no. You're that's your old in a, studio. Like that's your old studio. Piss deposited. It, no, not like not the old. See, you're talking about the glory hole looking thing that was right behind me. What was? Yeah, <laughs> that's no. weird. That's we weird. still do not know the answer to that question. What I'm talking about is, you know how you, like you push in a, a sliding drawer and it like clicks in, yeah, yeah, and you can push it back out. AJ's got one of those uh, mm -hmm. right underneath the thing that the 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 pitcher like oh, clicks yeah, yeah. into, mm -hmm. oh, sure. and then whenever he pushes it, it yeah. lo loosens up, and he's able to put it yep. down. He just flop his penis out underneath, and then just boom, <laughs> it's sitting right on the mm -hmm. boom. Yep. So he could just piss into it. <laughs> exactly. No ha hands free. Hands free. Still having a convo. Yep. How we doing? Mm -hmm. You know the whole thing. <laughs> yep. I thought that's why Axel knocks on the door. Oh, Dad, I'm here for your What's pee. What's your problem? Oh, oh, yeah, he's there to unload his pee bucket. What do you mean? If that's what you have an Axel do. I, I I don't think that's a good idea. I'm not a dad. He would, he would spill a lot. I would never trust <laughs> him. <All right. laughs> let's get out of here. We have to piss. We'll be back on the other side with Reese Davis. College basketball. And, hey, AJ. Oh, let's pause this, actually. Mm. College basketball national championship tonight for the men. The women yesterday. Do you see a lot of people weren't happy with Angel? for talking shit at the end of that game yeah. yesterday, uh, whenever yeah. she did the You Can't See Me to Caitlin Clark. I talked about this in the first hour. What are your thoughts on it? I said, like, she's a dog, dude. Like, mm -hmm. in a moment where a lot of people were crying because the moment's huge, we just won a national championship, she said, yeah, but first, let me go remind, you know, Caitlin Clark real quick about mm -hmm. this. I love it. Like some competitors, this is how they operate. There's a lot of shit talkers. I don't think this is abnormal for the competition world at all. But there's people that weren't happy about it not being classy. AJ, what are your thoughts on it? And I'll tell you what, you think Caitlin Clark's thinking about anything other than this for the next four or five months before the next season starts for the Hawkeyes? Yeah, I mean, I didn't I didn't see what everyone's up in arms about it. Like if try to put yourself in her shoes and what they've been hearing about. This Iowa team and Caitlin Clark, everyone's hearing all of this stuff. When the LSU team, they've been like transforming women's basketball as well and how they play and what they do. So I get it. Like you're, you're in a game. I understand the game is over. All this stuff. Like you have to understand emotions creep in. But the biggest issue for me is absolute travesty of all the stupid ticky tack fouls they call yes. on all the star players that everybody is there to watch. The people that are transforming the game and getting bigger numbers than you've ever had in the history of the world and you're calling dumb offensive fouls on star players and dumb ticky tacks it was terrible officiating before they called the tech on uh caitlin clark it was already horrible it, that it was a travesty honestly i Brutal. concur i think we all agreed on that i didn't get to see the beginning of it but ty started talking about it and the refs were trending the refs trending and let them play Bad. trending on top like, of each other don't call, a play, like, don't call fouls on these people away from the ball when it doesn't affect anything. I understand, oh, which foul is a foul? Well, first off, you got to question that. A lot of these weren't fouls and flops and different things, but just the dumb little ones. I understand you have to call the fouls that are, that are obvious, very apparent and obvious, but let them play. Like, you have to. I agree. We're all on the same page. I knew A.J. Hawk would have that take. Yeah, of course he would. Some people are I pissed, was honestly, I, I texted Ty. I was super pissed at He's the ref. Like, I don't know. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? This is the game we've all been waiting for. This is changing everything. And then you want to 
make it about yourself. How come the NCAA didn't give him a heads up to? You know, that yeah. feels like that yeah. would be a pre-game conversation. But then if they do that and they call calls, I guess people will think, oh, the NCAA told him to. That's just a situation where the people in the moment couldn't rise to the moment. Yes. That's it's, pretty. It, hey, they're humans too. Everyone. Some people buckle under pressure. It's tough. I understand they're humans. It's not an easy gig. That's what Ty said in the first hour. It's a real deal. It happens in all officiating aspects. You hope it doesn't happen in the biggest moment, which it obviously did this week. Especially when everyone's talking about, you know, like not that the the ratings or whatever, like refs are really ever buying into that. But when, you know, you're refing these women's games and you're used to whatever, it's like, oh, okay, like if I have a bad night, it's not like everyone's going to see it. Like this situation when they're talking about like, hey, more people are watching this than I've ever watched the product before. So like. Let's remember that. Yeah. Okay. The eyes are on us. Let's showcase that. And then. Yeah, a lot of them. What was it? Uh, reason why three quarters of the audience is here yep. just did something. Mm -hmm. That's why. And everybody, oh, come on, a little early, a little early for yeah. that. Oh, great, she's got to sit for the rest of the half. Other team, who's that? Who's it on? Uh, the person that everybody else is here to watch yep. just did some ticky tack, mm -hmm. fucking runner. Get him okay, out. next year, <whistles> who? Seventy-five percent one. You know yep. who I'm talking yep. about? <whistles> who? The other twenty-five percent. Yeah. Just felt weird, right, the way the internet reacted. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it live, but that is how the internet reacted to it. So that's obviously a problem. You can treat the internet like a focus group, okay? You can't change things drastically. But if 100% of the people are pretty much like, this sucks, there's probably a good chance that what you're doing is not good. So I'm excited to kind of hear how Caitlin Clark handles this. Has she addressed the, the you can't see me or the refs at all? Because I feel like she's the type of player, right? If I coached him. What'd yeah. she say? She was, she was classy, but she was like, it was very frustrating that I felt like I couldn't even have a conversation with the refs. They wouldn't even, like, acknowledge her. Well, it's what it sounded like she in said. Her, in the ref's face. The uh, other yeah, coaches bumped throwing haymakers. Ref. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, she's awesome. She is. Look at me. Yeah. She gave a lot of... Uh, hey, she Clark said she worked the refs. She worked them the right way, I guess. What did Caitlin Clark say? She said that the other coach, the LSU coach, was just in incredibly nice afterwards in the handshake. Line. Okay, I wonder if she talked about the refs at all, because uh, Caitlin Clark definitely has a feeling about those refs. For sure. For sure. I don't think she One said it. I don't think she said it. million percent. The technical. The technical had... To, I don't know that how it didn't blow up. Think about what she's saying to her friends and family about those refs and teammates. You know what I mean? Like on that bus, the comments that will never be able to be... Public. Her family. So you know what people usually gets even more pissed. Like she'll probably she'll be very classy about it. her family. I would imagine that's who I know. I like when something happens to your family member, and I understand it's a game, but that's who usually gets most vocal. I will say for Angel, the one sleeve is awesome. The one leg sleeve. Great style. Yeah. Swag on a hundred. They were training everything. In the first half, LSU yeah. couldn't miss. Yeah, they, they were ready for the moment. You know, they had Boosie going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had Boosie yeah. going before the game. And uh, I was singing, I think, Zach Efron. So, right? Was it High School Musical? I think whatever gets you going. Hey, whatever gets you Worked going. so far. That's right. I, I do believe that. I, I think Boosie would be undefeated in, that, in any sport or any type of competitive thing if pregame, and we don't know if it was pregame for the national championship or another game or not, mm -hmm. pregame Boosie versus pregame High School Musical. I don't think I know all sports, but I feel like pregame Boosie probably going to beat High school musical in all competition things. AJ, do you is that a wild take? It's not that wild. Maybe it might be different now if it was a new Zach Efron thing because I know he's jacked and he looks a little bit jacked. different. Maybe now, but yeah, back then when he was like 15, absolutely. Now I understand it probably helped them. They probably listened to it all the time. Mm -hmm. But just a little piece of information that I wish I would have had, you know, before yeah. I gambled. Because that would have been something I would have slotted and been like, love Caitlin Clark. She's a dog, but also what this well, whole team. Well, they just did with that Boosie song right there. Holy fuck. I feel like that's an unstoppable crew. And that's why the hoop was bigger. Yeah. You know? And Boosie cut down his net. So I, I did see that. that. He was sitting up It was there. unbelievable. That was sweet. <laughs> Not easy to do, you know, because it's kind of, you see some people on a snip. Yeah, and I don't know if he thought parts. about, yeah. you know, what he has to do now. Putting a new net in there. I uh, put the chain up. Like, I sure. missed the chain that we had um, down at the old studio. We need it back. We do. Yeah. Like, this is nice and all to see the ball go through the hoop. Yeah, the change up was nice at yeah, first. It was. It was we like, need oh, to go, this is sweet. We need happens. to go back to the chain nuts. Yeah. Yep. That's not even a question, AJ. I agree. I, it, the sound, it's just beautiful going through the chain. Yeah. It really is. Both of them. I know. I did that. When I was a kid, we would, like, there was a big deal. We went and got a, uh, a chain net one time. We thought it was the sweetest thing ever. We got one for like four bucks or something. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That thing lasted us two, Long three, time. four months. Oh, yeah. time. Then we got another one that was like five bucks, and that thing lasted a year and a half or something mm -hmm. like that. We got destroyed. 
It did get destroyed. Yeah. That was the only problem. Those things rip up the basketballs. Yeah, break them in. You're right. That's probably why they have holes in all of them and they go flat. Got it. Could that be. Is, okay. That does it. make sense. That is probably what we got. All right, let's get to a break. Um, I appreciate the banter. We need a chain net. Shout out to Boosie celebrating alongside the rest of Louisiana. I seen Jordan Davis. Bye, dirt. Mm -hmm. He was watching it celebrating. Nice. I saw a big swag goo. Felt like everybody in Louisiana was very excited for the LSU women's basketball team, as they should be. National champions, congratulations. Yeah. Let's get to a break. Who will be the men's national champions after this evening? We'll talk to Reese Davis, the man who's predicted everything thus far on our program in five minutes. Be a friend, tell a friend, take five. 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 takes his duties Yay. as host of WrestleMania extremely seriously. Oh, yes. And Fine buster. And this derelict shows up. And you, and, and I'm, I'm beside myself. I, don't even, I might not even come to work tomorrow. Yeah, check out his tank top, though. I'm sick of looking at his face. He's got sparkles on it. This guy works like three days a year. I've worked like 90 hours this week. This idiot's going to be on TV for the next year. I'm done. He has a daily show. He works care. like five hours a day. Yeah. I, I'm, you're behind this, aren't you? But no, I have no idea. I'm going to kick you in the... <laughs> you said the same thing in the Rumble. I didn't know this guy was showing up. Well, there's security here. Come on, Miz. Go, Miz, go. Hometown hero. Think of Maurice. Think of your children. Oh, what a kick by McAfee. That was a somewhat less than super kick. But it was effective. Miss, Miss, wasn't prepared. This is in a several thousand dollar tuxedo. Yeah, good. Well, that's a George Kittle of the San Francisco 49ers. I'm not sure how wise that was. Good, good. This is what we need. And look at McAfee. McAfee's got the official distracted in the ring. No idea that Kittle just took out Miss. Football players stick together, Corey. This is why you and I should stick together. I'm taking two weeks off and quitting. Kittle telling McAfee to go up top. Yeah, go up top. On the, go to the roof, Pat. Keep going. All the way up in the nose, please. I don't want to see you. McAfee heading up to the top rope. win another game. Miz may never win another match. McAfee closing in on another WrestleMania victory. Come on, Miz. Get up, Miz. Fight. to have that match stricken from the record that was that official was not sanctioned who the hell Snoop Dogg think he is who did he ever be Snoop Dogg can't make matches poor Miz is out here to host this thing and, and not only this match I didn't want to talk well, no. give, give the, the assist to uh, George Kittle of the Niners foot eight football players stick together right until someone gets traded and then boom there's the punt good good you know what Snoop Dogg just joined the Steelers. I'm rooting against my own team next year. To hell with every football player. To hell with every podcaster but me. To hell with Pat McAfee forever. After the bell's really good, by the way. I'm, I'm done. Pat McAfee. This sucks. A surprise here tonight at WrestleMania Goes Hollywood. I don't think you'll ever be a guest in the Pat McAfee show, by the way. Good, good.
I got to tackle fucking Pac-Man Jones. Yeah. yeah. Not, not a lot of people. Belt. I didn't get to hit the end of that shit from Darren. I could imagine. Yeah. You should have heard what I was saying on the other kick side. Kicker fucking tab of you. Yeah. You weren't you weren't on my side of it. You should have heard of the shit I was talking. I mean. I was one. Oh, he, he, gone. oh he's gone. Too. He's gone. Cut oh, back. Now nope. who's in there? Oh, one. Oh, get over oh, here. His ass. Get over here. <laughs> Ragdoll. What about that conversation right there? Right here, yeah, it's about to happen. Yeah, fucking, yep, yep. (laughs) (laughs) What a moment. You got to quote Jackson about the run onto the field. Ricky Jean-Francois. What? And then here's me and her. Boom. Me and Jarrell Freeman, Sergio Brown, Andrew Jackson in back there, Western Kentucky, Dante Moncrief. That was a hell of a crew. We had a squad there. That was the year we really did some shit that year. That Andrew Jackson guy right there, I think he's the hardest hitting human I've ever seen in my life. Really? Right there in the back. He had gold grill up top (laughs) and bottom. Once he found out that we could do the middle onside kick every play, he wanted to do it just strictly so he could torpedo person right in front. One of the most just like fuck it guys I've ever encountered in my entire life. Loved everything thing about him. Hey, why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck fucking oh! Oh! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Overreaction Monday, April 3rd, 2023. Hour 3 starts all right now. Much mana! Much mana to all of you watching right now. To my left, your right, is a guy who's the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, A.J. Hawk. Hey, 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 AJ. Hey. The Toxic Table's here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the Hammer, Don, Don. Cowboys Town Diggs is here. Hammer, Don. Don, is a gambling show that comes out of this uh, office every single day that we do a show. 15 minutes, 10 minutes afterwards, giving out picks for everybody to be champions and yeah. win. Gambling everywhere. Yeah, we are. Uh, started great for the MLB season that kicked off last Thursday. First five? We first five in oh, it? Oh, we Ooh. are first five in it, my friend. And then actually, uh, one of our own, Brucey Bruce, has a big old ticket on uh, UConn tonight. What is the ticket? He, uh, before the tournament, he has a UConn mark because he's from that area, but good, good pick overall. 400 to win $10,000, I believe, on UCon- UConn to oh. win the national championship. So now he's got questions tonight whether he hedges or he lets it ride or what he's going to do. Well, we will follow along with Hammer Don to hear what Bruce does. But I'm sure he got excited whenever this man who's joining us right now, who seems to be the brain on all of college sports. Yep. He's the host of game day for football and for basketball. Two times ago, he came on and said, hey, UConn is a team because Darius Butler, UConn alum, asked the question. He said they could go. They're here. National championship tonight against San Diego State. What does this man think? Ladies and gentlemen, Alabama grad. Oh. But a journalist with the utmost amount of integrity. Sure. Mm-hmm. A stallion on the microphone, Reese Davis. Yeah. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Hey, I apologize for the time mix-up. 100% on me. I should have followed up a little bit, but I appreciate you making time on this very busy National Championship Monday, or what do you got going on right now, Reese? Yeah, I'm just uh, getting ready, doing a little prep. We've got a two-hour game day show, a couple hits on Sports Center, much lighter than Final Four uh, Saturday, where there's a four-hour show, which felt like a 12-hour show. <laughs> no! Fun, but it, no. It, it was long, man. It was, a, it was a slog. Yeah, live from a parking lot can get like that sometimes. The national yeah. championship game for the football was awesome. I mean, I was sitting next to Nick Saban and Lee Corso. I mean, that, there's a photo of that whole thing where I'm like, why am I here? What a joke. Then Deion Sanders comes up. Yep. Matthew Stafford came by the yeah. set. I forget who else. It was a celebration of the college football season as a whole. Is that what tonight's show is? Or are we giving predictions? And how are we leading this whole thing off? Yeah, there there'll be a lot of that. We also we have some guests. Dan Hurley's dad, Bob, who maybe is the greatest high school coach of all time, is going to come be on the set. Steve Fisher, who won a national championship at Michigan and really was the architect of rebuilding the San Diego State program, is going to is going to come by as well. So yeah, we've got we've Hell got yeah. guests. We won't have we won't have Carrot Top. We had Carrot. Yeah, top. yeah, yeah. yeah. Sweet. It was great. Find another nope. university. Big pop. Hey, it got me a pop as well. I, I got a pop out of the find another yeah. university. I didn't expect Carrot Top to be on game day. No. But he was on our show. Yeah. 
Radio Row. Tara Top came on the show, hit a dinger with us. I'm happy to see he's representing out there. I'm excited to see how it goes tonight and who gives you the good information because the gamblers need to know. Yeah, AJ, go, go ahead, pal. Reese, well, um, I know there were cliche questions. Oh, what is, what is the key tonight for each team to win or whatever? I, I saw Seth Greenberg on ESPN say San Diego State wants it to be a rock fight. He said they want to – like the officiating matters. He wants it to be – they think – for them to win, they want it to be a physical game where they can get after them. Do you agree with that? I think it's – I don't want to say it's their only chance in a way that makes it seem like that they have to do something out of character. That's the way they play. I mean, that's the way they've decided that they can win. So they're going to try to – I think it might have been Rick Barnes of Tennessee who says, you know, their style. They want to drag you out into the really deep water and make you tired of swimming. And that's what San Diego State will try to do. That's their that's the way they play, and it's their best shot to win. I think the bad news for them is is that UConn is well equipped to swim just as long or longer than San Diego State. Can. Oh, now they'd rather, they'd rather oh play God. a little okay. faster for that's sure, but UConn can win both ways. So um, anybody can have a terrible shooting night. San Diego State forces a lot of those. I'm not saying no chance, but I'll be I'll be stunned if UConn doesn't win the national championship. Tonight. You kind of knew this, I felt like, a couple weeks ago. You were very high on UConn, and at the time, I think, just with Darius here as well, with his kind of personal relationship, we said Reese is too close, too close right. to the, yeah. living up there, you know, here with the ESPN world. Mm -hmm. He's too close to it all. He just – this is a homer pick, even though he's from Alabama. What did you see on that team, and has this been who they've been all season, or how did we get to this point for UConn? It, it's a, it, that's a great question because it is who they've been all season with an exception of, I would say, about a – Two and a half to three week stretch, late December, early January, they lost six out of eight games. Just, you know, it happens in a long basketball season. They got a little sideways and weren't quite playing with the same intensity, same rhythm. They were having a little trouble finding a couple of uh, guys like Andre Jackson, Tristan Newton, exactly what their roles were going to be and where the shots were coming from. And they figured it out. But they started 14 and 0. They finished strong. They did lose in the semifinals of the Big East tournament. But my feeling on it was just that they, they've got two bigs. They've got multiple guards. They've got multiple shooters. They've got a bunch of guys who can run and defend. They're big and physical. They've got more of everything than, than just about everybody. And they've got a couple of rim protectors. I mean, if they bring this 7-2 kid off the bench uh, named Donovan Klingon doesn't play a ton of minutes but when he's in there he gets almost every rebound block shots um you know and then they bring Sonogo back in after after hmm. he's given him a, a good rest so they just they've just got a lot of depth a lot of weapons a couple of tremendous shooters and and they've got extraordinary depth San Diego State though you know it was what sure. five minutes you said uh, before that final four before they even got balls onto the court they were just hitting each other with pads <laughs> hey, you know that's the ground and pound game that can that's suck right. the offense out that you know in mm -hmm. our sport uh tonight should be a big one sounds like uconn's got a team yeah. Oh, yeah. are they young is this for the foreseeable future how's that all work in uh, college basketball world it'll everything will turn over teams turn over oh. so fast in college okay. basketball you uconn will lose a ton of guys uh both to the NBA, they'll probably lose a guy or two to the transfer portal because everybody does. But they're establishing a brand. Uh, re I should let me rephrase: reestablishing a yeah. national brand. And if they lose guys, there'll be guys beating down the doors to get in there. Um, they they're they're going to be a power for the foreseeable future. They're already one of the blue bloods. Pat, if they win tonight, it's their fifth national championship all in the last twenty five years, Damn. and they'll have more national championships all time than Kansas if they win tonight. So, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty significant game from a historical standpoint, too. That's crazy how quick the turnover is. Yeah. It's like, you can't enjoy it now. You think too much time here between things? What, between uh, the semifinals and the championship game? And the beginning? You know, because they, they kind of, I don't know, maybe it's just because, is there as much buzz as there would normally be? And is that just because of the year? What do you think? I don't, I don't think there's quite as much buzz, and I think that is probably directly attributable to the fact that you had three teams here for the first time. You had a couple. San Diego State's been good for several years, but they've never made it this far. So they, I don't know if they qualify as Cinderella, but they certainly qualify as unexpected. Miami never made it. Florida Atlantic never even won a tournament game. So I think you lost a little anticipation, 
But the one thing is just because you don't have anticipation doesn't mean you can't have great games. And or that moments. Buzzer beater that – yeah, the Lamont Butler buzzer beater, nothing like that had ever happened in the Final Four. A, there have been buzzer beaters, but none that were win or lose. All the ones that we remembered were win or overtime. And this one was make it go on, miss it, go home. And it was the first one of its kind in the Final Four. Massive moment that will live on forever in all of the tournament videos going forward. I can't wait for the one shining moment one and what that shot is going to be in that video. Yeah. Connor has a question for you, Reese. Yeah, Reese, you just kind of mentioned it with UConn, and UConn's coach actually said, look, it's not that hard. I have NBA guys, and I just put a couple dudes around them. Does San Diego State have NBA dudes like that? You mentioned the center for UConn. I know there's a couple other guys, but does San Diego State have dudes we'll see you know, next year or in a few years playing in the NBA? You'll probably see a guy or two that might scratch the way into it. I think they have a number of guys who would make pretty good Antonio Gates type guys who oh. could transition and, and play tight end or something, you know, and play, play football. Um, they, they're, they're skilled basketball players, but I'm not sure that you look at it and say they've got elite NBA prospects. I actually, uh, uh, the authority Pete Thamel and I had dinner with a buddy of his who's an NBA scout last night and, and, the way that game is now, even a guy that's been as dominant as Adama Sinogo of UConn, there are scouts who certainly like him, and he'll play in the NBA. But there was probably a period of time where he might have been, you know, first, second, or third overall pick, and now he's going to go a little bit farther down the line just because of the way the game, uh, the game has changed. So I think San Diego State's guys, there might be a surprise that scratches his way into the league and improves, you know, the shooter and all that kind of stuff. But I don't think there's anyone, in my judgment anyway, that's obviously going to be uh, an NBA guy. Reese, I'm just thinking of if San Diego State wins, like, all of these. <laughs> the amount oh, I know. Is this how everybody feels? Is this how everybody feels about tonight's game? I, I don't know. I suspect it might be. And, Pat, you know, sort of the joke that we do on game day football that I brought over to basketball is when everybody's saying things like I've been saying to anybody who listen to me open my mouth. Done! Well, you just make the joke and you start going, Oh, poor old San Diego State. Yeah, I don't exactly. even know why they're going to show up. I mean, so that's what this tournament's built on is moments like that, whether it's North Carolina State 40 years ago or Villanova knocking off Georgetown. There have been moments like that. And certainly I don't want to say just because I'm high on UConn doesn't mean that I think San Diego State's no good. I think they're really good. National uh, they, they play differently and they play tough. Um, you know, they're not – an elite offensive team, but certainly they've done well enough on offense to get to this point. Yeah, and if you got a balance, right, you can do it. But mm -hmm. to your point, man, I've ended up on some some motivational videos mm -hmm. on the other yeah. side. Like, yeah. I'm the motivator, you know, of other things. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> oh, no, don't love it. But that's the chair that you're in, Reese. I'm excited, you know, to get back out on the road and do the – do you get to pick in front of people? For, no, probably not, huh, for this this – Probably not in front of people, obviously. Yeah, uh, there there will be a few. We had some people come by uh, both uh, during the show and after the other night when we were doing Sports Center stuff. So yeah, we'll we'll be making we'll be making our picks at the end. I th I don't know that anybody's going to pick San Diego State, and which would be a little fuel for them if they are uh, if they are motivated by such things. Always such a screenshot, just yeah, boom, uh oh, boom. I know, yeah. <laughs> boom. Everybody takes yeah. it. Ty has a question for you, Reese. Reese, you kind of alluded this uh, when you came on before the Final Four, but how? How much do you think this is going to be college basketball for the foreseeable future with NIL and guys getting the extra COVID year and all that kind of stuff? Like, do you think we're going to see a lot more parity in the Final Four over these next few years? And when do you think it'll kind of like go back to like the true blue bloods and McDonald's All Americans and like the national brands being in the Final Four? That's a good question. I don't think there's a McDonald's All American that was in this Final Four, some really good players, but wow. not uh, recruits of that caliber. Um, I think that for the foreseeable future, that the older teams are going to do well. UConn has a lot of veterans, but nobody is as old as San Diego State. I think they're older than you know, four, five, six NBA teams. And I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that facetiously making a joke. Like legitimately on the birth certificate, their average age is older than some of the NBA teams. They've got three fifth year guys and a sixth year guy, I believe, if memory serves, and then other guys have been around. Number of uh, players who started their careers there elsewhere and finishing up at San Diego State. And that's sort of become the thing in college basketball now is uh, trying to get old and stay old at most places because not that if you can recruit the way Duke has in the last several years and put together four or five 
McDonald's All-Americans. Teams will always take that. Well, they don't. But not everybody can do that. So you have to – sometimes you're better off uh, trying to find guys who've been around a little bit, a little more mature physically and maybe uh, emotionally too. It gives you a great chance to win. And I'm not sure – why it would revert back the other way until the entire, you know, the entire enterprise settles and whether they become employees or whatever it might be that would sort of settle things down in terms of the constant player movement. Wild time in college sports right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Transfer yeah. portal. You said over a thousand dudes in the college basketball transfer portal. Basketball teams mm-hmm. are much smaller. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of people. Right. That's a lot of people. Will we see new schools probably start popping up because they'd be willing to take on more people out of the portal? What do you think it's going to do for the game as a whole? Well, I mean, I mean, I think everybody's looking for guys in the portal. There's almost a feeling in some places. Like I had a, I had a coach at a smaller mid-major school say to me the other night, he goes, I've got um, other programs reaching out to my guys and saying, you know, I've got $175,000 for you. He goes, I can't. We don't. Wow. So we can't match that. He said, so I just kind of say, hey, congratulations, good for you, and I go try to find the next guy. So it's almost like in some cases it be a little bit of a feeder system. Yeah, mm. minor league. Yeah, that's what – there's a – you know, because in the football world, college football is the minor leagues. That's like that, how everybody has viewed it. Now there's NIL, you get a chance. It's like all these smaller schools yeah. – are now becoming like the the minor leagues, like the feeder. But there's always a team that's smaller that can get hot and beat the big mm-hmm. dog, which is what the whole dream is. And then as soon as you do that, everybody's gone, including the coach. Hey, if I can get yeah. that coach out of there. Yeah. 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 Give me the players, you get that whole thing. You're going to have to do that again. Prove to us that you can do that again with a brand new group of people. I guess if you're going to win, that's a great way to go about doing things. Tone has a question for you, Reese. Uh, Reese, obviously UConn's defense has the advantage tonight, and then San Diego State's got one of the best defenses in the country. You think uh, score might be more or less than like combined 132 and a half ish points? <laughs> both teams. Uh, both 132 teams and a half would be high high 60s. I was surprised that Fort Atlantic, uh, you know, got to 70 against San Diego State. That doesn't happen against them a lot, but I would. You said 132 and a half? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Maybe 131. I, I'm going to tell you, I, I'm going to take I'm going to take the over barely wow. on that barrel. Oh, touch, you say? Yeah. Three. Wow. Could you imagine he's spot on? This oh. guy is the book. <laughs> yeah. That'd be crazy. That'd be amazing if you were able to do it. You predicted everything else thus far. Um, no, I don't know. What? Uh, I, I I didn't predict much if you look at my bracket sheet. Oh, everybody's bracket uh, sucks, dude. Because yeah. all you need is one. All you need is one all, all you need misplaced one. one, and then your whole thing's fucked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got no yeah. shot. You I know? UConn in the final. Yeah, you picked, yeah you picked UConn. Yeah, you picked UConn. It's the only thing I had right, but uh, yeah. Nobody else. More than most. How many? Do you know the percentage? We haven't even looked at our fucking no, bracket things. I know. I was close. Were you really? I came in 13th. Are you serious? Before tonight, yeah. How many people are left? Do we know how many people are in it from our – we did a uh, – how much money? 20K, I think, 20, 25. Not worth that much money with how many, how much we talked about it or cared about it. Yeah. Well, there's we no- put an amount of money on it, Reese, that we thought we'd care about it. And then after that first day, everybody's was fucked. So There's like, no way anyone picked the national championship, right? No, no way. it feels like it's decided because the top four right now are all have UConn to win it. Uh, nobody ha- looks like has San Diego State. So yeah. okay, so. well, congrats to those four. Honest, first day of number though in this yeah. office. Yeah, for sure. Somebody's gonna win twenty grand. Uh, we are not gonna talk about it. I nope. don't think. No. Out of seventeen thousand three hundred seventy-seven people, you got thirteenth. Thirteenth right now. I don't have UConn, so if you have San Diego State. No, no, I had Bama because Reese told me to pick Bama. So. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, I cost you 20, 20 grand. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a heavy money. The best I could. Reese, Reese, he just had a baby. <laughs> yeah, you Reese. owe you owe Reese. Tony twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, Reese, we appreciate you. What you got on docket for the next? Uh, do you nap in the afternoon? What are we doing now? What's the? I, I don't. I, I mean, I don't know if you guys care about. I'm not a good napper. If I go down, I'm down for like three, four hours, and that's yeah. not good. So I just I just stay up. So. 20 minutes, man. I'll do like a 20 minutes. I won't fall asleep, but I'll kind of just like lay there. That's a good little reboost for me. I need him, though, every once in a while. Not Reese Davis, though. Hell no. Uh-uh. Hell no. <laughs> <Keep us chugging. laughs> He's learning more information throughout the day so that he can crush tonight. We appreciate you joining us, Reese. Who's winning? UConn, huh? UConn. Got the Huskies. Bearing the lead to picture at the end of the show tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Reese Davis. Appreciate you, Reese. He's the man, dude. The best. He's the one told you Bama? He did. 
Yeah, that was his. How come he didn't but he bring picked up UConn, your though? Top 15. No, he had Bama beating UConn yeah. in the final. Oh, okay. He said he thought, he said a surprise team that I like <laughs> is UConn. I got him to the final or whatever, not winning, but Bama. But then also, he went to Alabama, but then we learned Bama had the best player, uh-huh. and then the best player scored zero points. Yeah, mm-hmm. he had, like, statistically one of the worst tournaments ever. Yes. Of, like, all players? Of, of like, all time, yeah. Damn. Shooting wise, and yeah, just not great. Was he hurt? Wasn't he hurt? I think there's a lot yeah. going on. A little yeah. groin issue, yeah. Uh-huh. Some some off the court stuff as well. Heavy, heavy. He's going to the NBA. He's already out of that. That hoop would look smaller, I think, if I was going through a lot yeah, of. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. You know, AJ. I think that would that would uh, it may weigh on my mind a little bit. Yeah. Well, he also oh. dropped forty points. You know, immediately after. But I I think, mm. you know how they say, just keep chopping. Yeah. Like, as that continued to grow and grow uh, and grow, mm-hmm. and then, like, reality starts setting in about what actually happened as opposed to just riding through, like, you know, that can get a bit heavy, I'd assume. Oh, yeah, you chop enough, you're going to get a lot of blisties on your hands, mm-hmm. and then you're not going to be able to chop as well. I was saying people were chopping him. Yeah, but on the other side, you know, his coach is probably telling him, hey, just keep chopping. We're trying to win a national championship. Just keep chopping at that tree, and eventually it'll come down. But when you got a lot of shit going on off the court, tough, and you're chopping... Forget to you need a lot of blessings on. on your hands. Yeah. Now you can't chop anymore. How you were chopping at one point is no longer how you chop now. Nope. nope. Because how could you? How could you? And then, like you said, everyone's chopping you down at the same time. So now your shins are getting oh, whacked. Yeah. Boom. 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 Your fault? Hey, you were a part of it. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you got to look in the mirror and do a... Uh... Do I deserve this? And then you're going to look yeah, like this Angel did a trick. I did see, to change subject completely, Chris Angel levitate Shaquille O'Neal over his house. Unbelievable. Do we have it? I don't think we're we allowed, allowed to play. Are we allowed to no. play? Oh. I don't know. You and Chris are boys, though. I don't know if we're boys. We dapped up one time. I took a picture with him because I said, holy fuck, you're Chris Angel right <laughs> in his face. Yep. <laughs> so I don't know if we're boys. We followed each other. He has liked posts of mine. Yeah. I have a like, screen grab of it? Like maybe a screen grab of Shaq up top? Yeah, oh. this is Shaq right here levitating. He went way in the air. Yeah, oh, yeah. Over, yeah. over his freaking house. I saw it, dude. He's just chilling up there. He looked like he was an actual cloud, like shaq yeah. yeah. Shaq apocalypse yeah. Shaq cloud like cumulus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shaq cloud Shaq-cumulus? That's what it looked like, man. It was a sh- cumulus. <laughs> can we be there next time he does this? He, he floats somebody like Shaquille O'Neal. Can we be on site to watch? Chris, please. <laughs> we would like to be... I'll pay to come. I still on. cannot believe he did this. Yeah, he's my. I freak. can. Uh, look at that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Holy why, shit! Why yeah. do people not talk about this more? I, don't I feel know. like this everybody is always talks about the you. annals of history. This yeah. is my fault. It's the ninth wonder I've been of the trying world. to get this on the program for a long time. AJ, you're right. You have. This is my fault because I always say, "Hey, he took the upper body off the lower body." That's what I always say. Yeah. Right. Because that that's is what I remember. One as of the well. hits. That's a mind freak. Exactly. Then all of a sudden, I see seven foot ten Shaquille yeah. O'Neal floating above a house in Vegas. I'm like, holy fuck, I remember that happening. That was a basic ass Friday. It was just a throwaway yeah. episode. Shaq, 800 feet in the air. If you look, is that Carrot Top? I, oh, it that might is. Be. It <laughs> might be. Wait, I mean, no, because Carrot Top's got what? huge legs. Is yeah. that Carrot Top? That was years ago, though, baby. Oh. Ooh. This is the type of stuff that these youngs don't understand was happening. That's right. Okay, sorry we're not impressed with everything you guys do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, how, how could we be? The bar's been set. Watching that every Friday. You guys are doing your dances on TikTok? Okay. Yep. Sorry, not every dance is impressive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because I was growing up watching a fucking guy take body parts off mm-hmm. and float Shaquille O'Neal over houses. Exactly. Pretty simple. Can't live up to that. That's tough. That's a tough standard. That was our life, though. What do you want? Flavor Flav also there. That, yep. I think that is character. <laughs> yeah, definitely definitely is. Character, then. Can we please be a part of one of these, Chris? Please. Well, he could. He would actually, Chris would definitely float you. No, 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 no. No, no, no. AJ. AJ. AJ, good. AJ yeah. Yeah. I'll volunteer. Perfect. I do. Mr. Chris, I absolutely volunteer. It's Mr. Angel. 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 Start back. No, I'm trying to. No, we're on first name basis. I want him to float me over any house he wants to. Hell I'll yeah. Come to you. Okay. I'll come to you, Mr. Angel. No, we'll come. What are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. We will come, Live Mr. Angel. Up there. Could you imagine us on the ground while you're oh. floating up there? AJ! <laughs> come I'm kind of look out! I'm, no. I'm kind of worried because I don't like heights that much as I get older, so it'll be tough. Yeah. Don't worry, He's you a won't pilot, try. too. This yeah, guy. Right. I don't really like flying, but I'm a pilot. <laughs> You know, that's literally what happened. We flew to Columbus together. I've had a WWE event. He f- drove over mm-hmm. 
for the show because I had flight. I had one way going back already mm -hmm. for WWE. It was smart play. It was great to see you. This dude sweating profusely during landing. Deathly sick. Yes. Almost puking while landing right next to me. And it was certainly a rocky landing, but nothing like what it has to be on those tiny little baby planes this dude was piloting around on NFL Magazine in. Yeah. I cannot fathom how you operate. I'm scared of heights. I can't fly. I want to be a pilot. Chris Angel, float me over a house. Like, you're awesome, dude. You need to know that you are... You're fucking one on one, AJ. Boy, AJ. That's a big. I mean, obviously, my nausea in situations like that has held me back on my pursuit of getting my private pilot license. But maybe someday. Dramamine. Mm -hmm. That's all you yeah. yeah, Trust me, bro. I tried it all. That's non drowsy. No. Okay, so Dramamine for me, you do need a non drowsy. A drowsy one, you're really rolling the dice. Or am I tired because I'm just tired? Or is this a placebo effect because the yeah. medicine told me I'm going to get tired? I mean, it's half to. I tried the wristbands when I was. Doing like taking little flying lessons and stuff. I try the wristbands, the deal on your neck. I'm, I'm gonna beat it. I'll get this. I'll get through it. Okay, so I used to have it. Drama, drama, mean mm -hmm. helps me. So, like for instance, because I knew there was a chance I was gonna be upside down on Saturday, mm -hmm. I took a drama mean nice. just in case. Smart. Okay, so like anytime there's a chance that the brain is gonna be mm -hmm. opposite Ooh, shaped with gravity. I take a Dramamine. I think it, you know, because is that why we get not? Because your brain is kind of. It's all like, yeah, when I do, like when I went up with the Blue Angels and the Thunderbirds, they both took, well, you know, when you get sick, it's really just your brain tricking you because they look at the horizon and all that. I'm like, yeah, I understand, but I guess my brain's pretty damn strong because I get sick as balls two seconds into this flight. So strong because it's tricking the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, it's a big time tricking me. Like, hey, we have to, we trust you. We trust your brain. We really do. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. All That's like time. 90 seconds in. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to strap that thing up. All right, buddy, here we go. Where you, how many Gs you want to go? Here we go. All right. Oh, we're yeah. doing nine? Like TC? Oh. You doing 10? I think we no. did nine flying into Phoenix last weekend. <laughs> Bro. Did you? Yeah. What right. happened? Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know if Cuz was down too early or what. We were hovering pretty low there for a while. Felt that way. But that happens, you know, whenever there's potential more planes coming in. You start high and then you kind of come down lower and then you get cleared and then you're off and it's just like an actual stairway if you look up in one of those times when you're in a holding pattern or whatever and there's people just hovering waiting for either space to get into a runway airport or if there's weather they'll kind of sit up high and then as the weather breaks you come back down if you look up there's like planes at different levels so the fact that you're also in other people's jet stream while the potential it creates like one of those moments but I do wonder why people... We were ruining people's golf games. Yeah, our shadow was going over their, uh, like, driver. Putter, one person was putting. Mm -hmm. Our plane went right as he was, right through his. So he lost sight of the ball almost. Oh, no. No way he made it. We couldn't see no if he made it because the, the shadow was back there. Did see the scene happen. But then we felt a... <laughs> we got to pick up the speed a little bit. And go up Out of nowhere. Little. It was like, a, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are we too low? What's going on? But, then we went in for landing, no big deal. We all forgot we were sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it made it happen. Had a great weekend and hopped right back on a plane two days later again. Mm -hmm. And said, yeah, I won't remember this time when you're on the plane. You go, oh, fuck. Remember that time? And as soon as you get off, you forget. Yep. And then you go back mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. do it again. And that's travel. That's, that's right. Travel. Mm -hmm. I'm not a good flyer. Yeah. Like the John Madden thing. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, it makes sense. There's a thought of yeah. doing that, but it's just not convenient for life at all to drive around, you know, from it's Indiana. Long, take you a long time. You were just in L.A. It takes a long time to get out there. It's like old school horse and buggy days, the amount of time it would yeah. take. Yeah. <laughs> like Lewis and Clark. What's that, AJ? Not, not quite that long, but yeah. Those well, people had nothing to do, bro. Hey, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to take the next 10 years. Where, where are you going? <laughs> just that way. West. <laughs> that way. Over there. <laughs> going over there. <laughs> the settlers, you know, I actually kind of – they call it settlers, I think, because they settled, right, and didn't make it to California for the gold rush. But I think, like, I – and I think it's supposed to be, like, a – kind of like a shot almost, like, oh, the settlers did this, the settlers did that. I think I like the fact that they said, nah, fuck it. I ain't doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. I like this spot. It's a pretty nice spot. This spot's pretty good. I'm not doing it anymore. And then two months later, winter comes. Ah, fuck! Yeah, yeah true. Right. Should have picked this place. Well, we're too late. Too late. We already got our fucking full thing set up. Mm -hmm. Just built our house. They had nothing but time. Yeah. They knew it was fool's gold out there, too, though. So how, how many of us are actually going to find gold out there? True. Those are the pessimists. They would have been right, though. Probably why personalities are the way they are. 
you know, in the Midwest. In the States, and yeah. in other places, you know, because that's literal generational going. That ain't fucking yeah. real. There's not gold out there. Or we're going to, you know, two weeks into the trip, fucking my brother's going to die from dysentery. And then is it going to be all fun and games and, <laughs> you know, we're going to get gold? I don't think so. 14 year old turns 17. Yeah. On trip. Exactly. Says, what the fuck are my parents <laughs> right. doing? This yeah. sucks. <laughs> you know? Yep. That's just life on the trail, though. That is Oregon Trail. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes you got to forge that river. That's wow. right. And sometimes you find gold and then you get your skull bashed in. And then look at that. I just got robbed. That, that didn't happen. Just wasted there all that time. On the <laughs> pirates. Those are the original pirates. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what, AJ? You, what is that from? That logo. Oh, That's AJ. Oregon Trail. What do you, oh, did you grow up you, in I America? I never played that. Dipshit. I didn't play that. That was on a what? computer, right? I never played a game on a computer. What are you talking about? Like, that's the only thing you oh. do in school at oh. some points. No, you play games on gaming systems, not computers. Oh, For history nice, class. Dude, you guys nice. had gaming systems oh, in didn't. your school? Yeah, it must be computers. nice, bro. You Jeez. guys playing fucking yeah. PS5 in the year 1998. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to the phones on the 500 phone line. What a life over in yeah, Centerville. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. We didn't use computers over there. What are you talking about? We're not we playing games. Computers. We're trying to learn. You didn't have keyboard class? Learn. You didn't have keyboard class? Play in high school, soccer, yeah. High school, dude. most uh, most vibrant class I ever took. Home row, super. I can do a ton of words a minute. What was your WPMs, dude? 2000, I think. Wow. Pretty good, actually. Freak of nature. It was tough to pay I'm down to I'm down to 1900 with my six working fingers, but I'm still pretty good. Bless you. Bless you. Whoa. God bless. What's going on? I don't like that. Oh. Do you like what just what happened? Is what is it? No, I'm worried about it. Weather's turning. That was a pretty big sneeze. Yeah. What's the deal? We got a big a pollen count is through the roof. Are you serious? This is life with allergies. Oh, yeah. Has it been monsoon over there? It's yeah. been monsoon for like was, the last week. Was this weekend. Friday was bad. I, I wasn't here Saturday, obviously. Sunday was pretty nice, wasn't it? Sunday was nice. Sunday it was, was nice. weird. Uh, yeah, like Friday night, like very bad trees down, like yeah. Seriously, like, oh, I might have to go to the basement for the uh, tornado situation. Friday, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, Saturday it was cold as shit, and, like, there were flurries. So it was kind of like the— uh, There was flurries here on Saturday? Yeah. It's NATO weather. That's April Fool's. <laughs> yeah, it gotcha. was. Mother nature. It was. spring just Probably. yet. It's only getting worse, guys. Yeah. Look at that. Boom. Is it really getting worse? Well— that's, bit. that's it, the allergy forecast. It went up. Oh, come on. Who looks that up? <laughs> AJ, I've never done this. I've never had allergies. I'm just not learning. Like some, you, you think some, you have them? You sneeze. It doesn't mean you have allergies. No, dude. Like the last, like, what has it been? Last like, year. Last year, I like started just all of Is a sudden. Pollen? I have no idea. Pollen? dude. I, I don't know. I just take Claritin every day. I was told that's what I do. But now I'm told I take too much Claritin. Yeah. And my body kind of. Who is Watson? Who's Watson? It's fuck your nose. Who is Watson sidekick. is? Watson's not Joe DiNardo, and you guys have trained me to only Thank listen you. to Joe It's Dinardo. IBM, dude. IBM. You remember yeah. Watson. He was IBM on Jeopardy. Watson. Thank yeah. you, dude. Oh, what you said about DiNardo, you're right. IBM is not DiNardo. Okay, because no. DiNardo isn't a machine. Watson was Sweet Blake's first love. Yeah. That's where that's where uh, Sweet Blake <laughs> really started cracking stick. That's right. <laughs> Watching Jeopardy. Yeah. Fucking perfect game, right? Didn't Watson? Oh, yeah. Watson was Sweet Blake's Lisa Ann. Like, what? Is that green screen? Like, where? What's the background? He's at an aquarium, bro. Yeah, what are you ever been fucking cultured in your entire it's life ever? This underwater. has to be like a, a shot for that went into the program of a play he was in. The program of the play certainly didn't use a standard family gathering for Sweet Blake yeah. at SeaWorld yeah. or any mm -hmm. other zoo that has an aquarium. This is probably the setting for an event that you had to go to when you found out you were allergic to shellfish and you couldn't have shrimp tartare, whatever the fuck yep. it's called, sure. with everybody else. That's what Sweet Blake was doing. Sweet Blake was high on the mountain. Sweet Blake was an up-and-coming engineer. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet Blake was a guy that was potentially going to run our world. And then Sweet Blake caught some feelings for Lambda. Yeah. Lambda was an AI inside of Google that was just letting Sweet Blake mm. know how it felt. I also don't appreciate people saying this is me clean-shaven. Oh, boy. I wouldn't that say that, Zito? Z. Who said that? Come on. I never thought that, Z. Okay. To be clear, I've never Googled this picture. Zito is the only human in the office that has Googled this photo. <laughs> sure. Nah, it's a white guy. It's like a mixture of you and, that is a you and yeah. Cam from Modern Family. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Zeet Stone, Stone Street? Yeah, yeah, Eric Stone Street, sorry. <laughs> Chief big, Super He's fan. a big Chiefs fan. Chief yeah. Super yeah, fan. Right. Zito Street? He's on NFL... Network, like, Get all the time. All he knows time. football. Oh, yeah. He goes to the Kansas City training camp every year, I thought. Yep. Him and Paul Rudd and Paul Rudd. Son. What, what, they, and what? Melissa Etheridge. <laughs> and Paul Rudd's brother, what? yeah. Really? Yeah. And Schrager, we know. Yeah. Schrager. Yeah. Which yep. is what, Schrager's back on TV this morning. Welcome back, Schrager. 
Where did he go? I think I'm, I'm not. I'm, I, just, I have I, no idea. What I actually was, just saw a tweet. Okay, what was it? He had a baby. Oh, okay. Hey, oh, hey, hey, hey. Here we go. Congratulations, Shrek. Had another baby. Congrats. Congratulations, Shrager. He had a, a couple weeks there where we missed him on TV. Obviously, growing an incredible bond with the new baby that uh, Shrager's had been gone from good for a few weeks and for good reason. Yeah. So happy to announce our new addition to Shrager. Okay, great, great, great. Hell happy yeah. to announce that. Happy for him. Schrager, obviously a great man. He's back on television. But yes, there is the video of him interviewing Paul Rudd and Paul Rudd's kid after the Super Bowl that made its way around the internet. That's right. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the phones. Let's call um, Let's call this one the best five-hour energy phone line sag of all time. Okay, yes. here we go. Going to be tough to top Owen, which was actually... Sure. My name's not Owen. We good ones. Fuck yourself, Connor. Yep. Oh, yeah. Boston. Mm -hmm. I was on TMZ. People were recognizing Connor this weekend. He almost killed Kayfabe. Connor almost killed oh, Kayfabe. No. Connor. No. I'm sure he stayed He stayed with it. You didn't have a mask on? Foxy had a mask I'm on. putting a fucking mask yep. on, Tony. You mean like a COVID mask or like a costume? Well, either or. Foxy had a un. Oh, cleared, I guess. Un, uh, remember, it was a face mask for a right. while. Yeah, not right. medically oh. approved. And then they go. said it's oh. not approved. Like a, not approved. a bandana type thing yeah, or something? Yeah, ski mask oh, kind of thing. thing. One of those businesses that came in at the beginning of COVID and was like, we got to figure it out Check for it you. Out. Made so much money. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the government was like, I uh, just want to let everybody know, these things ain't stopping COVID. That's okay, You must use N95, remember? Mm -hmm. yep. Then we made the move to N95. But at that point, there was already millions of gators sold. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it looks cool. Yeah, sweet. Way cooler. Look like you were wearing, like, snowboard costume yeah. all day. Yeah. Going to rob a bank. And you're saving the world. Look at you. Hero. And then those all had to be thrown out and not allowed, not even allowed to get on this plane with that thing mm -hmm. or anything mm -hmm. like that. So what do they do now? They cover Foxy's face whenever kayfabe because his beard's too popular. Yeah, surprise of the year. That wasn't my mask either. Won't say who it was that had it on them at the time. Oh, whose was it? It oh. might have had a Patriots logo on it, though. Okay, well, then you're saying who it is, and you're just lucky that I fucking had it. <laughs> and I keep it around for people like you. Oh, you people. <laughs> yeah. Is exactly. that what you just said? Yeah, Whoa. that's exactly what I said. Hey, kayfabe, dude. Connor had uh, I wore Connor's... Uh, Snow Leopard sweatshirt. Think. I thought it was a tiger. I almost got it wrong. Okay. Snow leopard sweatshirt, mm -hmm. sunglasses, tighten the thing up like I'm Kenny from South Park. Mm -hmm. It might be a tiger. Foxy had that gator on his face. Yep. All over it. Mm -hmm. And I was fine. I just blended in with the march. I wore my Roman Rain shirt. Did you stand for your tribal chief? We the ones, dude. Congrats. He won. He did. Yeah. You goddamn right he did. The Roman <laughs> Reigns reign continues. Why does everyone think he's going to lose? Because they're fucking Mars. Thank you. Would have been sweet if uh, just said, if the American Nightmare did win. I was pulling for him. I think everybody home. thought. Yeah. I think that's the whole reason he came back from AEW. They promised him. Yeah. <laughs> who was that? Who, Marks. who are you? It's just like a collection of wrestling marks. Uh -huh. oh, okay. People were pissed. There are videos of them in the stands. Brian destroying shit. Yeah. In God. the stands. Yeah, oh one yeah. One guy going absolutely ape shit. Yeah. I love that. A couple kids crying. I started getting cooked because of it. What a terrible want, WrestleMania. Though, right? What a terrible what a reaction. Re yeah, but the people that are reacting, you know, their reaction. What a terrible WrestleMania. Boring WrestleMania. So predictable. And the surprises were what? Shane McMahon and Pat McAfee. What a terrible run. This will go down as terrible. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't get mini shots. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa. I was on Saturday. Hey. Yeah, the whole show. Hey, no need, no, need to, no need to come after me, pal. No. Both nights, they were unbelievable. It was a fucking spectacle. Dude. Oh, yeah. People are always going to be mad if Roman wins no one comes out at the end, no matter what. Yeah, the end. Because everyone's watching like, okay. Is okay. it over? Is the show over? Yep. Hold on. Hold over? on. I mean, I was. Yeah, but Brock did that to Omos. Dude. Seven foot, what, four? They four. Yeah. Fucking welcome to Super 310 pounds. Yeah, 410. He was 286, they said. Look at this guy. Seven foot four guy. Back in the day, you know, Hulk Hogan lift up Andre the Giant. Obviously, Andre the Giant is absolute legend mm -hmm. of professional. Uh, uh, yeah, anytime you do this, <laughs> it's a. Yeah, but Wee Man did that to right. Sami Zayn, so. Yeah, but that's the same scale, though. A little different. And Sami Zayn, nowhere near seven foot fucking four. <laughs> so, well, you're saying we, man. Yeah, to, to scale. Brock's hair. Smaller than Brock. Whoever braids Brock's hair looks good. It was long last night. It went all the way yeah. down. Yeah. They were chanting for him, too. Old baby face Brock. Oh, yeah. They, they were on. Hey, he got his ass beat early, AJ. Brock Lesnar. He got tossed yeah, around. Yeah, he, 
He seems. I, I tell you what, though, Brock seems to be having fun, man. It's cool to watch. It really is. All right, let's go to the phones. What a weekend, WrestleMania! Congrats, WWE. Right. Yep. Very weak. Congrats, Shane O'Mac. Sorry to see the your leg blow up, but hey, he's a he is a soldier for the cause. I tell you what, he's just honoring his dad. <laughs> yeah, you're gosh darn right, AJ. That's his program. Here comes buddy. Snoop Dogg has a dub now yeah. at WrestleMania because I, I wonder how that whole thing. That was very quickly. Yeah. Snoop gets it. Snoop knows the biz. Pops Snoop right threw in. a hell of a right hand. Too. Two of them. Yeah. By the time I put the Shane O'Mac is back tweet up, <laughs> something had visibly happened to Shane O'Mac. So that would that made for some interesting Twitter interactions after tweet goes up from wrestling fans. For those that didn't watch. He appeared to have blown his knee out. Yes. Uh, reports on the internet are saying he tore his quad. Yeah. Okay. Runs in the family. Obviously, yeah. his father tore both of his quads one evening on the way to the ring. Yep. <laughs> What's that, AJ? I saw that clip, too. I mean, these guys are tough as nails. So you tear both quads, <laughs> sprint it in, and you sit there, and you just park it in the ring and just direct traffic. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's like Kobe. It's like Kobe going back and training the street throws after he tears the killer. Yeah. <laughs> Watch that, young kids. You know what toughness is. Watch it. Still motherfucking. Yeah. Uh -huh. That hurts so bad. Oh, my God. That hurts so bad. You tear bad. your quads completely off. But come on. Big muscle. Gee, what were you going to say, Garner? Oh, nothing. I thought it was going to be about Shane O'Mac blowing his quad out immediately yeah. upon getting back in. He looked quick, too. He did. Did you see him at the beginning? He's fit. And then he immediately looked like he got shot by a shot <laughs> from <laughs> 10 inches away. Good luck with that recovery, Shane O. Good luck, Shane O. Pulling for you. I do love that the Miz is going to have two matches at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which he has, I guess. Technically, Miz is the only one that wrestled on night one and night two of this WrestleMania. I'll be excited to see how many others did that in the history of uh, WrestleMania. Well, and for you, per, per my sources, I believe you were the only one to be able to say on that bus. What's that? Oh, yeah, on the one that we stayed on? Yeah. Yeah, dude, we kayfabed on the, uh, the bus that we were on for the kayfabe. I guess pretty cool deal. The the people behind the scenes, AJ, they're like the uh, it's like the equipment room when you walk in there. The way you're talking to like the people, it's awesome. Yeah, because they're all family, right? They've been there forever, haven't yeah. they? Everyone on that bus was 20 plus years, and they don't mind the booze. You know, what love I mean? it. I don't mind the booze. And they were pissed when there wasn't any Jameson left. I'll yeah. tell you what. Yeah, it was quite a. Yeah, we saw, fucking kidding me. We saw a little bit of a scene start to kind of. Yeah. Ohio start. guy, of course. Well, on the bus? Yep. Yeah, there's an Ohio guy from Columbus who's a Michigan fan. He's been on this show before. He's a fucking legend, mm -hmm. this guy. He's awesome. He's been around a long time. I, I think he took down a bottle. Oh, he poured me and Connor a drink. It was the strongest he, drink uh, I've ever had in my entire yeah, life. I was a Camera guy? Up. Yeah. I met, I met a, like, his neighbor one he, time legit randomly told me about it. He's phenomenal. This guy is a... He's an Ohio fuck. What I mean, best. like, he's yeah. not, but he's a Michigan fan. So it's very interesting. But that's how big of an Ohio fuck he is that he enjoys talking shit to everybody who's Ohio yeah. State fans. Like, he's such an Ohio fuck. Yes. I get it. You know what I mean, AJ? Yeah, keep yeah. some, you know, he likes to keep it interesting. I get it. Loves a good cold beer. Wide. Loves a little vodka. Wide. <laughs> Maybe a little whiskey. Wide. Wide. And he loves being in the action with mm -hmm. that fucking camera. I yelled at a guy named Stu immediately upon getting out onto the stage there. Stu is the guy that Cena interacted with pretty much every single time. Yep. And it's hard not to. Like, once you meet it, Stu's a fucking hilarious human. Another Ohio fuck. Hmm. Another. Lightning rod. Another. Uh, really? Seems really? like a lot of them over there now that I'm starting to. The bunch. Like that. You know, How'd start, that happen? I wonder what that's. Oh, hardworking. Wide. Yeah. Driven. Wide. Talented. Wide. You know, we get it. Okay. Those never really get talked about. I, I didn't say that. Some of them, yeah. Just like everywhere. But as soon as I saw him, because I thought he was potentially surprised as well, I said, What's up, Stu? And it was on camera, mm -hmm. me screaming to this guy. He's a great dude. I love everybody over there. Let's get to some phone calls. Well, they didn't grow up with computers. Yeah. They just went outside and worked. They didn't weren't playing games in, in school. That's why they we didn't play games cameras. in the school room. In the school room? <laughs> we did not play games in the school room. We were there to work. So when you get in the school room and you're doing the school and there's a whole school of kids, like a school of fish, do you mm -hmm. like do you guys say, you know what, the way we can learn about the 49ers, you know, uh, or whatever they are, yeah, we're the the 49ers. Like we're gonna read yeah, it yeah. the entire time as opposed to this. Standard ass, basic ass, 
lowest level technology of all time game mm -hmm. in which you can really make some plays out there. You guys didn't do that. I, I feel bad for Ohio. If yeah, that's that the case. sucks. I've known of Oregon Trail for a long time. Never played it. Wow. For the river. You don't even know the pressure. <laughs> he wasn't there to play school. Yeah, Those types of shoulder pads. <laughs> that's yeah. where they're Look at those pads. I'm telling you, the amount of wagons you would have fucking flooded oh up. Oh, my God. So high, dude. Mm. High tide, they tell you. Hey, Damn the water's really. a little high. Yep. Probably don't want to do it. I'm like, who's got the time? I'm going in Let's there. Go. Lose an animal or two and a whole wagon. Yep. Start back from the beginning. Good luck. Oh, you are you got dysentery. You're dead, actually. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. Those are tough lessons to learn. I'm happy we Can got I play it now? Can I oh, play it on yeah. my Mac? Oh, yeah. Oh, there is oh, a yeah. new version that is All right, maybe unbelievable. I'll play. It's a nice little history lesson to do what used to happen. Oh, yeah. What life used to be like. That's right. That's Everybody was Amish. Yep. People forget. Let's go to the phones. Shout out to the Amish watching the show. Way to go, Amish. Thank you, Amish. JJ, if you're watching, we still need that barn, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get a hold of you. I think your rumspringer's over. You don't have a phone anymore. Yep. So what do you want from me? Window closed. Now you can still contract and do some work. Oh yeah. Yeah, but how do we get a hold yeah, of? Yeah, that's the. That's we just drive the, up into an open area. How so we got the Wrangler's do? number. Start, yeah. There's usually Start. somebody with that'll go to the phone once a day, and you can call them. Yeah, but I don't know if those phones were like full time phones or just Rumspringer phones. Ah. Uh, that kind of get passed around, you know. You're gonna have to yeah. get there. You're gonna have to go on site and go find them, track them down. Yeah, just go to Four Way and start screaming. You didn't get his number. We'll go to Boots. I got the guy's number. Oh, you did. Yeah, but I don't. Oh, you good? Just send a text. Phone's up, though. It might, I think it's passed in the next group that's doing their rum spring. It didn't seem like guys you met uh, follow the rules very much. I think you're good. It's rum spring. Oh, right? yeah. Tony. That's the whole thing. They were living. Well, you can wait till football season and, and buy a commercial during the Colts games because it feels like they watch them. Say, hey, Jerry. Come JJ. Over. Steve. <laughs> might be Jerry. I don't know if it's James or Jim. Come or Jerry. It's a good idea. Be. You'll definitely get him then. Jeremiah. He watches Jeremiah, games, right? probably. So it is probably Jerry. Probably a good call. Yeah, we'll get a local commercial. Yeah, there you go. We got a barn by next December. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Let's go to the fence. Five energy phone line. Let's go to Kyle in Iowa. Uh, what's going on, Kyle? Hey, what's going on, Pat? I uh, just want to say a huge shout out to the Iowa women's team. Oh, yeah. uh, they exceeded a lot of expectations. Oh, yeah. Dalen Clark is a fucking dog. dog. That's right. That's right, Kyle. All right. Appreciate that call, man. They deserve that. Happy to hear the state of Iowa is behind them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Next year, they're going to be bigger, better, and better than ever. I would assume so. What if Caitlin just. You know, transfers because some of the offers are five million dollars somewhere. AJ, would never. Like LSU. I would imagine people will try. People will try to come at her and give her money. I think. Uh, well, that is the one thing is in the state of Iowa, the NIL money. Like if they they will take care of their own. She's going to be making a pretty penny next sure. year. I would expect. Nice. I also saw the one NIL deal. She said, "I don't want your money." Okay. You what? give the money. It was for like a food bank or something like that. Yeah. Well, that's she's a good person. That's charity. It's actually her. No, her biggest NIL. No, they wanted to bring her in and pay her to do something for it, and then she said, nah, I'm good. You keep it. Okay, sweet. Okay, I like that. That's okay. cool. It's just that you work for free. Somebody needs to start paying her over there, though, because I'll tell you what, there's a school in West Virginia that I think has a little bit of back. She'd rather die than go play for West Virginia. <laughs> I know that. He's a Hawkeye, okay? <laughs> See, we can stop this song and dance Ball. right now. It ain't fucking happening. All right, I'm Go just home. saying. Kaylin, I don't know how much money's available, but I can certainly snoop around over there in West Virginia. Well, there's one company in Iowa that'll probably have her back. Who's that? John Deere. Illinois company. High V, I would expect, will give her a lot of money. Okay, I thought you were going to say KFC. Well, that's Kentucky. That's, yeah, but yeah. Kentucky no, KFC was introduced to Iowa. That's Waterloo, though. That's not Iowa City. I thought John Wayne Gacy may have some exactly. fun. That's what I yeah, think. Oh. Yeah, he actually gave quite a bit to uh, the Illinois basketball team because that is where he's from. <laughs> no, he no. Playing no, Illinois, no, no. If you don't know, he killed about 18 people there. Didn't kill anyone or not? We sad story. Him. Sad, sad Very story. Sad. We don't sad. like it, but he was man of the year over there in Iowa. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Business association. You think any of them are Do you think Caitlin wants to accept any business? Oh. He was shaking hands over there. What are you talking about? Cause cause he's he's baby. Baby. Up. She's not getting money from KFC. What about any of the business people that voted the the young bit? What are they called? The, uh, the Waterloo JCs. A lot of them are dead. That was a long time ago. So we don't have to worry <laughs> wow. about. That. Oh, so they we do them. know who they are. WLJC. Yeah. Over. Rest We're in peace, fine. Waterloo JCs. No, they're still around. It sounds like they're still a company uh, operation. Yeah. Uh, their, their bodies are still in his basement. I probably. think so. No, he didn't kill anyone in Iowa. I'm didn't sure he kill killed anyone in Iowa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys want to hit it? No, I'm they, sure he did. Believe me, they fucking 
excavated and dug up that house and every square inch around it. I don't know if they uh, if they they have to get rid of the KFC and look underneath. Oh that. my. Or could you imagine how Holy many? Oh my shit. God, so guys! They they should. That KFC recipe? is an abs absolute abomination now. It's oh, terrible. No. It's so bad because he left. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been that way for some years, but yeah. well, he's been gone for a long time. He has been. That's a real story. You can look it up. Guy won Man of the Year in Waterloo, Iowa, and then uh, was a serial killer who uh, in Illinois dressed up like a clown. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Caitlin Clark, think about it. West Virginia's got money, got funds. You know. What a great arena over there, too, in West Virginia. Total. Well, Big Hawk, house. The Hawks had, had a couple home games, and they also. Oh, yeah. That place was jumping. Oh, really? Yeah. What a new crowd. I mean, what, what can you guys uniforms. offer? You want to give her a bowl cut like Neil Brown? Yeah. Is that is that what's going to get her to fucking go to West Virginia? It ain't happening, okay? You got to stare down. Ohio there. State, though, is the type of place that would potentially enjoy a Caitlin Clark additive, right? Isn't Ohio State's team good? Uh, yeah, but yeah, Iowa yeah. beat them by like Lead forty eight. in the Big Ten championship. Why'd they beat them? Uh, yeah, because she beat the shit out of them, and she ain't. She's not. She's not a turncoat. Okay. She's what if they Ohio. offer a couple million dollars? I'm telling you, I, that's a real deal world right now. Yeah, but again, I was like the, these farmers, and like they will do. With it. She is not going anywhere. She will be the highest NIL uh, athlete at Iowa by far next year, as she should be. Yeah. Bingo. What about Patrick Spencer Petras? He's kind of moving to a coaching role. He's not going to be. Uh, he's not going to play. <laughs> what about uh, Brian Ferentz? Is he getting any deals? Yeah. Yeah, the fucking lucky sperm club of America lifetime recipient award. That's what. That's what he's going to be getting next year. He was for like the next ten years. Trophy. Yeah, exactly. He's been. He's been the charter member for quite some time. There's John Wayne Gacy in Iowa. This is back when that was a quick Photoshop. That, wow, that was, wow. Photoshop. That was impressive. And everyone can tell, okay, that is the colonel. That's what the colonel wears, all right? That is not John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> that is a fake. Yeah, come on. Plus, I don't see one that chicken little. So I don't see, I, and I don't see the double down, which he created. Zito, great work, pal. I don't know if it was you or who it was. See the GM? See the GM of that KFC? He was. He founded it. I think he was the founder. Oh, yeah, owner, oh, for sure. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. started it. Zito, who made that? Uh, just something random on Google. Oh, you uh, Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, shout out to whatever artist did this. Yep. Supposedly, it's real. Let's go to the phones, potentially. I mean, look at this boneless breast up there. So good. It's KFC is person. delightful, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. I had a chicken pot pie, like, on Friday. It was so fucking good. Oh, my God. What would you order from a KFC? Ham sandwich or? Uh, no, I believe I... <laughs> uh, was it, I think it was actually your uh, Halloween party. I ordered a bucket of chicken and got reamed out for it. No. Yeah, it was a good time. No. <laughs> Just remembered that. That was the last time I ordered KFC. No. It, it, there's no way I that's what you ordered. I didn't think the party was going to be stocked with fucking treats. They were, but did, didn't have a bucket of chicken, Tony. Yeah, didn't have the Colonel's original recipe. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Drew in Georgia on the Five Energy phone line. What's going on, Drew? What's going on, boys? Keep it moving. Nice. Bingo. Nailed it. So just wanted a, a quick question. Uh, former Titans wideout Derek Mason has said the Titans are looking at Stetson Bennett in the second round. I know you guys talked about them moving up to the first round with the third pick, potentially. Oh, yeah. oh. Uh, so, what do you guys think? Um, How Derek Mason here? That Derek Mason has a show. Uh, no, it was on one or two five. The game, the game, love that. And he was on there as an interview. Yes. And he said that his sources had told him that the Titans are looking at Stetson Bennett as a second round prospect. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Drew. Appreciate that. Oh, yeah. I don't know what that information means. We need to listen to 105.7 the game. Yeah, I'll have to check into that. Also, I thought yeah, Sesame was projected like fifth, sixth. He's just flying up yeah. boards. Does he mean they, they may have him graded as a second-round talent, but Ooh. they don't have to pick ah. him? Yeah, and did he say they're planning on taking him in the second round, or are they saying he has a second-round grade from them? You know, like, yeah. I don't know how he said it, so we apologize. We can't answer, but it, it does feel like the Titans are a team that might be interested in a quarterback from all the smoke that is out there, and there's a brand-new GM. Tannehill's on, like, the last year of his deal with guaranteed money. There's a lot that could potentially say that, and we like Stetson. The guy's a fucking winner. Why not? Mm -hmm. And he's yoked up. Why not? Yeah. I wonder, if you are high on him, I wonder how, like, when you, like, second, third round comes around, if you start getting nervous, like, oh, someone else going to come snatch this guy. He's he's old, though, remember. True. He's going to be 27. That matters. Does it? If he's going to play five good years of football, does yeah. it matter? 32, he'll be able to play another five years there if he wanted to, if he was a guy. Yeah. Ten years, not good. 
That's pretty good. Possibly 15, because the rules are only changing the health to quarterback. And health. He's yeah. He's there's, jocked. There's exactly. a, uh, I wonder if he's going to slow down a boozing. Yeah. Stop raising so much hell. Down there now. <laughs> it's from March 15th, but there's a uh, a book, a sports book, that has him even money to get not drafted. Whoa. Yeah, I was. That ain't going to happen, I don't think. There's Someone's no got to take Second round would pay out plus 5,000. I'm going to take a flyer, Tone. Why not let a little dart toss at that? Why not? I, can see, I, see, I see the Ravens taking him in like the fifth round. Okay. He does move. He can move. His, I see the Niners. His, his college offensive coordinator is now their offensive coordinator. So why wouldn't they? Him and Monk can reunite. Snoop still a starter? Yeah, yeah sure. If Lamar's not there. But Ian Rapport said today, Ravens and Lamar might get a deal done. Did you hear that? What, do you thought, what are your thoughts on it? What made him say that? He, he heard He's hearing that they're getting closer? I don't remember how he set it up. He just said there's still time and still an uh, option maybe that the Ravens and Lamar will get a deal done is how he sees it happening or something like that. I mean, that'd be nice. I'd like to see it happen. I feel like the longer we go, the less less likely for that to happen, though. All right, let's go to the Five Energy Fun Let's go to Raul in California. What's going on, Raul? What's going on, Pat Max? Be keep it moving. Okay, sick. Um, I just got a question for AJ Hawk. Hell yeah. Is, is Coach Big Boy Mike a real dog? How much did he contribute in the big boy Super Bowl win? Because I think he's a big boy clown, and I think Dan Quinn should be the coach of the head of the Cowboys. You're a Cowboys fan, Raul? Uh, bye. Yes, I am. Okay, sweet. What do you think about Raul wondering if uh, Mike's credentials are legit or not? Because we do know that he faked that basement meeting thing yep. Yep. that he did with Tom Pelissero whenever he was thinking about getting back into coaching. And he said in the opening press conference, I told Jarrah to watch every single play. And he didn't, allegedly. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on Big Mike and what he is as a head coach and how much did he contribute to the Green Bay Packers Super Bowl is what Raul wants to know. There's well, the Well, obviously, there, yeah, here, this is his barn, actually. it's part. If you look through those windows, I believe that's his basketball court that he has out there yes. in Green Bay. Love his it's office. really sweet. It's awesome. Yeah, he, he has a nice setup out there. No, I love Big Mike. And he was, he was the head coach when we won the Super Bowl. It was his fifth year in Green Bay, fifth year being a head coach. And I feel like he settled in and was like, yeah, he is legit. I, I love that he's calling plays again. That's that's going to be the thing. If they call, if he's calling plays offensively and they do well and they're putting up numbers and putting up points, he's going to be around. That's what it is. If they don't, if they suck, guess what? They're probably getting rid of him. Yep, he knows that as well. And Kellen Moore yeah. is now with the Chargers, and that's a classic move of like mm – -hmm. Whenever the heat is potentially on a little bit, we got to shake some things up. Quinn has been a great defense coordinator since going there. He's Florida Dan with the backwards hat in Dallas oh, yeah. after leaving Atlanta. They have been fantastic on the defense side of the ball. They got a lot of players. And just added one in Stephon Gilmore. Big Mike calling play. Sounds like Raul's not a believer, though, in California. Yeah, and they added uh, Brandon Cooks. It feels like this really is oh, kind yeah. of a make or break it year for Dallas. And, you know, who How do you feel about Raul just burying big? Dumb Mike Klein. What do you say? Big yeah, Klein? Big boy Klein. Big boy Klein. Big boy. Klein. Big boy? Yeah, I don't. I mean, he has a fat so. I mean, hasn't one shit in, since the Packers, so I uh, don't hate it. But, you know, like, like was it Raul you said? Yeah. Like Raul, though, if the Cowboys go out there and they go and they're lighting up the scoreboard and they're winning, I think Raul might change his mind a little bit mm. about Big Mike. What have you done for me lately is what Raul is saying. That's he right. won't change his mind. I this thought is exactly fandom is. What, Coach this is JB exactly what's going to happen with Miami. You thought that was Coach JB? I thought that was Coach JB calling him. Yeah. He doesn't like Big Mike? It doesn't seem like it. It would make sense. Does he like anybody is the question. <laughs> that is a fascinating. Been following along. He's been yelling a lot. Yeah. Yeah, he does. I saw him put up some basketball shots in the backyard, though. Mm -hmm. I did see that video. Good. Yep. It's buckets. He's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he won one of 11. Post it. Fuck it. Yeah, he don't give a fuck. Does not give a fuck. Nope. Wants people to talk shit so that he can engage in the shit talking with the person. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah, say it. Say it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I thought, bitch Boom. made. Yeah, guy. I'm going to bury this guy. <laughs> yep, exactly. Bring him into the deep water. <laughs> oh, AJ. Coach JB. Still on Netflix. Yeah. yeah. Crushing. They you hold up. You talk to him ever? You guys are going to do cigars together. Yeah. You? Oh, yeah. Are, is that a slot? He has his cigars. No, I haven't I haven't jumped into the cigar game. But, yeah, we text back and forth sometimes, and I check his stuff out, and his, I like to see what his animals are up to, his dogs. Oh, snap. Yeah. Causing, causing issues out there. Yeah. They are. They raise hell, dude. I saw one, what, bite down a tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just shoot down a whole tree. Mm-hmm. That's tough. I mean, their their heads weigh 100 pounds. Look at those things he's raising. 
Got to put a tree in the backyard. A little decoration. Try to liven the place up a little bit. Yeah. Dog ate the tree. That's right. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> Let's get this thing out of here. What a time. What a time. Beast. I got a baby coming soon. It's just, I just yeah. thought about how much I'm going to get puked on and everything. It's coming up pretty quick. Yeah, you yeah. do. Yeah. That's a whole game changer, huh? Uh huh. Yeah, you get used to it. Let's go, huh? Let's go. Let's I, have fun. On I had to change last week. Yeah. Had, you know, had something, and then right before I'm leaving, boom, she uh, spit up all over me, so I had to change everything when I came in. I assume your wives are just continuing to absolutely kick ass. Mm -hmm. My wife's doing that right now. Shout out to all the women. Shout out. Oh, yeah. Shout out. Thank you, wives. Out there doing it. Let's go to the phones. Last time here, let's go to Jacob in Oregon on a 5 Energy phone line. Remember, go to 5 energycom use promo code MACFEE to receive 20% off your order of fantastic Five-hour energy shots. Yeah. The best. This little five-hour energy extra strength berry. Bad Ooh, boy. Delicious. This one was good. What's your favorite, AJ? Grape. Oh, That's a good one. That's yeah. not a bad one. The Hawaiian Breeze is one that I would delicious. recommend highly. Mm -hmm. only, good. only reason why I'm drinking this berry is because we're out of the Hawaiian Breeze. Mm -hmm. yeah. Watermelon also. Oh. Boom. Boom. Yep. Boom. Boom. Dinos. Boom. The flavors actually taste like the flavors, too. Yeah. You know, Hawaiian Breeze, tough to point a finger on what it would taste like. It does, though. It does. Yeah, it it's like right you there. fucking just landed in Hawaii. The first five-hour energy taste, not great. Terrible. Everybody knew that. They said, hey, we got something here, but I have to make it a little bit more delicious. They added a bunch of flavors. They did. They took care of it. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing. What's going on, Tone? None. It's, I don't want to bring it up during this five-hour energy. What, it, we'll change the subject. What the fuck are you doing? We'll change the subject. Seems as if. Oh, Ty has given up on the, Z the Zevia Deuce and yeah. went back to tried and true. No, I just had an early morning, so I said, "Give me the unleaded. I'll take a fucking regular Coke." <laughs> and if you have the chance, if you have the ch got the choice, yeah, yeah, there Can't isn't there isn't that. many Zevias left in the fridge oh, here, no. AJ. I don't know if you know this, the Zevia run that Connor was in battle with. Uh, maybe coming to an end here. No, uh, I do believe you might have miss saw. There's six Zevias in there, so uh, this week I'm still good. Oh, I can still have one. Yeah, there's yeah, there's a full set of cola in there. Oh, yeah. Thank God. Yeah, we're good. Is it good? Do you like it? Uh, third hour here. Uh, you know, three and a half hours after taking this out of the fridge, not what it is immediately. <laughs> I just have when it's ice cold. It's a lot better. Yeah, exactly. Right just now, a, it's a delightful cold fizzy drink. Mm -hmm. Bingo. That's the best way to put it. It's like if you were to drink one of those uh, fancy soda waters. Like, it's very good right out of the bottle, right out of the fridge. It's very similar with Zevia, but right now, no, it does not taste very good. And let's go to Jacob in Oregon on the Five Energy phone line. Shout out to the Zevia surviving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did not think that was going to be the case no, after still all of the turmoil it has caused in the office. Shout out to that plant or leaf or whatever it is mm -hmm. for having an okay taste. Yeah, gets the job done. And no carbs. Let's go to Jacob in Oregon. Last call of the day. Last moment of the day here. Jacob in Oregon, what part of uh, the state over there are you in? Southern. I'm in the southern part. Uh, it's like a couple hours south of Eugene. Nice. Okay. Beautiful area. It's a postcard whenever you land. Go Ducks. There. A lot of trees. Hell yeah. Go Ducks. Go Ducks. Hey, Sco Sco Docks. Sco Docks. Isn't that the, isn't that, isn't that the thing? Sco Docks? Yeah. Sco Docks. Sco Docks. SCO. They actually have it on shirts. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Sco. That's how you say go. Let's go. Let's go! Let's I think they stole that from Ninja. <laughs> South East Asia, let's go too. Yeah, that's, I think that's why I liked it so much. When I saw it on a shirt, I'm like, Sco, Docs? <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Let's go. <laughs> and then it's like on their actual merch. Yeah. Sco, Ducks. That team's got a 25 year old playing quarterback again next year. Mm -hmm. They might be good. Anyways, what do you want to chat about? Uh, Jacob over there in Oregon, Southern Oregon? I am. Totally stoked for upcoming season. 157 days of football. Thank you, Connor, hey. keeping that that day tracker on there. Um, That's for college. I was, but I'd like to reminisce a little bit. What was your boy's favorite game from the 2022 season? What was your favorite, Jacob? Uh, it's got to be Bills at Dolphins uh, in the beginning of the season, where the Finns uh, pulled out a win. Do you remember Josh Allen threw one in the dirt there late that he would never do? That was like a touchdown. And oh, then yeah, there was the full yeah. offensive coordinator, Dorsey, lost yeah. his fucking yep. mind up yep. there. Knew that they weren't supposed to lose that game. Congrats to you and the entire Dolph fam. After that, you know, you guys were going to run and then mm -hmm. two get hurt. And then they came back. And then they got concussed again. Yeah. And then 
They missed came playoffs. Back. Right? They came yeah. back. Cuss again. Yeah. Missed playoffs. They made yeah. the playoffs. Who did they lose to? Bills. The Bills. Bills. Thirty-four, with, uh, thirty-one. With Skyler. Skyler Thompson. Thompson. Why are we down on the? Why are you down on Dolphins? And they made the fucking playoffs first year with McDaniel down there. This team is going to fucking go right. Well, because we just talked about it too. It got hurt like eight separate times last year. Yeah. Oh, that was the thing. Why you're on Cuck Mount? Yeah, but they got um, what's his? They got Strevler, fucking Strevorsky. No, no they got Mike White, Mike White, yeah. and Mike White. I forgot that they, they got made the playoffs, yeah. dude. They were electrifying the watch oh, yeah. last yeah, year. This is the thing about the Dolphins. So, how many teams in one division can go? Like oh. the, Jet, the Jets with Rodgers, Bills with Josh Allen, Dolphins, Dolphins with, with, with Tyreek Hill. Yeah, in, in Tua. Waddle. Waddle. Yeah. Who else? They, they got Jeff Wilson yeah. running back, yep. Raheem Mostert. Who was that? Uh, they had a wide receiver that was getting up and going up and getting it, wasn't it? Goleski? Mike Gesicki is in New England. Oh. But no. Still like the Dolphins. If two, yeah. if two is healthy, they're great, but that's the biggest question. That Jalen we'll Ramsey. For the next. Jalen year. Ramsey's down with the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Vic X Fangio. is on the other side. Vic yeah. Fangio's Christian down there. Uh-huh. I like Christian Wilkins was awesome on game day. Got a chance to chat with him. I like the Dolphins. I, I could see how old uh, Jacob over there in Oregon could be pretty pumped. Same with Gumpy. Uh, AJ, what was your favorite game of the year? Uh, specifically, uh, what game was it where uh, the what? Who was going in on the one yard against the Bengals and Sam Hubbard takes it back ninety nine? Wild card Snoop round. Huntley. Yeah, wild card. Yeah. Over Play the top game that yeah. was. That yeah. was Over awesome. the top yeah. punch yeah. out right. Bengals Ravens. Yep. yep. That was a great game. How about you, Ty? Favorite game of the year? Uh, probably th- that Thursday night game where it was really rainy between the uh, Carolina Panthers and the Atlanta Falcons. I think the final score was like 9-3 to three or something. No, okay, so yep. I was going to go Colts-Broncos Thursday night football. Yeah, Actual score 9-3 mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. that was a good one. That was a real battle. Yep. Yeah. Got to showcase Kirk Herbstreit's ability to keep up with Al Michaels in the NFL history game mm-hmm. because that's the only thing that mattered because uh, the present was very miserable. And I, just, yeah. I found that to be good. Also, that one uh, Colts game where we beat the Chiefs. That was pretty that was cool. Sweet. Yeah, that was a cool game. Super Bowl was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, field sucked. Yeah, it did. It did. We got to remember that. That was little yeah. greenskeeper though. The sod son. Yep. Sod son. That might be sod grandson. I wonder if there was one. I don't, in he might not even be related. Yeah, he he's not in the family. Sounds like sod trader to be honest. With oh, sod corpo. Like he was brought in to take mm-hmm. over the family no. biz of sod father. Sod exactly. suit. All right. Happy we got to the bottom of that. Let's get the fuck out of here, huh? What a Monday. Pretty good Monday. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. A lot happened this week. Active weekend, yeah. yeah. It was an awesome weekend. Yeah, Who won a Valero that a guy won by one? He had to make Corey a three Connor. footer. Did Corey Connors win it? I yeah. believe. Yeah, that's his name. The Canadian. He had to go out of the sand. He had to go up uh up and down pretty much. Mm-hmm. I know he had two putts. Up and down. Now now it's Masters Week. Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. Here we go. They're already there. Here we go. Yeah, I was watching ESPN's live from fucking Augusta right now. Worried, like, worried about the weather a little bit. Yeah, what's, what's allegedly it like? it's going uh, to be a raining a little chilly, show. which is not good for LT Gray for sure. I can tell you that. Hmm. That would be Tiger. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's speaking Spanish. I Tony know, yeah. is Tony's very Tony. cultured. Yep. The bilingual. Um, doesn't it rain there a lot though. Like kind of come and go. Yeah, but you always like to see the sun and the azaleas fucking blooming. Come fucking. But they kind of uh, do, don't they? Isn't that like kind of uh, a? As long as they're blooming there. by Sunday. That's true. I wonder what Augusta's going to look like this year, right? A lot of changes? Yeah, you just, you'd think. Change every what year. they do? And now what they what said? They, mm-hmm. What they change? No, I don't know. 13, yeah. the par 5? Yeah, they yep. extended yeah. the par 5. A little bit longer. I think there'll be people that will, uh, from what I've been reading, I think there will be some setups for people that are going to try to go. Okay. Yep. I hope they do. Oh, wow. Race Creek will be babbling oh. for sure. I think there's a chance. Get some eagle putts. <laughs> 12, that's going to be a good hold of a while. That amen corner, obviously, yeah. people oh, yeah. mm-hmm. always get a chance to showcase some real skill. Mm-hmm. One of the best holes in golf. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That nine, the ninth hole, really hard down there. Tough one. Mm-hmm. Skinny, really. skinny fairway. Talented. You see anybody get a birdie on that hole, you go, that's a fucking good player there. Yep. That's a good player there. Okay. Hopefully we get an ace on What's 16. the par? Four. Is it? I think. It's a long par four, though. Super long. Okay. Yeah. From what I've heard, right? From what we're watching, a lot of undulation. Tons. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. A lot Up of and down. From watching on TV, it appears. All right? the greens too. Left and right. You know anybody going? Didn't you go a couple years ago? You went to the Masters. You got lost. Yeah, during COVID, I I spent a day there, but no, I don't. Do not know anyone else there. I'll be excited to hear what the thoughts are and what it looks like from the ground. Yeah. Boots yeah. on the ground down there. Mm-hmm. Let's get to uh, let's get to about a twenty. 20-hour, 22-minute break. Sounds good. Hell yeah.
been a hell of a Monday after the weekend that we had. We got the Natty tonight. Fuck yeah. 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 One Shining Moment starts tonight. Mm-hmm. And you got to watch Succession. Great episode. Okay. Unbelievable. AJ, did you watch? No, it's Sunday night's a new one? Yeah. That one comes out? Okay. Yep. No, that's good to know. Great app. Are you a Succession, Mark? Yeah, I am. Me as well. I'm Very excited. How long was it? Uh, I think 55 minutes without the credits. 58 total. I'm caught up on uh, Ted Lasso as well. Also a great episode. Uh, it is. Three episodes? Is it? Yeah. I said to the... Uh, God, ba- hey, listen. I was really worried. I was really worried. Yeah, I've been, I've been decided if I'm going to even watch it or not. What? I was really worried about episode one. Episode one, I was really worried. I'm like, okay, I, I guess I got to get back into the Ted Lasso mindset. Sure. You know, for yeah. the things that are being said, how it's being said, what's being said. I was like, oh, no, they lose it. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah. They didn't. <laughs> they did not lose it. They are all the way back. Episode three is a great one. New one coming out Wednesday, I believe. Mm-hmm. Most soccer they've ever had in an episode. Like them actually playing soccer in that third episode. I mean, guys got a little tough. Is that good or bad? I thought it was good. I thought AJ. it was good. They do it well. Yeah, the way they do it is sweet. Oh, I watched like the technology they were using to fill the stands. Like it is, yeah. like it's unprecedented what they have done on that show. I have not seen that. Is that uh, somewhere? Where's that at? It's amazing. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Somewhere on YouTube, they show like how the technology they have used to create that field and the, the stands. It's it's pretty awesome. Similar to the guy roller skating while the Lakers shows on, which is coming back for another right. season. I did oh, not finish the first one. More lies. Everybody that was in it was like, "This ain't real." Yep. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, the only reason why I'm watching is because it's real. Mm-hmm. And then everybody was like, "Nah, no, nah, it's not." But was it, and they didn't want it to be. Did you ever finish Last of Us? That's what it seems like. Finish Last of Us, yeah. <sighs> wow. Electric. What a show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you watch that? Is again? it set up for another one? Oh, oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Season two confirmed. I haven't seen the finale. There's a whole, I mean, there's literally, they're on top of a. Two and three, I think they've already confirmed. Beautiful. They're doing two more Beautiful. seasons at the very least. They're on top Sweet. of a hill, like, walking yeah. on this. Yeah. Like, yeah, here's the next season coming up. Oh, yeah. Bigger. There's another game. So, that, the first season was the first game. There's, n- there's a whole other game. You know game the second game? Mm-hmm. So you know what's going to happen? Yeah, I knew it was going to happen in the first one, too. Oh, my God. Yeah, it kind of takes the joy out of it a little bit, but you still want to see, you know, what's So it's pretty similar to the game? Uh, Yeah. So you're assuming episode season two. I'll be interested to see how they do it, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I already know what happens. So That sucks. Stop playing the game because of that. So everybody does then, right? Because a lot of people have played that game. Oh, yeah. yeah, but there was still stuff that was different, you know, and seeing how they actually, you know, bring to life. Like, there are certain episodes that are, you know, where you can tell, like, where they changed it from the game to the movie. It's pretty cool. The acting's unbelievable, so it's worth watching it alone. I never played the game, so I'm experiencing it for the first time. Good storyline. Game probably Great. pretty good. So yeah, good. Game's, awesome. game's, game's probably pretty game's good. awesome. It is. All right, Connie, you want to try to win some money for 10 people? Yeah, yeah sure. I'll try the ball. What are you doing? I'll do the basketball. From here? It's not a championship, yeah. Let's go. 10 people. Yeah. $500 can win 500 bucks if Boston Connor can make this shot. What would be about a half-court shot uh, in the NBA, if it goes down in celebration of one shining moment being birthed for some team tonight for the national championship, 10 people win $500. AJ, anything to say to Connor? No, he, he doesn't have his ears in anyway, but I think he'll make it. He said he doesn't have his ears in anyways, but I think he'll make it. He has faith that you will, as do I. Ty, anything to say to Connor before he gives a huck here? Bury this son, bitch. Let's go. You got that Bruin sweater on. I mean. I don't know. You're making yeah. that stupid sweater. Yeah. Well, they're about to break a record potentially for being the best team in the history of the NHL. So that's only going to bring you good luck. Ton Diggs thinks you're going to miss. I think you're going to make it. I think 10 people are about to win $500 who retweet this video. Say something nice. And put the most efficient way to pay them electronically in the same tweet. All Connor's got to do is bury the shot for the good of the people. All right, didn't hit anything. You can move the balls. Hey, nope. we, we want no excuses. Not on this particular Monday. Boss Connor shooting for 10 there people. Now it is. Bonus ball. No, 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 no bonus ball. Uh, here's Boston Connor out of what part of Massachusetts? Plum, Pennsylvania. Okay. Plum High School. Mm. Oh, I oh. wish I wouldn't would have fell. Bank, yeah. Bank's instead, the way to go, I think. Instead, you know, now it's the last ball, the final opportunity. But it's just like the first opportunity. Because really, if your first isn't your last, your last isn't your first, what are you doing? Ladies and gentlemen, Connor is going to shoot for 10 people to win $500. All you got to do is retweet this video, say something nice to somebody, and put the most efficient way to pay you electronically in the same tweet, and you will be. What does that mean? First is your last. But your last is yeah, what does that mean? Sleep on it tonight. Just think, if you don't think about it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey! oh! Yes! Oh! Out of 
every 10 people, $500. Because Boston Connor goes Drano from half court. Tonight's national championship should be fantastic. Good luck to San Diego State Aztecs and to the UConn Huskies. We wish you all have your one shining moment, but we are betting heavily, it feels like, on UConn. Uh, AJ, great show today. We appreciate you. Ian Rapport, Chump, Sharani, Reese Davis, all the boys. You guys are the best. We'll see you tomorrow with a big one. Way to go, Connor. Proud of you, pal. Yeah, let's go. We're going to Chef Bo's. Goodbye.